Karen from Carbot. All right, uh, we are now live. Uh, also, we've just been raided. Uh, thank you, Talos Wind. <laughs> um, <laughs> perfect timing, because we're finally getting started over here. Welcome, Hello. everyone, to Dork Vision Tropos Quest. Uh, this is our special um, charity stream for Extra Life's Tabletop Appreciation Weekend, uh, and all of the proceeds at my participant link are going to the Hasbro Children's Hospital. Uh, you can find that on the screen, also on the overlay once we switch over to that. Uh, they're also in the uh, tabs down below, whatever those are called. The, the special, doobly -doo. the doobly-doos, yeah. Um, so we also, if you click on that link, you'll find that we have some milestones, which are gonna be space battle maps for our Spelljammer uh, sort of setting. And uh, I have some of those already done, but if you get some good milestones, then I'm going to be forced to draw some more and make them available for public, not just patrons. Um, as well, we have some incentives uh, for you guys. If you donate a little bit, you can uh, shoot a little magic missile at one of the player's enemies. Uh, if you donate a bit more, you can either choose to help or hinder the players during the game, and more than that gets you uh, one of my PDFs, including one that isn't made yet. Uh, but will be soon, hopefully. Uh, so, I think that's announcements out of the way. This is technically canon with our usual Dork Vision Sunday game. Uh, so, if you're interested in that, you can always catch up on that on YouTube's. Uh, so, let's get into it, shall we? Are we ready? I think so. Oh, yeah. Okay. The party uh, has just made it to the town of Urzark. Uh, it's a quarry town where the uh, players were trying to find the source of the Merchant Consortium. Um, the Merchant Consortium knows where to find a fabled city of genies, uh, but the party has been searching around, uh, found this strange uh, device, or not device, this strange phenomenon, this magical glowing hoodoo that causes a sort of relative gravity uh, disjunction in a short radius. Uh, there's a bunch of gnomes investigating it. They went to the lab where the gnomes are housed and were greeted by a little kobold with a uh, sort of remote control cartoonishly uh, device. And they said that they think they found the source of the signal uh, regarding to you guys. So that is where we uh, have just left off. The kobold looks up at you. Hello, I'm Clack. Pleased to meet you. Uh, hello there, Clack. Come, Can come, come, come inside. Come inside. Please close the door. We don't live in a barn. Uh. Uh, Clack, what, what is it that you found? Says a gnome uh, with a freakishly long beard in the corner. Well, Benjamin, uh, Mister Tables, uh, I know I'm just an intern here, but. I've been following the signal that the hoodoo has been emitting. It's a psychic wave sort of thing, but it's been getting really strong lately, and it seems to be coming from these weirdos here. Uh, pointing towards you guys. Uh, who are you people? I think it's pretty appropriate. Yeah, I mean, there's a bird person, there's a devil person, there's a snake person, and there's a... Looks at him on... A person? <laughs> Look, we just walked on the ceiling, and we're now talking to this tiny lizard guy. No. No, I refuse to accept that we're weird. It's yeah, fair. What is the deal with the, the gravity thing? Is that what you guys are researching specifically? Yes, uh, the gnomes were brought here. The gnomes were brought here, clack. The uh, gnome stands up and uh, kind of shambles towards you guys. They flip the long beard over their shoulder uh, to get out of their way and kind of walks is to you with like, a official demeanor. Is it like to his feet? It's How like uh, three times his height. What the heck? Okay. Uh, they walk over to you. They're wearing a lab coat and have like a set of goggles on their heads. Um, he says, I'm Benjamin Tables. This is my laboratory. I, I brought a bunch of uh, my compatriots here. Um, we we're members of a, uh, well, a scientific league. And we came here to investigate this strange structure out here. I believe it's called a hoodoo, the rock balancing on the other pillar. And there's a strange 
gravitational anomaly surrounding it. It's a very short radius, um, mostly encompassing Mouse Lane here, but um, it causes relative gravity. Uh, though what Clack's talking about, yes, what I'm talking about, is that there's a weird signal that's coming out of it. It wasn't doing this a few days ago, but uh, it seems to be matching your wavelength. So, uh, Gross. You, you guys know anything about this? What do you mean by wavelengths? Oh dear. Okay, so, in science, there's a... No, Clack, I, I don't think we need to... But they don't know what the... What the fuck is gravity? I, Boom Clack has already lost focus and is wandering off and is poking the nearest I've, shiny thing. I have a question about the relative... <laughs> uh, I have a question about the relative gravity thing. Yes! Is it a... Is it a rel... Uh, is there a central origin point, or is it relative, relative toward the person itself? It's relative towards the person themselves. If they think something is down, it becomes down, although it tends to mostly in allow the walking on surfaces. If there's not a surface nearby to stand on, you just sort of fall if you're not concentrating. I can walk on clack. Uh, <laughs> make an acrobatics check. Down. Oh, I should scroll down. There we go. Uh, yeah, you're kind of able to, with your roguish-like steps, uh, kind of tiptoe over Clack, and he goes, Wait, wait, what are you doing? Please, Don't stop! Don't worry, it's an experiment. It, oh, oh, experiment. Yes, please, let the rogue experiment. It's fine. Uh, uh, you're very heavy. You're like... Uh, yeah, he splats onto the ground. Well, it didn't work. Can't walk on people. Okay, well, I let you do your experiment. Why don't you let me do mine? All right? If you'll indulge me, I finally locked onto the signal. I'm, I'm going to see if I can uh, get something to work. And he uh, starts rummaging through a bunch of stuff. Uh, yes, this! And he pulls out a little crystal shard. Um, it's like the size of like a rod or a wand. At least for him. He's small. Okay, so this thing should theoretically work. Can you all come with me, please? Uh, play check. Yeah. yeah. Eric, I'm not much open. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with it because if I resist, I feel like I'm gonna be more annoyed. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. Mm, I'm still inciting. I just want to know how. Uh, gotta be. The I can't sense shit. <laughs> now the kobold uh, seems genuinely curious. Uh, you, if. If need be, at the expense of others. Is he kind of like a child? Is he act like a child? Kind of. But, all right, I'm alright with it. But the, uh, it is not. They don't seem to think it's overtly dangerous to you guys. That's that's fine. That's kind of all I was worried about. Yeah, the rest of you are kind of just like looking on curiously. And also, you can't really get hides nor tails of this thing. Um, yeah, the last time something someone said everything would be fine, we had a resonance cascade. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, thanks, Gordon. Um. Mm. Clack uh, opens the door to the uh, observatory on, like, the third floor and walks out onto a sort of balcony, uh, which is right there. Uh, it leads straight out to the hoodoo and goes, Okay, so, in theory, the, the strength seems to be emanating from the hoodoo. If, if we can get you guys to psionically attune to this, there might be some sort of effect, although I'm not certain what it'll do. The fuck are psionics? Yeah, is that what you're talking about with waves? I think I only heard that a few times. Well, you see, psionics are a bit different than magic. They work the same way, they move the same energies, but otherwise, it's slightly different. It's powered purely by the mind, rather than uh, pure charisma or the wisdom of the gods. Cool, can't do it, bye. No, 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 please, just come here. All you need to do is touch this, and if... If I'm right, she she doesn't like thought magic. If you want, I can step forward. I, I'm kind of okay at thought magic. Mao just kind of gestured like, after you, sir. May I take your hat, sir? Oh. I I think I got a pretty strong enough head for this. Thank you, Jay, no for the way. donation. I I don't want anybody messing with my head. <laughs> I'll I'll try it out for you guys first. Okay, so, um, let me just go over here. Uh, please. Uh, make sure your friend is okay. I'm I'm pretty sure this is safe. Okay? So, yeah. I'm gonna hold this. Uh, I'm gonna hold my little radio device here, and he holds out the, like, remote control thing with the star tip, uh, antennae. 
and he says, Okay, now, I want you to hold this rod and touch okay. it to the hoodoo. It's, and it's like uh, just a few feet from you thanks to this extended balcony. I'm going to tentatively poke out my arm and poke it. Uh, as you do, there's a sort of like orange glow around the hoodoo that grows uh, greater than it was before. There's like a, an emanating bass sound that goes boom. And it, it, you can feel it kind of latch on to something in your mind. Um, it doesn't feel overtly threatening. It just feels like it's alerting you to something. And as it starts to resonate with you and get stronger, Clack uh, is looking at the radio signals and he goes, oh, Yes! Yes! The, the psionics! They're resonating! There seems to be a cascade of resonance here! Let's, uh, oh, damn it. let's increase the... Uh, uh, no, no, we're losing it! You guys, please, join! We might be able to get the get the signal locked on! I think I it's... I don't feel anything bad from this, right? You, you don't overtly, no. I, I think it's locking on to something! I, I don't think anything bad's happening, so I think it's safe. Yeah, you're just sitting there, and honestly, there's just a little kind of warm feeling in the back of your head, but that's about it. Kinda reminds me of the flumps. Uh, those... why? No. I thought those... I thought I... those guys were nice. Nothing bad happened. No, they just led us to a witch, but... We asked about the witch, to be fair. Also, you you didn't suffer as much under that as I did. I didn't want to kiss. Quickly now, quickly! What? Join join hands with this fellow, the Snake Man. Oh. Fine, I, I, I grab his hand. My hand. <laughs> uh, I, I grab his I, hand. I, I hold, hold, on on hold on, boom! Crash his hand. I don't want to touch Zumosu. The uh, <laughs> cascade of uh, psionic energy starts uh, passing through to you guys. You start to feel this, and a sort of strange uh, calling is echoing out to you. Come, come to me. I'm looking for you. Please, come to me. If we get swept away, I'm grabbing them on. Okay, who's who's saying this? Can we You're not sure. Voice? You do not recognize a voice. It's almost like a feeling rather than a voice. And oh, I hate it. Black is like, we're, we're almost locked on! But you, weirdo! Grab their hands! Pointing at him on. The signal's so close, we might be able to get a breakthrough here. Fine. You grasp onto uh, Boom Crash's hand or Mao's hand, I think. Mao's horn. I feel like it's gonna be Mao's horn. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. I just grab you by the handlebar as I always do. <laughs> Suddenly, there is a blast, and you guys feel a rush uh, of wind pass by you, and then suddenly, uh, pretty much everything starts to fade away. Uh, you see a darkness and stars start to uh, whiz past you as uh, you're starting to lose control of your bodies. And uh, with a rush of wind, you guys are suddenly someplace entirely different. And there is a darkness surrounding you, uh, but a dim blue light uh, everywhere. Um, you see uh, sort of rocky walls, ceiling, and floor, but the floor has like this strange metallic panel with a gemstone, also blue, lit up beneath you. You guys can't really move. You see prison bars in this room, um, and there is a humanoid figure that uh, seems to have been holding a box. It drops the box and like runs off. Uh, let's take you there. Right. Uh, I like this tune. The uh, strange humanoid figure uh, rushes over to the cage and like looks at you all, uh, and then rushes off and disappears down a door. You hear like kind of a doom noise as the door opens. Uh, you guys are frozen in like this sort of stasis. Um, Nobody can move. It looks like Clack is there with you. He's like excitedly like looking down at the the radio signal, but is frozen in time. Is like tongue lolling out. Um, you guys. But we can perceive. Can we perceive things around us? We just can't move. And... Yes, it seems that way. Ugh. After a few moments, uh, the door opens once more, and three more figures come through. <laughs> 
Kenichi uh, is flanked by two figures, but there's one that is covered in illustrious armor. Uh, it's like this weird silvery metal uh, studded with various gemstones and crystals. Uh, the others are wearing similar armor, but like half plate. Um, she uh, looks over towards you guys and then uh, looks you up and down and she takes out a little device and presses a small crystal on it. You guys suddenly all fall out onto the floor. <laughs> And Clack says, I think I found it. I think, ow, I think I found the signal. Where are we? I was going to ask you that, little kobold. What'd you do? I, I think I found the signal, but you are on Stardock, says the humanoid figure. Uh, after looking over her features, she does appear to be uh, the same sort of uh, species as Tropos. Uh, she's yellow, like completely like uh, ochre skin. Um, with sort of disfigurations, uh, like lumps in odd places that you wouldn't expect for a humanoid, um, and uh, pointed ears. She uh, has graying hair and uh, a sort of intense demeanor. I return the intense demeanor by readying a bow. <laughs> there won't be any need for that. Please. Now tell uh me, how do you... No tropos. Tropos. How, how do you I know tropos? I don't, I don't know. Why do you him. want to know? I don't know him. I actually don't know him. You actually don't know him. <laughs> well, you technically met him. Uh, you guys saved you know, him in the I, underdark. I, met him. I, I don't. I don't know him. Anything about him? He yeah. owes me because a mask of disguise. Hmm. We we he helped us. We helped him. So you're friends of his. I'd say so. Understand. Yeah. Help us live longer. I, I don't know anything about him. Her eyes glow for a second, and she just kind of phases through the bars and walks uh, into the sort of cell with you. Nope, don't like that. Now please, go on. How do you... How did you meet Tropos? You see, I suppose I should explain why you're here. Sorry about that. Uh, we locked on to his psychic impression and started sending out a signal to try and draw him in. But it seems that we found you all instead. I figured you must have met him and in some capacity, shared some sort of experience with them. But uh, it's odd that you were the signal that we latched on to. Um, so, how did you meet this Tropos? Frankly, he, he saved us from a big creepy monster thing, and then we ran into him again and helped save him from a big creepy monster thing. Honorable. Honorable. So... Yeah, both you... of them were weirdly, I don't know, psychic? psychic? What's that mind-related? Like, one of them was a weird gibbering mess, and then the other one was a weird brain. Unusual. Where did you last see Tropos? And uh, which continent do you hail from? I forget our continent's name. <laughs> it's uh, Sargon. 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 It honestly doesn't come up much because yeah. Yeah. you guys don't really live on a continental scale. Um, she says. Not that bad. So it's a rural hillbilly. So you're from Sargon, and where did you last meet Tropos? Um, underneath Sargon, in the Underdark. The Underdark. Yeah. What we Sorry. call this sort of giant cavernous system where a bunch of baddies tend to live. It's pretty dangerous under there, and lots of kind of forbidding creatures tend to make a roost. Well, Somewhere between Alore and New Dawn, right? That's what. Yeah. Probably... I guess that would I be know. a good place to bring hide. out my Underdark map, and I'm like, hey, if, if, if this helps. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty confusing down there. You, you probably would want a map. She uh, puts her fingers to her head, and uh, her eyes flash. Thank you for this information. Catalogued. Um, do you want to look at the paper, or...? No, I'm no. Like... Well, she looked at the paper that you gave her, and she just sort of almost took a photograph uh, with her memory. Oh, okay. 
pretty cool trick. That's neat. That would be useful. It is unusual that he would have chosen to go to Sargon, but I guess Tropos is unusual. Well, um... Hmm. And what are all your names? Um, if I may, I'll give my name if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself as well. I'm, um... I'm called Spen. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Your, your fake name. Got it. Uh, uh, Mouse still has her bow up. It's not completely drawn back at 100%. But it's like, mm -mm. It's, it's out and knocked. Out and knocked. Like, yeah, you don't... You don't get that yet. Hmm. Well, since you're so reluctant, my name is Vyra, and I'm the Supreme Commander here at Stardock. I'm a bit more aged, uh, as I've been out here for a while. Most of my companions have come in from the Astral Plane, so they haven't aged as much as me. But I take it as a sign of pride. <gasps> she says Astral Plane. I'm going to try and perceive the area using my robe of eyes. You try to use your robe of eyes, but there isn't anything unusual on the ethereal plane uh, nearby. What was her name again? Vyra. V-A-I-R-A. Okay. So, you don't know where Tropos is now? Nope. He doesn't hang around much. He's always off hunting after, uh, what, what were they called? Do you guys remember? Did he say elithids? He did say elithids. Yeah. He mentioned elithids? <laughs> He's hunting elithids, really. Can I do an inside check to see if, like, they're actually friends or they're just trying to dig information out of us? Make an insight check. It's pretty obvious they're trying to dig information out because they keep on asking for information. Yeah. Put it in a because they want to know where he is because they're like, oh no, my friend, he might be hurt, let's help him. Or we need to figure out where he is so we can go capture him. Like a... yeah, you, emotion you take go. your insight check, Mao, and as uh, Vyra is talking to you, um, Clack is just, like, enamored with this. Uh, he's completely confused as to what's going on, but Vyra um, is sort of uh, regarding you all almost like a parent uh, asking kids what they've uh, done wrong, but in, like, a peer mediation way. Do we have any sort of problem here? Are we allowed to go back home? Uh, Chris. Yes. While they're talking, I want to uh, take a look at the, the doors that I'm seeing on the uh, the edges. Sure. Uh, are there any like labels or anything like that on those doors? Uh, there don't seem to be any labels, uh, at least on the north door and the north uh, northwest door. Uh, the I southern see four doors. So... The southern doors. Um, those both. Um, seem to uh have like these uh hooks for like bars on them uh, so that you could bar the door from the inside uh and there's like bars like laying on the walls nearby um otherwise uh they seem to have like um little uh red crystals above them almost uh if you would imagine they would light up they might be like almost alarms or something uh but that's the only difference between the southern doors and the rest of them as uh, you ask Vyra um, if you're allowed to leave, uh, she says, Well, that all depends on how much information you can give us on Tropos's current whereabouts. Well, you're kind of SOL because we got nothing. Yes, well, you seem to know of his relation to Mind Flayers, and yet you don't know anything about him or where he is right now. We so you certainly must them. know something. We don't work with them. We just cross paths. <laughs> A likely story. I suggest that you all tell me everything that you really know. And she casts suggestion on you all at once. Oh, shit. Uh, I'm going to need you all to make wisdom saves. It was close to me. <laughs> uh, I think everybody. Okay. Except maybe Mal. Oh no, because she's so... <laughs> uh, yeah. Where is my save button? There it is. Nah. You guys... Hold on, I actually need to check her DCs. Um, yeah, you guys all succeeded. So, uh, is this magic based too? Yeah, it is. Uh, psionics are considered magic in this universe. They're just 
yeah. weird and different. Uh, okay. Stuff that applies to psionics might not apply to magic, but everything that's magic applies to psionics. Um, square and rectangle. Can we recognize what just happened to us? You do. You kind of recognize that she uh, kind of forced her way into your minds, uh, and Clack says, I don't know what's going on. He completely failed. Um, but oh he doesn't know God. what's going on. And oh. I don't know what's going on, but I'm really excited. Um, she this says, in your pain. Fine. That's weirdo. <laughs> um, miss, I do not appreciate that, what you just tried to do. Hmm. Can I hit her, please? Uh, you can I, certainly try. I wouldn't try. go that far yet in this. Whatever. <laughs> she does it again. This is going at her face. This is... That was an aggressive action. Why the heck did you do that? We were having a polite conversation. Well, I assumed you were hiding something. Please. And she teleports out of the room. Make yourselves at home for a while, if you're unwilling to cooperate. If you know about the Mind Flayers, then you certainly must know that Tropos is wanted for that action. My brother died in that Void Cruiser that day. And if we find Tropos, what? he will face his crimes. This is all new information to what? us. What? Mm -hmm. He was a criminal? <laughs> I'm sure we'll discover this at length. Please, uh... You've given me more questions than answers. Yeah, bring food back next time you feel like showing up, thanks. I speak a two-face. <laughs> <laughs> she turns towards, um... Her, uh... Like, gish compatriot, and says... Please, go fetch the Mind Leech. If they survive, then they will at least provide us with all of the information that they have. She oh, nods. that don't sound nice. And she heads off uh, down a different chamber. I will be waiting for this time. Please, don't try to be heroes. And uh, the one... Githyanki stands nearby to uh, stand guard with you guys. Um, meanwhile, uh, Clack is just like, what the hell was that all about? Who's Tropos? I'm sorry, little kobold, but you seem to have gotten entangled in something you shouldn't have messed with. He keeps, like, trying to press a button on his, like, remote control. This, this, this isn't a teleporter. I don't think I can reverse it. I thought I this was just yeah. a signal. The door, like, uh, so they teleported through, so I, uh, it, but still, is it even, um, does it even have a door, or is it just a solid wall? Uh, it does seem to have a door and a lock, uh, it's on the outside, uh, it's a little unusual for what you've seen. You're also, um... When you say unusual, like, it, the, do you mean it's like a data pad, or do you mean it's just like a really elaborate, like, combination lock like what what it looks to be that? some sort of uh crystalline data pad but you guys it's a little alien for you uh not too it alien that like you probably couldn't figure out stuff. how to use it but it's like what is that and how is it keeping me in this door um while you guys are talking uh a few more githyanki open the southern door uh and you guys feel like a rush of cold air um they're both carrying boxes. Uh, one of them goes off uh, to unload their box. The other one uh, heads over to the guard at the door. My gish! And uh, he drops the box and like uh, puts his hand over his chest. At ease. What is it? Uh, a skiff has just arrived. The We've picked up a pas passenger, but... Uh, a passenger? There's a Zodar on board. Why? What do you expect us to do? It's a Zodar. Well, just get everyone else off the skiff and make sure it stays put and doesn't break anything. We've got prisoners of our own here. Yes, my gish. He salutes again and then uh, rushes off. You guys see uh, more Githyanki like, uh, start coming out with several supplies, uh, and then they eventually disperse throughout the room. That thing sounded like a problem. Do you need help? Not from you. We've already told you we've killed monsters before. We could help. <laughs> well, I'm sure that we'll find something for you to do. So now stay quiet. The, so we still have them, uh, at least uh, three of them wandering about. So we can't make any sudden moves. Um, Hit them from here. I, I just lift my bow up in the air. I'm like, I can do it. 
I can do it. No, I man. Have... No, probably, probably, if you can't escape, like, I can teleport uh, one of you out. Uh, Boom Crash can miss the step, but mm -hmm. you can't get everyone out. And this, and uh, I assume that the... Actually, let's get your uh, perspective on this. How do you feel about the lock? Do you feel confident that you can um, dislodge it? I mean, I can take a look at it. It doesn't... I'm gonna I'm a talk to Clack. I'm gonna I'm gonna shift over. Back. Yes. Um, as you can tell, this isn't a great scenario. I'm kind of gonna be whispering to you. So we need to know what are you capable of. I assume you have some sort of skills. I'm a tech guy. I'm a sort of artificer. Uh, it was weird, but the signal seemed to be coming from above us. I, I really don't know what, what caused the teleport. I guess they were kind of. Maybe it was some sort of signal trap? Something? I don't know. There's a lot of contingencies here. Yeah, yeah. The question is, um, this seems to be some sort of weird tech. Do you have any idea how to possibly get out of here? And when we do probably figure out a way out, will you come with us? Because I don't think you want to deal with those mind leaps things they were mentioning. I would like to get out of here as much as you guys. And also, that's a uh, data press. Uh, it's a kind of psi matrix. Uh, it's pretty easy to disarm. Honestly, uh, it's really more of a, a door handle than anything. So if we got you out there, you could unlock the door? Yeah. Guys, I have, I have a weird idea. Mm -hmm. So, I can only teleport one person, but I can teleport multiple things. So how about this? I do have enough diamonds. I say we, we kill you guys. <laughs> Butcher you into pieces, carry the pieces out, teleport out with the, those who can teleport. I'm on, I'm on, I'm gonna I'm stop you right there. Um, just take the, the cobalt, he says he can open the door. If you just bring him to that side. Can you guys cause a distraction of some sort? I can open up the data pad. Is the data pad on our side or their side? It's on their well, side. Also, okay, yeah. I don't know if you guys care, um, but while that lady was talking, I got this from her, and he holds up like a little sort of uh, device that she had been holding, uh, the thing that she kind of looked at um, before she uh, talked to you guys, and it seems to be locking on to a signal. Uh, you were I, signals. I know, but this one, it, it, they've got it listed, and it's listing Tropos's psychic impressions. It seems like there's no other ones on the planet, but there's another one off in, I guess, outside the planet? I don't know how that works. So we're not on the planet anymore, great. So, I gotta, so uh, I yeah, can, that's um, the other thing. Assuming that the, um, the that this is us, we're also not on the planet. Yeah. Yeah, we do that. So, so the question becomes this, you want a distraction, Okay, so I, I can teleport you guys out once. I can teleport one person out who wants to be out with me. Um, I thought you were gonna- we have to- you are gonna take Clack and be out there to have him disable the thing. Did you say the crow person can get out too? Yeah, so that would make sense. Yeah. Um, I guess that means I gotta distract them. I can just shoot from in here. Uh, I was gonna just do something a little bit more easy. There's a guard right over there, right? And I kind of point. Yeah, he's like uh, moving boxes from one place to the next. The boxes are like getting in an increasingly taller and unwieldy pile. Okay, guys. Um, yeah, let me just start a distraction. You guys start dealing with the thing. And boom crash if you need our yeah, support with artillery if you need to. Let's see how much time I can get you. I could still butcher you all. I'd rather, that would be a distraction. If we're facing like mine. Thing I'd rather save that as a last resort. Fine. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna yeah. pull out a big old bottle of wine and waltz right over. Hey, buddy! Buddy! Do you got anything good to drink around here? I need to pair it. Quiet, you. The Gith Yankee I... clatters her uh, silver sword against the bars. No, 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 no. Look, look, look. And I show the wine bottle. You just gotta understand. We've we've had a really rough time. I don't like drinking alone. They're all pissed at me because I was kind of why we're here in the first place. Uh, you want to help the brother out? Got a corkscrew or something? Uh. Um. 
Okay, so uh, make a persuasion check. Okay. Eh, I guess it's deception, actually. Yay, that's better. Ah, crap. <laughs> better. All right, so uh, the rest of you are hiding in the uh, cell. Um, let's roll for her, shall we? I'm going to do a straight-up cause suggestion after this. <laughs> uh, the Gish kind of, like, looks at the wine and says, <laughs> That swill? Couldn't beat anything like that in this galaxy. I'm going to just straight-up cast suggestion and say, like, Oh, as far as you know, this is the best wine in Alore. I gotta, I gotta look at uh, the at the Kanku and say like, okay, should I do it or not? Give me a signal. She gets a natural twenty. Your oh, mind tricks true. won't work here. And she like, uh, she actually walks up to the bars uh, and like pulls on your shirt uh, to bring you closer to hers. You try okay, something like the, that again. That's, that's the cue. That's the cue. Teleport yep. out. Hey, hey, hey! I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it seem like I'm really concerned about the bottle of wine. Who are you hey, taking hey, with this you, Amon? Expensive stuff. Huh? Are you taking anybody with you? Yeah, Clack. Okay. That's the point, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, if she's next to me, can I try and grapple her? Because I'm trying to keep her away from the wine. She's kind of grappling you, but then as you uh, are getting grappled, you can like pull your arms around and like pull her towards the cage. Yeah. Also try so... to go and jump in and help. Also, thank you for that anonymous donation. Woo. Oh yeah. Um. Bad. I'm not doing great here. <laughs> yeah, not great. Uh, that's gonna get opposed. Can I teleport out now? You can if you want. Uh, you've kind of... Ooh, okay. You actually succeeded, even with a seven. Um, she wasn't expecting it coming, and you're kind of awkwardly putting your hands through the bars, but you're able to, like, pull her up against uh, the cage. <clears throat> what are you doing? And uh, Amon teleports out with Clack uh, in his little hand. Um, the Githyanki warriors uh, that are unloading crates uh, all look at you. They start fumbling for their weapons. Uh, uh, something, something just teleported in. Uh, Boom Crash uses her misty step to walk through the shadows uh, and appear as well. Uh, Clack starts like running towards the console and starts uh, quickly pressing some buttons. Um, I think we need to roll for initiative okay. at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can't believe I won that crappy grapple. I can't believe it either, but that's the magic of dungeons and or dragons. Um, nice. Woo. I think. Oh. Here we go. Mao. You have the initiative. Of course. That's just how it goes, man. I don't know if you should kill them now, just a heads up. Can I assassinate them non-lethally? Yeah, you can. I'm gonna drop my thing, oh, my scimitar, and bonk them. <laughs> Jesus, that's Ooh, a <laughs> that's a crit. Uh, that's 112 damage. Too small. <laughs> Actually, no, wait, uh, an assassination is automatically a crit, so that technically doesn't matter. It is... 56 damage though uh yeah you start uh like giving her this old head crack and it's gonna be yeah a good sizable chunk of her hit points she's almost bloodied uh, 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 her head's like spinning can't concentrate anything else for you mal uh, I... sure <laughs> you jump back into hiding. Amon, it is your turn. You have just teleported. Clack has run off uh, using his held action. Okay, okay. So there's a crowd. Uh, since there's a crowd, I think I'm going to do... Um, uh, shit, Spirit Guardians? Okay. Uh, no, I did not have that prepared because... Damn it. Because um, you were in city, the town. No, I, I, I had to do the other... Uh, speak, I, I prepared Speak oh, with Dead. Oh, Speak with Dead. Got it. Um, okay. Damn. Okay, I'm gonna cast uh, Death Word on myself because it's always a good thing to do. You cast your save point button, um, and uh, the Githyanki all like uh, draw their swords. Um, anything else for you, Amon? Uh, no, I don't have any bonus action stuff, so guess not. Okay, uh, the boxes are largely impassable, uh, although they are not like tied in or anything, so you could probably move them. Wait, wait, uh, are the boxes, like, super heavy? Look at They are made out of a weird red metal, uh, as is most of the other metal objects in this room. Uh, they look pretty heavy. Okay. It is Clack's turn. Clack is going to attempt... Oh, Chris, yes. uh, one last question. Sorry, it's starting to drop. Are these doors swing doors, or are they, like, sci-fi side sliding doors? Uh, they are swing doors in spite of the weird doom sci-fi noise that happens when they open. Okay, okay. 
Okay, last interruption. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, yeah, Clack just kind of walks over and just uh, licks his finger and just like starts pressing on the data pad. Do, 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 and, um, hmm. Yeah, that's a really bad password you guys got here. He like shakes his head at the gish next to him. She scowls at him. <laughs> She's gonna, and then he does like a little swiping symbol, and you're free. Um, the door starts. Uh, the cage starts, like, rising into the ceiling, uh, taking the Githyanki and Zumasu with it. What do you guys do? Um, I guess I would let her go. Is this, like, a reaction, or is this, like, a... It's save? kind of your reaction. Do you want to hold on? Because it would probably hurt both of you. Um, is, how's the door moving? It's pulling upwards? It's sliding up into a slot in the ceiling. <sighs> I don't want to kill her yeah. Don't lose your arm. Don't lose your arm. Yeah, I'm letting her go. Okay, you guys both fall prone onto the ground. The door is now open. Yay! Um, hmm. How's my wine? Uh, it rolls onto the ground. Uh, it's fine. Okay. It is her turn. Uh, she uses half of her movement to get up from prone, uh, oh, and draws her weapon. It is a long sword that she holds in one hand. Her other hand is, uh, flashing with psionic energy. I'm gonna pay for that, you fool. And she's going to cast... Do, do, do. Uh... Yeah, that sounds good. She's going to cast Magic Missile, which is then going to uh, shoot into both you and Clack. Uh, she's going to cast it at third level. So that's... Uh, I believe it's three shots at first. Four, five. That's five shots. Um, let's just do... That. Uh, three are going at you, Zumasu. <laughs> uh, very dynamic. Uh, each of these is plus one, so that's six, seven, eight, nine. Nine damage to you, Zumasu, and then four, five, six damage to Clack. Um, then she takes her long sword and she goes to strike you, even though she's just cast a spell. That's weird. You're not playing right. Okay. <laughs> You're not what playing right. I'm prone? Uh, oh, she idea. has she has advantage, but uh, she still misses. Um, or she hits me, but she hits my armor. Yeah, sure. She clatters onto your armor. Um, she's done. Boom crash. It is your turn. Okie dokie. Um, well, the nerd kind of already did what he was going to do. Yes. So... Nerd. <laughs> I'm the guy um, in the chair. Huh? I'm the guy in the chair. You know, your guy in the chair. Oh, he's a Q. He's Q. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, gonna take out my wand and cast Erupting Earth to disrupt these two. Oh, damn. Parts. Uh, okay. Uh, this is gonna have an interesting effect, and it might uh -oh. not even require you to roll for anything. Um, they're gonna make some deck you saves. The hole. Uh oh. <laughs> Are we driving around a planet like spaceship? Uh, you cause an eruption uh, on the ground. The uh, various crates and barrels, all made out of iron and filled with goods that they've been unloading, they all start to fall through this like grate in the floor. And uh, the Githyankis try desperately to uh, grapple onto the sides of the crumbling earth, and they are just pulled down and fall into just this void hole in the floor. Ah! Ah! And oh Booncrash, God. you look down, <laughs> and you there. see what looks to be the, the night sky, until you realize you're not facing up at the night sky. This is This down. is the wrong direction! I don't like this! Uh, they then drift off into night. Uh, anything else with your turn, Booncrash? Um... Pray for them? I'm going to move towards the nerd and the other gith yankee okay uh so. is this dude's turn uh this dude is going to draw their sword uh but then they are going to rush uh this way and try and open the door uh it does provoke an attack from amon okay uh then i am going to uh cast total dead onto them okay you use your warcaster feet to bong it needs to make a... There it is. Okay, that's fail. Uh, and that is 19. 19. Dang. It's a lot of damage, but these warriors are a bit tough. Uh, so they're about halfway. Um, okay, uh, 
He's then going to uh, end his turn and take the dodge action. Um, Zumasu, it is your turn. I'm gonna get up from prone. That doesn't provoke nothing, does it? Nope, it's just half your movement. Okay. I'm sorry, miss, that you read into us, but we gotta get out of here. Not on my watch. The Supreme Commander will hear of this. Oh. And yeah, that's gonna hit. Um. Do I smite? I'm not gonna smite yet. So, damage? Six damage. Oh, well, that's with the crit, actually. That's three damage. Damn, that was a... Oh, yeah. Okay. So, three plus two. That's a, that's a little bit of damage. Just a little bit of damage. <sighs> All right. Second attack. That hit? Uh, yeah, it does. Three, seems to three do what I'm damage. Doing. This is the minimum damage, uh, by the way. I just checked for you. Oh, okay. Uh, are you smiting oh. on this attack? Uh, yeah, I'll smite. Non-lethal level. This this one. Non-lethal smite as you charge your long sword with uh, a surge of electricity. Uh, All that means is I'm not going for vitals. I know. <laughs> You're a soft touch, as per usual. Yeah. Trust the Zumasu touch. Uh, okay, anything else for you? Uh, no, I don't got bonus actions for this kind of thing. Mao. Um, I'm just gonna move around her. Sure. That doesn't provoke anything. It does not. Okay. You circle around her, uh, keeping her attention as she turns to face you. She's completely unaware that there's one unaccounted for. Mao, it's your turn. And you got flanking. Non-lethal. Yes, you do have flanking. And that's gonna hit. You have sneak attack, you have flanking. That is 28 damage. Uh, Plus one. 29 damage. Perfectly set up. Uh, she is now uh, horribly wounded. Um, as she is. Please just give up. We don't want to hurt you anymore. <sighs> she uh, is looking pretty uh, painful and surrounded by enemies. Uh, she looks like she's kind of like uh, surrendering. She's backing up a bit, but then she like uh, suddenly seems to resist and grasps her sword tighter. No. For the glory. For the Gith Yankee. And. Goddamn Romulans. <laughs> Amon, it is your turn. Unless Mao needs bonus no, no, action. I'm gonna stand there. Um, I was just waiting for her to end. Like, waiting for her to give up. Okay. Right. I'm gonna just uh, lean on the side of the door and then just uh, cast Cold of the Dead onto uh, this guy. Unfortunately, dodging does not stop the tolling of the bell. Let's. This is actually supposed to be plus two. Um, oh, okay. So that yeah. does succeed. <laughs> okay. Uh, in that case, uh, I think I'm gonna have to do. Um, damn it! I really don't want to burn spell slots, but I kind of need to spare a weapon. Okay. You summon your deadly scythe. Actually, let's not. Okay. Ah. Uh. Like, I'm trying to disconsider a spell. Sorry, guys. You're good. You're good. Okay. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to be leaning on the door because the door opens inward, I assume. So, uh, hopefully that resists it. Unless it's electronic and it just pushes me away. But we'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. Okay. Yeah. It is Clack's turn. Uh, Clack is going to... Um, yeah. He's going to uh, use... He's going to pull out his uh, Arcane Firearm, which is a uh, special ruby-tipped rod uh, made out of stone. He pulls it out and then uh, points it at the Gish. Uh, we're going for non-vitals, right? Too late! Set to stun, <laughs> Set to stun damn it. Set Firebolt to stun! And he blasts uh, the Gish with fire uh, and gets a natural one. Uh, oh, no. It, God damn it, number one. Zoom also, like, uh, grabs Clack's uh, hand. No, we're not doing lethal! And, like, uh, the blast goes up into the ceiling. And uh, he just goes, Geez, that's, that was kind of uncalled for. Uh, why, don't, uh, why don't I just do a non-lethal one, then? And he kind of whistles, and then a little rock uh, flies out from his backpack and spins around and goes over to the other side. Get him, click! And uh, his homunculus uses a force strike against 
uh, the Gish. And gets a natural one. Nice. Man, I am off today. And it is the Gish's turn. Uh, she is going to do to do. He is somehow Worf and Jordy all together. She uh, <laughs> looks around at, at her situation and says, Fine, I'll get the commander. And she completely disappears uh, in a similar teleportation method that the commander did before. Uh, that no Vira reaction did. to that? Uh, no, she just cast the spell. Damn. Uh, and she has disappeared. Boom crash, it is your turn. Um. Well, I'm just gonna Eldritch Blast this dude. Okay, uh, from across the room you see him on trying to hold the door down. And that, uh... Oh, I'm on the wrong layer, right. I can't. Do, 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 do. That misses, unfortunately. Okay, second one. These guys are fairly heavily armored. That's gonna hit, though. You want with disadvantage? Uh... Oh yeah, he's dodging. I'm gonna I'm gonna say he was more dodging from you. He didn't uh, see Boon Crash coming. And actually, technically, uh, if you guys are quote unquote flanking, that does hit with a plus one. Um, Yay! <laughs> technicality. The DM allowed it, and uh, he takes ten damage and is like pushed into the door. <laughs> uh, anything else for you, Boon Crash? going to get closer to Amon. Okay. Just you, move. Yep. You move over to Amon. Um, the Githyanki is going to use a bonus action to Misty Step uh, over here. <sighs> uh, and then he's going to... Yeah, that wasn't very smart. Uh, but he's going to leap over the uh, pile over here and attack Boon Crash with his great silver sword. They miss, and a natural one. Boy, the DM is rolling aces today. Um, Thank Zimasu, you, DM. <laughs> it is your turn. Um, I don't see nothing. We gotta get out of here, guys, so uh, I'll go meet up with the other guys. Okay, let me see how far I can move. Um, can I shoot my poison spray at that guy? Yeah, it's ten feet away. Okay. I just yelled a boom crash. Get down for a sec. Duck! I, I put out put out my hand and then poison starts coming. Okay. Well, that's a low roll as well. But it's, it's a low voice. roll, but it's a con save, uh, which they are proficient in. Oh. And oh, they just okay. succeed at. <laughs> Your earth poisons have no effect here. Anything else for you, Zoo? Nah, I got nothing. I already used my action. Mal, the door is open. I'm just gonna stroll on out. Cool. All right. There is. This music is fun. very funky for a prison break. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna go and flank around the other side and try and see if anybody else is gonna catch us off guard. Okay, so you're ready in your action. Uh, if anybody comes through, Mon. Bonus action, hide. It is your turn. The Githyanki has right. shifted to uh, engage Boom Crash. Alright, uh, let's do a uh, spear attack. Spear! Spear Guardians? No, just spear! Alright. That's gonna uh, hit. That's, yep, uh, that's going to be uh, uh, 8 damage. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, do bonus attack. Okay. Oh heck. Um, and I think I'm gonna flurry of blows this uh, right. for another attack. You uh, leap in with your spear, and then you start kind of using it as a quarter staff, and just go. Uh, and that is one hit. The uh, flurry one is not. An extra three bludgeoning. Uh, this guy is not looking too hot. Um, anything else for your turn? No, that's it. I did my control of the day. Click, go get him! And Click's gonna uh, zoom around here and use a force strike against the Githyanki. This time, flanking style. Ooh, seven damage. 
Uh, it's on its last leg. Uh, Clack is going to come around here uh, and use his Firebolt to attack non-lethally this time. Come on. I don't control this concept of non-lethal. <laughs> I don't think he does either. There was a natural one in there, but it wasn't an important one. Um, he, The Gith Yankee has two hit points left, and Clack just hit it for 17 damage. Um, the guy goes down, he is on fire, and just starts screaming uh, and rolling around on the ground uh, before he finally just falls unconscious. He kind of like rolls over here. Uh, and yeah, he is at zero. Um, Clack says, Hey, those guys said that there was a skiff. If we're not on Earth, maybe that skiff is the way back. Sounds good. Figure out where it is. I'll follow you. I think it's down here. They came from down in the south. Uh, and Clack, like, uh, presses a few buttons on the door to the south. And okay, you okay. hear a... Uh, before we go, um, like, I'm gonna rummage through the warrior guy see if there's any, you know, keys or any shit like that. Okay. Uh, investigate. Okay. Uh, let's see. Skill. Investigate. Da -da -da -da. Crash, I'm gonna drag this guy. You go through his pockets. Oh, wait, you're already over there. That... I got people's Hello? icons mixed up. Yeah. No. This guy's I guess like I'm too much in a hurry. Yeah, and this guy's straight up like uh, pulp, like 60s sort of uh, space gear, uh, aka metal breastplate and not much else. Um, Clack opens the door, and you guys are greeted to the image of nothing but space outside. Oh. What the frick is space? Uh, and a Githyanki warrior uh, is outside and goes, Who are you? What are you doing at Stardock? And he rushes forward with his uh, uh, sword drawn. Going to be added to the initiative. With a, s with a nine total. Eh. Eh. Delete that guy. Okay. Uh, next, Boom Crash. Uh, there is one more Githyanki warrior. Uh, I'm going to dash, well, not literally dash, but zip forward and Elder Blast. All right. Nope. Oh, I can't see it. Hit him. I can't see it yet. Oh, it's a 13. Got it. Must be getting lag on my end. Uh, the second one definitely hits. Um, yeah, you hit him. Deal 7 force damage and he is pushed 10 feet away. Uh, and I'm going to have him make a little dex save as he batters into the uh, the railing. <laughs> uh! He drifts off into space. Did we just kill somebody? Uh, well, he's definitely gone. Hey, they're found in space. That means there's air. The space is fine. Yeah, there does seem to be air, uh, in spite of everything. Uh, okay. Uh, it's his turn. This captain is filling up his space. I'm gonna delete him. Come on. Bye. Simosu, it is your turn. Uh, Clack, uh, says, Guys, there's a ship out here, and also you gotta see this. All right, one second. I'm gonna investigate this guy because I want to take his stuff, and I, I'm pretty sure I can roll not a zero. You famous last worder. <laughs> God, you start looking through. Uh, it is still mostly just a few pieces of armor and almost nothing else. This guy's like straight up Conan, but Gith Yankee. Can I take his weapon? <laughs> uh, you can grab his uh, sword. Um, as you grab it, though, the sword starts to like shift uh and sort of melt out of your hand and turn into like this mercurial slime uh, oh, cool. don't look your hand. So... no i'm not licking my hand okay i i don't want to touch that anymore i'm gonna walk back over here okay let's be about here now it's your turn mm. Well, uh, yeah, I think, I think we got one more, right? I don't see anybody. Doesn't seem to be anybody nearby, no. But the other one did teleport away. I guess it's gonna be time to go and search for him. I'll try and get to this door on the bottom left. 
Uh, okay, there's a uh, little console on it, uh, much like the one that Clack was able to open before. Uh, you can definitely try and open it. I'll try to open it, if not punch it, multiple times till something that happens. <laughs> uh, use a Thieves' Tools check. Yep, uh, you do manage to kind of, like, open it. This one doesn't have a lock or anything on it, uh, so you're able to pretty easily get it open. It leads to the same space, which is space. Uh, before you is a strange, like, uh, vessel, uh, just sort of docked to the, uh, the ship there, and, or docked to the dock there, uh, it's just floating in place, and it's got these, like, starry fins, uh, and almost weird eyes. It seems to have, uh, a sail on the top of its deck, as well as a sail on the bottom, uh, coming out from underneath it. It also appears to have gotten shifted because it was on the object layer, so I'm just gonna... We definitely have our escape route. I'm gonna go over here and grab some of these barrels. I'm gonna grab two of them, try and bring them out to the skiff. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, you have used your action and sort of your item interaction to open the door, mm, so you true. can go to the barrels. I will go to the barrels. Okay, uh, Amon, it is your... Actually, no, uh, at initiative count 20, um, something does happen. The uh, commander bursts out through the door. <laughs> uh, you see Vyra again. They've escaped! No, and she, everything's fine. She uh, puts her finger to <laughs> her. Deception. She puts her finger to her head, uh, and her eyes start to glow. And she calls out, "Attention! There has been an escape. Everyone to the star dock immediately!" And then she draws her weapon and she ends her turn. Amon, it is now your turn. Okay. Uh, wow, that's interesting. Okay, so let's do GTFO. Can't believe. Well, let's cast banishment on her. Okay. <laughs> Uh, sure. Oh my god, yes. Okay, uh, it's been all Okay, um, uh, what's to say? What's to say? I believe it's uh, charisma, because it's weird. Charisma. Charisma save. Here it comes. Twelve. <laughs> Uh, all right, as she's in the midst of her conversation uh, psionically, she's not kind of expecting this to happen, but you uh, raise your holy sigil and banish her to the shadow realm. Uh, not literally, I just making a Yu-Gi-Oh reference, but I forgot that there's sort of a shadow realm here. Um, yeah. It is space. <laughs> she uh, is suddenly turns translucent uh, and uh, she looks around her and she starts like banging on like almost an invisible force field as she can't seem to move. Uh, she starts yelling at you guys, um, and then she kind of closes her mouth and her eyes and says, You cannot escape the Githyanki. You guys hear this in your skulls. The Githyanki will chase you across the space and stars. We will find you, and you will pay for what you have done to aid the fugitive known as Tropos. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's the extent of my movement. Like, I'm just gonna wave my hand and like, uh-huh, and uh, let's go. Okay, Clack uh, whistles and Click uh, starts flying over. All right, guys, let's get out of here. And uh, he's going to start making his way. Um, we can sort of end combat as the Gith Yankee uh, start to um, pour through the doors. Uh, and I did like Mal's idea of um, carrying a box, so what do I got to roll to try and take a box with me? I'm going to say an athletics check, uh, and same okay. for Mal. Anybody that wants to carry a box uh, would need to make an athletics check, it's not only for speed, but lifting these heavy boxes. Wait, can I can I get, because it looks like there's Ooh. digs or something that's a little bit rounded. Would I be able to use, like, acrobatics to, like, try and roll them out instead? I'll allow it. Hell yeah. I'm going to roll out two. Okay, uh, Zumasu, you are able to quickly rush over and uh, heft a box. They are quite heavy. Um, Sorry, miss, I'm taking this. I, I kind of yell over to the commander. Turn up the music. Oh, okay, sure. They like your music. Sorry. It's it's loud to me, but I forget that for chat it's not technically loud. Sure. Um, okay, so, uh, Mao, you are able to also roll a barrel out successfully. Uh, Clack is going to rush towards this uh, s vessel. Uh, you guys can move out as well as Githyanki warriors start to pour in. God, I hope they have stormtrooper aims. <laughs> they start taking their swords up and like point them towards you guys and go pew pew what are you doing you fools go after them this isn't bloody Star Wars copyright 
I have to just slam it onto the ground. I hope that's not a bad thing. Ugh, yeah, you just like uh, rush it over and like Wait, slam it onto the ground. Uh, is uh, Boom Crash coming? Um, yeah. Sorry. Sure, sure. Uh, you guys get onto the ship and you like start like looking around. It's fairly plain on board. There's three ballistas here. Um, the sail is in the center and like uh, kind of lion fishing uh, towards the back. Uh, Clack jumps into like this sort of uh, uh, hatch and crawls inside and goes, Whoa, whoa, the gravity is weird down here, but is that? And then he rushes towards the uh, aft castle and he uh, like seems to say, guys, I think I can do this. And uh, as you guys like peer your heads down into the uh, grate, um, you can see that Clack has seated himself upon what looks to be a strange throne made out of the same red uh, like metal that the Githyanki seem to use. And he straps himself in while he's like floating in midair and says, I saw one of these things in Alore. I think, I think I might know how it works now that I know what it's used for. Can I make a perception check to see if I recognize it? An insight check, if you'd like. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're a little flummoxed uh, as to what it looks like, but it, it, the excitement is a little much. Did I see it when I was in Nels? Um. Trying to steal shit. You saw a throne in there, but it, it didn't. The same? It didn't look exactly the same. In fact, yeah. it looked rather different. Uh, but Clack seems to have recognized it. Um, I'm as... gonna check out these guns. You start checking out the guns. Uh, they seem to be ballistas. They're uh, auto-mounted, so they seem to take a less action to use. Um, as you guys um, are sitting here, Clack uh, is like, I, I'm trying to concentrate, I think. And then uh, the doors burst open and Githyanki warriors start streaming out onto the dock. The commander is no longer banished uh, and says, After them, you fools, before they take the skiff. And I'm then turn my ballista on them. You turn your ballista on them and like fire a warning shot off into the crowd. They disperse as the uh, bolt locks uh, into the wall of the asteroid that you guys uh, have emerged from. Um, um, can I fire an Eldritch Blast, suppressing fire? Somehow? Yeah, you suppressing fire uh, all the way. Um, <laughs> then uh, Quack starts to like shift uh, the entire vessel. As it starts moving, it kind of jerks upward and then down and like around. And he's like, uh, "I, I think I'm the ship now. I see what it sees." And, uh oh, I think I can see something else. Uh, and then he shouts out, "To the rear! To the rear!" And you guys see flying through space is an ancient or an adult red dragon that starts flying towards you guys. The Githyanki warrior what? that was uh, drawn out into space latches onto one of their wings um, and it starts snarling uh, as it uh, streams towards you guys. Oh, we gotta get out of here! Shoot the thing down! Shoot it down! And then... Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, make some attacks with those ballistas. Let me know if you can control those. Oh! Can bolt? Yes. Uh, you can only use the rear ones, unfortunately. In this Wait, case. Wait, I can't use this one? Uh, just because it doesn't rotate all the way. It's like 180 degrees or so. Oh. Uh, yeah, can I that's... Still say that counted for it, though? I would just move back yeah, sure, you moved back to the other end uh, and fire at the, uh, the dragon. It gets uh, two uh, hits directly to the chest for a total of 38 damage. It roars uh, and, like, some fire, like, bursts out from it, but the sudden attack has veered off of its path and it floats off into the sky, like, uh, past you guys. As it starts to come around, Clack starts moving the ship, and the ship, uh, begins to shift. Uh, about in time. Let's see if I can't move you guys. Ooh, it's a little laggy, but that's fine. Um, you guys uh, pull away from the star dock. The Githyanki have taken up some crossbows and begin shooting at you. <laughs> they just uh, land into the side with several thunks. The dragon spins around, and uh, Clack says, Um, let's, let's try and get out of here, and then turns the ship around, and immediately it starts speeding off uh, at a speed rather faster than any sort of nautical vessel. It jets off into the... Knocked over? <laughs> yeah, you guys like are knocked into the, the end as you see the asteroid 
and the dragon uh, breathing fire like as you leave it starts to fade uh, into the background and you guys escape into the depths of space I also just realized something yes you know how a bunch of games ago we took that strength damage and we've had a few rests since then yeah it should be back I didn't put it back for around two games oh Ooh, yeah at least I was only getting them. I only got minus one, so it didn't affect much. You guys start zooming off into space, and Clack just is screaming at the top of his lungs, Warp speed! Hey, nerd. <laughs> Where are we even headed? I don't know, but I'm going. And then he, like, uh, zooms off, and uh, as warp speed happens, he, like, slows down. Um... And eventually, uh, the ship goes back to like a sort of more tactical speed, where it's just kind of moving as fast as, uh, l like a car, sort of, but in space, 60 uh, miles an hour or so. I'm gonna throw a copper piece off the side. Uh, the copper piece falls down uh, off the side and then starts kind of floating uh, where the midpoint of the ship is. That don't make sense. It doesn't. This space doesn't make sense, guys. Uh, click zooms up. Uh, into the top deck and like kind of starts exploring the space um, you guys see clack uh, a sort of projection of his sort of uh, like Donkey Kong Kremlin face and um, it just appears this projection uh, near you guys on on top of the deck you guys uh, guys we have uh, a strange visitor below deck they might need your attention oh, I'm gonna rush down immediately with my Weapon drawn. Uh, hey, now I'm coming with you. Be quick. And I'll also Not change well. to a uh, slightly different music. I think. Uh, cool. It's also, too funky. It's a little too intense. It was cool for the escape. Um, I'm fine with it all the time. I know. I know. <laughs> um, it was hard for me to think. So you uh, head down below deck, and that is uh, sort of in the middle over here. Um, okay. You rush down, uh, heading through that grate, and uh, there is a sort of oversized humanoid figure made out of this black shining metal, and it's got like a single red uh, eye, you're not sure, and it just sort of like looks at you as you uh, come down. It's like sitting there uh, with its legs kind of, uh, its knees propped up towards its chest awkwardly. It's a Cylon, kill it! I'm kind of probably confused looking at it because I don't know what the hell it is. I think those people said there was a Zodar on the ship, but this is the only thing I sense on board. So it's probably what. This is probably the Zodar. Are what? you are you okay there, pal? It does not respond. In fact, uh, after like it looked at Mao, it has turned back to facing forward. Okay, that's just rude. It. I, he may seem sad, not for nothing. This is a very solemn simulacrum. Oh, get, get, get out of here. Um, I'm gonna take a step forward and be like, um, do you want anything to drink? And I take out the wine bottle. It does not respond to your movements or your actions. I poke it with the wine bottle. Clink. It ignores you. This poor thing's got a Got a sad mood. I thought they said this thing might have been dangerous. If that's what they were talking about. Well, maybe we should stop poking it? I mean, it seems more harmless than anything. Are you... Are you friends with the... The, the GIF, I think is what they were calling themselves? It does not respond. Can I... Can I do, like, a quick insight... Or, like, a perception check? Does it even have a mouth? Can it... Does it look like it can communicate with us? Like, with vocal cords or some sort of physical attributes? Uh, sure. Make an investigation check, I'll say. There it is. Uh, yeah, you can't make hide or tails of this things. Uh, it's... It's completely alien to you. It looks like almost a suit of living armor. That's all you can really tell. Huh. Alright, well, it looks fine. I'm gonna leave it be. Just go back upstairs. 
and just point out, well, there's a thing downstairs. It doesn't talk to anybody, but it seems to be kind of sentient. It's also, um, while it's sitting down, uh, it's encompassing most of the height of this small middle section of the ship. But Mao, you and Zumosu are kind of like floating, almost like you're treading water, and you're kind of like bobbing up and down slightly on this level. There's not much room here uh, to stand up, and this Zodar is very cramped in here. Um, but for you guys, you can kind of easily move about the cabin, and now below you, you see that there's another grate on the floor. And curiosity just kind of gets the better of you, and you open up the grate, and you find a copy of the top of the ship on the bottom, and as soon as you pop out, gravity is reversed. You are on the upside down oh, no. of the ship. There are three what? more ballistas on the bottom of the ship. Ugh. If I vomit, does it hit me or does it fall off? Which way does it go? It goes towards the gravity plane, which is in the center of the ship. Okay. So, you're gonna have to clean that up yourself. What? <laughs> Zumasu, you're like kind of looking around the ship, uh, and you head into like the uh, forecastle, which uh, encompasses the front half of the ship. It's like wider. Uh, just like the back of the ship is kind of wider as well. But uh, in here, there is just two, like, uh, almost windows that look like concave, uh, convex from the inside, or concave from the inside, convex from the outside, uh, eyes. Um, they're kind of tinted orange and dimly glowing. But uh, moreover, there's also a cannon suspended in the middle of the gravity plane by ropes uh, and a few cannonballs uh, just kind of strapped onto the wall. I guess this is the front of the ship, right? Yes. I need to check out the ship map. Um, huh. I'm charging it to uh, Clax uh, hel uh, Helms and say, like, uh, do you know where we're navigating to? Uh, so Clack, um, he gets off, he unstraps himself from the throne, and he says, ugh, ugh, that was a bit of a rush, but, uh, I... There's been tales of these things. He gestures towards the throne. They're called spell jamming helms. Ugh, definitely draining. He like looks at his hands. I don't think I could cast spells for a while. But uh, I think I still have attunement to it. Um, while I'm sitting on that throne, I seem to have full control of this ship. I can see through it as if I am the ship. I, I can like feel the space around it. It's very unique. Yeah, I'm shake him. And he's like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's good enough. Like, uh, do you know where you're going? I now don't. Can... But if those gith are after us, I think we might be in trouble. I don't even know where we were teleported to. But and he pulls out the device. If this thing is looking for Tropos, and Tropos is familiar with this, maybe Tropos can find our way back. And maybe we can find Tropos. If they're looking for him, and he's somewhere in space, then he's probably in danger. Eh. I don't care about that, but the, he is the only uh, guiding uh, position we have. So we go toward him. However, there's a, a, no, another alternative. The al alternative is that the, all the Gith will have the same idea and will converge there as well. And we might have a big fight on our hands. So I say... I'm going to gather everyone around. Sure. And hold on, I want to do stuff with the robot man. I gotta, I gotta pull you on the ear. We'll discuss <laughs> the robot man later. I want to play with the robot. You are pulled by the ear by a mon. Stop touching the toys. I okay. Can talk, I can talk with him. I swear. I got an idea. You guys have a family meeting on deck as a mon forcibly pulls Zoom also. Also, thank you for that donation. Now nowhere. <laughs> so. Uh, like a, so. We have a forward direction and a reverse direction. Frankly, um, okay, Clack, what is the fuel reserve like? I don't think there is. I think I'm the okay. fuel. Okay, provision, huh. pro provision wise, I can provide uh, with a full rest. And I can, we can stay here indefinitely. So the, can I. The question is the navigation. Navigation. I assume that none of us know anything about astral charts. I do. And then, convenient. Okay. Well, I uh, study space you, for a living. This, why do you think I was at the Hoodoo? Yeah, but the astro, uh, but the astro charts uh, require uh, relative positioning. If you're not in the same position as the planet itself, then the, the everything will be out of alignment. 
Um, so, so the problem is we, if we go toward Tropos, every, everything's gonna converge there in all likelihood, and we're gonna have a mass battle in our hands. Is this worth it or not? Or do we take our chances? Well, judging by this thing, this thing's full of information. And he pulls out the clack, pulls out the device. It seems to say that uh, it looks like they called for a void cruiser, whatever that is. But um, they've called for one, but there isn't one for a few days. That barren asteroid that we just left. I don't think there were any other ships nearby. It might take them a while to actually get up get away to get out to us. Furthermore, I think this ship is pretty fast. It's small, but I think it's pretty fast. It also is armed, which is kind of nice. Yeah, the Gitjanki seem to be warriors. Uh, I'd say we go for Tropos, because otherwise we'd have to spend a bunch of time indefinitely looking for how to get back. Tropos is our only lead at the moment. Clack keeps, like, uh, filing through the thing, and he says, it looks like there's something here on Tropos. It, it says... Uh, it's kind of like a wanted poster. A space wanted poster. It looks like he... Uh, he was a communications expert. A navigator. On another... They say void cruiser again. But uh... It looks like he... Sent out a signal. That... Uh, what is it? Reveal it lifted their cloak. What does that mean? And uh, it was during a battle. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I guess it revealed their position, and it caused a catastrophic failure where their entire fleet was taken out. The only thing that wasn't recovered was Tropos, which is considered a deserter. I what guess that's why they're chasing him. But what destroyed the fleet? Listen. What's more important? is that he's a communications and navigation expert. If we can find him using this device that's tracking his psychic signal through space, we might be able to use him to get us back home. Sounds like the only plan we got. It's either we do that or we hang out here till they come and kill us, because obviously we're fugitives now because we even know him. And they can track the ship anyway. Right. You know, this isn't anything new. You're a fugitive once, you're a fugitive for the rest of your life. You might as well at least stick to getting home. I mean, at yeah. least what we did was on brand, so... Yeah, true. We didn't was... blow anything up much. Yeah, I've already died once before. We can make this work. Yes. Alright. Well, I think I should get back to piloting this ship. I'll, uh... Uncle Bug Metal Man. I'll let you guys chill out over here. Let us know when you need us to fight things. Clack scrambles below deck. I gotta, I gotta sleep on the deck. Alright, uh, you kinda sleep on the deck. Which deck, top or bottom? Uh, the top, I guess. Okay. Mon's top deck. Zumasu goes below deck to screw with the Zodar. I'm not screwing with him, I'm trying to form a connection. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kinda politely sit Bro. down, put, put, put the wine bottle on the side, and kinda like sit down cross-legged in front of him and be like, Okay, buddy. I, I, it seems like you don't want to be here, but we don't know nothing about you. I'm gonna I'm try and communicate with you. You might feel a little invasive, but um, we're gonna see how this goes. I'm gonna use Detect Thoughts on it. Uh, you use Detect Thoughts. Um, you start weaseling your way uh, into the Zodar's mind. There's a weird, almost an alien maze that you're trying to get through to get to this Zodar's mind, which you've never really encountered before. And as you're, like, concentrating, the Zodar turns its head towards you. There's a little screech of metal as it does so. And it reaches out, and it just grabs your entire head. And then it, it just uh, stops there. You feel an immense strength and pressure coming from the Zodar. Um, it kind of, like, squeezes a little bit, uh, creating some dents in your helmet. Uh, the surprise kind of causes you to stop concentrating. And then it just, like lets you go. Again, I dare ya. <laughs> okay, so maybe I won't do that again. Hey, you know, just throwing it out there, maybe have Boomcrash try to talk to it. Just I, a thought. I guess he could try. Whole brain thing. Those other things were doing brain stuff. Well, I just tried a brain thing, so I'll, I'll just... Okay, Boomcrash, do you want to try? 
Um, wait, what's going on? <laughs> they want to try and talk to the Zodar. Yeah, I mean, I like, but my character has been marveling at the fact that she's actually flying through the night sky and is like really enjoying this bizarre acid trip she's on. So she has no idea what the fuck is going on below deck. <laughs> I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go up deck and be like, um, but Chris, so I tried using my mind detect thoughty thing to try and communicate with the Zoda. It didn't quite work. Do you mind coming to see if you could try? Sure. This is neat though. So. Also, thank you for that donation. It was not unnoticed. That's why I want to stay down below. So. Uh, so this like, is our friend, the Zodar. I'd, I'd stay a little bit away from him. He's, he's got kind of a heft to him. Um, so um, He didn't want me prying. Uh, since we got a, a massive donation just now of $100, uh, I didn't catch that. I think the name was Ash. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to sort of... They didn't specify, I don't think. Uh, but let's do uh, a miles, one of the incentives where you are kind of given aid. Um, so I'm going to say that... Uh, Boom crash, uh, you've been like looking through the uh, device that Clack had. He kind of like left it behind. Uh, you were just kind of passively marveling at all this weird stuff and hoping that you could gather some arcane knowledge about this uh, event. And as Zim also is uh, pondering about the Zodar, you uh, look down and um, there seems to be a little bit of info on a Zodar. There's like a, a sort of encyclopedia in, involved in this device practically a Pokedex, um, but they seem to have encountered Zodars before, the Githyanki, and their only notes on them are that they are a strange, supremely powerful uh, alien race, but not much is known about them. The only thing that is known about them is that uh, their armor is nigh impenetrable. Um, they seem to be able to cast spells, but they are almost always passive. Um, they're overwhelmingly strong but almost always take no actions they uh, a bit of uh, known alien lore is that Zodars only speak three times in their lives and they only cast spells three times in their lives as well I have an idea load him into the cannon if he's indestructible he'll make a fine ammunition that's rude, man. Okay. You can't... Well, he's, not gonna, he's not gonna object. Wait, he's he's also probably not gonna fit. Um, I'm... I mean, I reveal this info, and I, I it's just like, I look at the Zodar, and I wave, and I'm like, Hi, my name is Boomcrash. Um... It just creepily I, turns its head towards you. Um... I don't want to be impolite, but um, can you tap once for yes and twice for no while we're communicating with you? We don't want to be rude. It doesn't I, I bow my head. I feel really bad now. <laughs> I didn't mean to kill you, man. It doesn't seem to make any moves to respond. Okay. Um... Wait, I got a pen and paper. Do you know how to write? And I kind of just like write, hi, how are you on the paper? Pass it to him. Uh, the paper kind of like lands on its knee, and it ignores it. Maybe that counts as speaking. I don't know. Uh, 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 Mr. Zodar thing? Sir? I don't want to assume gender, but I... Hello? Seems um, fairly non-gender. Okay. Um, then... Are you trying to speak in its mind, or are you trying to, like, No, just I haven't tried that yet, because, um, okay. they seem to be responding to verbal stuff, um, and so I was just like, I'm going to try and communicate telepathically with you, um, if you don't want me to, just tap twice for no, okay? It looks at you. And I... Okay, so communicate telepathically. And but... then it raises its hand in a stop motion. Okay. Um, I, 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 I pulled up my talents and I'm like, okay, back and off. Um, do you by any chance know anyone named Tropos? It lowers its hand and goes back to a passive stance. Mm. Okay. Um... 
guess we gotta leave him a gnome for now. Yeah, but what you said is true. He's pretty this passive anyway. Be. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna leave the paper and pen right next to him. If, if you ever want to say anything, guy, just here you go. And if you want to come up top and hang out with us, like you can as well. Um, but we don't want to bother you. Thank you and sorry. And seems so, to I'm gonna go. completely ignore you guys, but. You finish your piece. Uh, Amon is resting on deck. Uh, Mao is just kind of staring at them. Um, uh, Resummon Goose, seeing as he's already here. I mostly so. didn't want to forget Zo uh, Goose. I almost said Zeus. Uh, <laughs> Zeus. It's a more powerful Wait a pet. Second. I'm a summon. I'm a summon my dog. <laughs> we it. have limited amount of room. <laughs> I'm gonna kick it off. <laughs> yeah, at least the bird can fly. I will kick your dog off of here and watch him float away. I thought we liked the Jose. We no room. He can go downstairs with the giant robot. All right, Mal, I'll be honest with you. This whole thing kind of freaks me out because I didn't realize you could go into whatever this area is. I I thought Alore and that whole area was big enough. So I, I, I cringe over with like hands outright. Like, what do you think, what do you think I'm doing? Trying I'm just trying to, trying to keep it together. Well, We're that's space. why. That's why the dog will help. And and I'm gonna have Jose appear and then I'm just gonna start petting him. <laughs> Okay, I don't actually know if this character thing still works. It does not. Oh, no. Uh, so I'm gonna... Should still have the asset somewhere. Okay, well, at least... Oh, you're big. You're big dog? <laughs> big dog. I don't think that's been around for a while. Uh, Hello, uh... boy. You didn't know that this sort of thing existed, right? That great vastness of whatever this is. Space? This is the, this is like really big sky, right? I asked I asked the guy, Clack. What? I thought you were talking to the dog. No, what is what is this area we're in? Is this just like the sky but bigger? Uh the vessel uh has like started streaming through space in the in your conversations with the Zodar. Um Clack is like just unconscious on the throne, but he creates a projection of his face uh and speaks with you through it. Um and this projection seems to appear in random places on the ship. Um, it pops up in front of your face and goes, well, uh, oh wow, I'm tall from here, huh? Um, okay, so, um, space is everywhere. And your, your world that you're used to, in theory, first of all, now this is going to be weird, the world is not actually flat, it's actually the sphere and it, it rotates around a, a solar object we call the sun, okay? Um, okay. There, there's another sun, but it's really small and nobody really sees it. But uh, we astronomers are kind of aware of it. Um, so... Uh, I heard about the round world thing, but I didn't know we rotated it around anything. Oh yeah, but this whole system, uh, this is what we call the wild space. There are other theories about what wild space is, but generally, it's just emptiness. That's not comforting at all. We theorize that there are other planets. We've been able to use observatories to peer in on other, uh, our world-like places. And, uh, there might be other places like this. I mean, I'm definitely sensing some places nearby. My senses are expanded. In this spell jamming vessel. Don't don't get too into it. You do want to eventually get home, right? Oh yeah, yeah. But this is just really exciting for me. Do you want to write any of it down? Listen, I got a memory like Fort Knox, whatever that is. I can I can remember all this stuff. I'll write down my my findings when I take a break, which. I might need to. This is kind of exhausting. Uh, spell jamming. Fair enough. Would one of us be able to take over? Uh, only spellcasters. Uh -oh. Does divine spells count? I think so. But the more powerful the spellcaster, the better. This seems to... I, I'm sort of limited. I can only go up to 5th level, really. But, uh... But someone that has more powerful than 5th level might be able to do better than me. No one. Yeah. yeah. Nope. <laughs> That's pretty powerful, not gonna lie. Well. 
Well, we might be able to take turns. We'll, we'll get there. So, um, another tidbit. Um, so, uh, you guys have looked through your barrels and stuff that you've gotten. It's mostly, it's mostly filled with food, although one is filled with ballista bolts. Um, so the one that Zumasu had is probably filled with ballista bolts. Mao, yours is filled with, uh, food. And, um... Mao got the good stuff. Kind of. Uh, it's, it's fairly bland, but they're these weird, like, tentacles that you can sort of see. You're not sure what they are, but it's labeled as Artuk tongues. Um, which tongues of anything is really questionable to you, but you've never seen a tongue like this before. Um, Clack says, um, we've been traveling for a bit, and, um, I think we can, we can go a bit further, but something I didn't really think of, um, I feel like we're running low on air. Wait, what? Yeah, she, uh, and he, like, puts up a holographic diagram, and it says, we're... We're stuck in an air envelope. It seems to be semi-permeable, so air can go through it and not come out. But we have a limited supply. I think the ship was supposed to refuel, and uh, it didn't. So I thought, there, I thought there was no fuel. Why are you telling us the uh, bullshit? Do we need to eject you to space? Look, it, it it moves on spells, but you guys need oxygen to live. If we go to some place with oxygen, we can refuel the air envelope, fill it back up, so we can keep going. Um, I'm picking up... Uh, th there's two planets nearby. Um, I'm not sure which one you guys want to try and visit, but if we want to make good time, I think we only have time for one of them. They're a little out of the way. Um, you guys want to go to... Uh, there's a planet that seems to be covered in... Uh, looks like green stuff. Uh, plant life, maybe? Uh, there's another one that seems to be mostly water. That's what I'm picking up. Uh, I like plants. What do you guys think? I mean... That's personally. <laughs> there's things probably in both of those places that can attack us. Yeah, but do you want to get bludgeoned to death or do you want to drown? I'd, I'd rather get bludgeoned. Green, green has guaranteed uh, air. Oxygen. Also yeah. true. Water, you gotta convert all that shit, and I don't want to. And I don't want to do chemistry. I flunked that. Hey. I'm a chemist. I vote plant planet. I say plant planet. Although algae could be on the other one. Allie knows well, that now doesn't. Jungle, planet, jungle planet's biggest risk that we might run into Ewoks, and I will kill all the Ewoks. <laughs> or, extreme, or extremely flammable uh, atmospheres. All right. Well, I'm adjusting our course. And the ship starts to spin throughout space, uh, tilting uh, and listing to the side as it does. The fins kind of like vibrating with uh, this weird glowing energy. And it starts zooming off. And you guys go to the jungle planet. Um, the You guys get out of warp speed. And you can tell that the oxygen is starting to get a little thin. Um, and uh, Clack says, eh, Okay, I'm going to have to dip in a bit low. Um, but uh, I'm going to need you guys to probably gather some additional supplies if we have them. There's not much here to repair the ship, and uh, we might need it if we run into problems. If there's jungle down there, then there's wood and food. Probably yeah. water? I can, make, I can make food. We have food. I also can make food. Oh, okay. Well, we have food. Then I just need you to grab some wood. I think this things mostly made of wood. No one likes your food. All you make is turkey legs. I make gruel. Nourishing gruel. I mean, my turkey legs taste the same, but... <laughs> anyway, let's get down here. <laughs> yeah. It also could cost spell slots, too. Um, so, you guys uh, start heading down low towards this jungle planet. Um, Clack says, uh, there's not really any place to land, but I can drop you guys off. Do you guys have... Uh, Weapons that can chop wood? Oh, yeah. I don't. I'm not using my scimitar to cut down a tree. Fuck you. I got a max. Oh. Alright. Wow, oh. you seem so, like, adamantly violent about that <laughs> idea. Okay, I, mean... I think. Well, I think there's some rope on board, so uh, take that with you and lash them together. Oh, wait. I don't have an axe. 
I have a bunch of oh, okay, hammers, a, a javelin, a war pick, a long sword, but no axe. Okay, guys, I have a question. And daggers. Guys, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would blight uh, be good to just just nuke the land and then just take the trees from there? The trees need to be intact. Yeah, but like you know, just blight, just withering to death. Would that give us lumber? Can would it dry the wood faster? Uh, I think yeah. it would cause severe irreparable damage to a tree. And yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think I'll be fine just using my long sword. Okay. Mm. Well, uh, either way, there seems to be uh, some weapons in addition to the ballista that was uh, put in there. There's a few, like, uh, sort of just long swords in there that you might be able to use. Not really any axes. They also don't seem to be the weird silver swords that they get the Yankee head. But you guys do have some slashing weapons available, though they're not ideal. Uh, Clack... Pass out the long swords to everybody. Clack doesn't really have a place to land, but he does find this weird, awkward tree that kind of is spread out with a bit of like ankle deep water within it uh almost like a tree lily pad and he kind of lets you guys off all right i'm gonna circle up here i'll uh i'll just call out when you need me um i'll send click with you click will be able to help and let's go to the jungle planet <laughs> i want to keep it <laughs> You guys uh, land on this like oh big God. lily pad thing, and you see these giant like hamsters. They look straight up like hamsters, uh, and you kind of misjudge the size at first. But you see them nibbling on these like blue bell sort of plants, um, or like horns, and they're just kind of nibbling on them. Uh, Wait, are they hamsters or capybaras? They're straight up hamsters. They are giant space hamsters. Okay. Fairly common. They're just sort of nibbling on things as uh, they're down there. You're kind of in this like pool of water on this lily pad-like tree. There's a lot of alien plant life nearby that you're really not sure what's wood and what's not. I guess I do like a perception check to see which area has like, trees. Like, Probably. The lily pad. Uh, sure. Hard to hear you. We heard Ariel in the background. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm trying to use perception to like kind of take a general guess of which place looks like a forest and wood. Uh, it looks like in general these weird orange, uh, glowing trees seem to have some sort of sturdy wood beneath them holding them up. What you're on seems to be a lot more viney and less like uh wood. Hmm. Can I use... Okay, do the vines go down pretty... Like, how far off the ground are we? Can I just, like, make the... Uh, you guys are, like, 50 feet vines? off the ground. Maybe more. Okay. I'm gonna start collecting vines to make a makeshift rope. Okay. You guys did bring rope with you uh, to gather yeah. the logs. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but I'd rather use these vines... That's fair. That part make a sleight of hand check. Okay. I'm gonna ask Mal for help, because I'm bad at that. Fine. Mal, you roll for it, because I'm bad at this. <laughs> Sleight of hand? Yeah. Now, how I rope? How I rope? Well, you see, you, you tie a, new, uh, a loop and a loop, and then you put your hands in you it, and you just kind of... <laughs> I was going to try to say tie a noose, but no. That actually a is loop. a useful rope style for certain scenarios, other than just that one. The, the self-tightening... Uh, there is an actual loop. Taut line yeah. hitch. Yes. Really yes, 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 that. Look at you, boy scout, with your not knowledge. <laughs> I had to use it to put because he's very over. naughty. Oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> guys, I think I got a rope down. Mal with Mouse help, I think we got a rope down. Let's uh, let's get to that orange tree, I guess, and avoid those big old rats. They're just kind of like uh, passively nibbling at stuff. Um, they are kind of cute, though. Cute. You can kind of uh, get down, but probably not to the tree. Even if you got to the tree, there's not much to hang on. Uh, instead of, like, branches, it's just covered in this weird... these weird bubbles of, like, uh, plant life, uh, which eventually, like, bulb out into these uh, large orange things. You're not really sure what they are, um, but Zumasu, you eventually can make an athletics check to reach, it to, uh, to reach the bottom. Or acrobatics I'll allow as well, since this is a rope-assisted thing. I wish I had assistance. <laughs> Is that good enough to not fall? Yeah, it's fine. It's not that hard. Okay. It's a rope. Uh, are the rest of you guys going down? Yeah, I'll go down. I guess. 
Yeah. Okay, then acrobatics or athletics, whichever. DC's about nine. Easy peasy. Uh, so Mon and, or sorry, Mao and Boom Crash make it down. Uh, Amon, are you staying up there? Uh, I guess. Okay, you are staying up there. You see Clack uh, and their ship, like, uh, so kind of circling the area in a wide arc. Uh, eventually it, like, comes to a rest and kind of stops uh, near you guys. Click kind of zooms down uh, to see what the rest of you guys are doing. Um, Click starts investigating the uh, giant hamsters, which are largely ignoring you. Um, eventually one kind of, like, uh, turns from what it's doing and goes over to start sniffing Mao. Uh, its whiskers are, like, brushing against you as it sniffs, uh, deeply into your head. I'm just gonna try to ignore it. But I'm keeping my eye on it. It's not biting my head off. It isn't. Although, it does, uh, sort of, yes. like, push back its, uh, lips and, like, gnaw on your shoulder. Nope. Uh, nope. you kind of, like, smack it on the nose and go, like, no! And it, like, just kind of shakes its head and, like, uh, starts backing away from you. And it starts, are... like, nibbling on the blue oh. bells again. Are, are you okay, Mel? That, that, no. That's not good. Don't let them nibble on you. Stand dominant. I feel like something worse could have happened there, but we got lucky. Fair enough. I'm gonna try and climb in this tree. Are you climbing the tree? Uh, I guess where the because it's cool. I'd like really to cut weird. it down from up there. Well, I, I actually don't they start that the thing where they strap on and they start it and then, I don't know. It's up to you, man. Maybe I get a branch. Uh, oh, this... actually, yeah, that's a, that's my logic. I'm gonna go for a branch. That might be easier to chop down. You climb sort of up the tree. Uh, there's a few footholds that you can get, um, but it doesn't seem to have branches. It seems to have these weird bulbous plant-like spheres. Uh, you're not sure what or why these exist, but there are no real branches on this tree. Okay, this is a weird-ass tree. So the only wood would be the trunk? Yep. I guess so, I hop back down. Um, those bulbous thingies worry me, though. If they all stand out of the way, I can try and pop one. Maybe one from a f further away? Maybe see what happens. Yeah, poke. I'm gonna go behind you. Yeah, just shoot one. Uh, you shoot one, and... Way away from where we are, and way away from my answer. So, like, down south. Gotcha. You, uh, oh. shoot a arrow, uh, off towards that thing, and it explodes. <laughs> but not in a really violent way. Orange goo just gets everywhere, splattering everything. <laughs> um, the hamsters, like, uh, get startled by it. Um... They uh, initially like go over and start like uh, lapping up some of the uh, orange stuff. Uh, it's getting all over their faces. Ew. They're like gathering around it, um, and then uh, after a while, they like stop and lift their heads, uh, and then they start running off. I don't like this. I don't like the look of that. Oh dear. One of them uh -oh. uh, starts running as well uh, as another creature emerges. And you guys hear a loud roar uh, as a gigantic, uh, partially hamster, uh, something reminiscent of a tyrannosaur, uh, marches out, uh, destroying one of the trees nearby as it roars, and it chomps onto the hamster, grabbing it in its maw and shaking it around. Uh, blood is getting everywhere, and it like tosses it to the ground and puts a foot on top of it in uh, in total victory. Uh, it then looks towards you guys, uh, where the explosion came from, uh, and then it starts marching towards you. Let's roll for initiative. Is it like the kitty doors from South Park? I don't know. This is why I'm at the top of the tree. That's fair. Okay. Uh, I can get all of you guys, I think. Okay, because I'm having a problem. There we go. Oh, good. Uh, the Tyrannhamsaurus uh, is going first. 
Uh, oops, I moved uh. the marker. Uh, okay. I will annihilate this planet. I don't like this planet. <laughs> like Yzma from Emperor's New Crew. I hate this jungle. It starts rushing towards you guys uh, at full tilt. Um, it heads towards Mao, uh, and it ha does have a reach. It seems to completely ignore the pebble floating in the sky, uh, and it's going to make a bite attack against you, Mao. Can I... Oh, I'm not quite next turn. Uh, 26. For 20... 20 piercing damage. And can you dodge? No, I don't have a reaction because it's not my turn. We haven't taken a turn. You must make a dex saving throw. Okay, uh, it chomps on you and, like, uh, pulls you up into the air. It then starts to try and shove you, uh, with its tongue into one of its two hamster cheeks. Uh, but you're able to <laughs> kick off of its teeth and, uh, fall out of its mouth, like, nearby. Uh, splashing into the water below. Um... It <laughs> is angered by this. It does have a second attack as it uh, spins around with its tail, uh, crashing into Boom Crash. It has slightly longer range for this. Uh, that is going to miss, though, I believe. Uh, yeah. Wow. And Amon, it is your turn. I'm also going to change the music now that I'm no longer... Hell yeah! Here we go. More 80s retro awesome. Okay, uh, you know what? Uh, let's uh, just light it. Alright, good thing you prepared that today. Yep. Uh, they they told me not to blight the forest, but I was going to anyway, just in case. Uh, that's going to be... Um, con save? I believe. Uh, yeah, constitution save. Ooh, I think it's going to take half from this. Uh, so, oh, there it is. 39, so we round up. Uh, that is going to be 20 damage. Uh, it starts, like, uh, withering away at its side, but it, like, starts uh, spinning around and shaking it off. Um, it seems to be naturally resistant to some of uh, your strange diseases that you're kind of, like, trying to uh, draw into the creature with necrotic energy. Anything else for you, Amon? Well, uh, no. Oh, that's disappointing. Alright. Goose is turn. Uh, Goose is going to fly nearby. Yeah. Goose is going to fly nearby, but stay behind and mostly out of sight. Okay. Um, is Goose going to take the help or action or anything? Um... Or just, like, kind of bother it? Uh, yeah. He's just gonna pester. Pro he's gonna provide flanking. Got it. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, it is Click's turn. Click is going to zoom around the other side as well, uh, a little bit away, and is going to uh, shoot at it. A little beam of force energy uh, shoots out of the center of Click. Uh, ooh, for eight force. Mao, it is your turn. You have just landed on the ground prone. I will use half my movement to get up. And then I will attack it and then run away. Okay. Okay, there we go. There you go. Uh, and that is going to hit, and you do have sneak attack thanks to Goose, surprisingly. Uh, Hell yeah. As you, uh, it reaches down to look at you, Goose, like, pecks on its head, and it, like, gets up and tries to look uh, at what was the matter, and gets hit for a total of... 25 damage. Um, it takes a uh, thunderous blow from Cinder Smite uh, beneath its neck and it roars uh, in pain. And you can move if you'd like. I use disengage and then Bone I'll submission. use the remainder 15 feet. Okay. To hide under here, but not actually hide. You hide underneath this like lily pad sort of vine tree. Uh, Zumosu, it's your turn. Okay. Um, what's your policy on cold attacks? obviously has legs and tendons, right? Uh, presumably. Um, I mean, you can try and do an attack. If you're gonna try and, like... I don't really I do called strikes, but what do you want to do? Wanna, I want to try and basically go for its leg and try to, like, make it so, it, you know, it's a big creature. If you hurt its leg, it can't put the weight on it. It's gonna have issues. 
I'm going to say right? that would be considered essentially you're trying to shove the creature. Okay. But it's through an attack? I mean, that's kind of how you would do it anyway. Okay. Um, Alright, I'm going to swing at that. Yeah, that probably don't hurt. Oh. Ah! Yeah, surprisingly, uh, it tries to snap after Mao with its little hamster jaws, um, and you're able to strike a blow at its kneecap, and then it, like, uh, tumbles, like, onto its side, prone. It, like, kind of, uh, moves its head up, uh, screeching towards the sky in a more hamster-like roar. <laughs> okay, if it's prone, that means I get auto-crit on it, right? As long as I hit. That is not how that works, but you have advantage on it. On it. If okay. it is paralyzed, you would get an auto crit, or if it's incapacitated. Okay. Um. We should try to claim it. it. You can have a dinosaur <laughs> ride. <laughs> I'm gonna swing at it now that I have advantage. Sure. And bonus action, I'm gonna prepare a smite. Um, landing smite on it. Okay. So first the attack. There's a 17 hit. You charge your sword, and that is going to blow. That's going to hit. Okay, so I got a few dice to roll. First, I'm going to roll my longsword. Then I'm going to roll my regular radiant. Okay. Smite. I'm going to blinding smite. Okay, it's going to need to make a con save. Is it going to take the damage automatically? I always forget I... how it works. Yeah, I believe so. The con save is just to not be blinded. Okay, it is blinded. Okay, and then I'm gonna divine smite. Damn. Uh, as a blinding flash of radiant light comes out of your weapon, uh, it screeches uh, in pain uh, and turns away from the light, uh, and then you just pump it filled with a shock of electricity, dealing 19 radiant damage to it. Uh, it is looking severely wounded. Its body seems crippled and withered in, uh, in its own way. Boom crash. It is I'm your just turn. Out here bullying hamsters. Uh, um. The RSPCA will hear of this. Also prone. <laughs> oh gosh. I mean, what do I got? What do I got? What do I got? What's um. That? Yeah, I'm just gonna just blast it. Fuck it. Well, when in <laughs> doubt. Uh, it is prone, but it's also huge, so I'm not going to say that this is any problem for you. Um, yeah, that's... With advantage, that's definitely going to hit, yeah. Second one. Uh, you launch two blows to it, both of which hit, uh, and it, like, sort of tumbles along the ground into the, into the water. Um, and it dies. <laughs> <laughs> It splashes its tail and its head onto the ground. I uh, think we got food, guys. Yeah, you got food. Uh, meanwhile, Mao, make a perception check. Yes, Captain. Was it 15 get me, Captain? Or 15? They're both just 15s. Um... You smell some strange sort of uh sort of pungent scent in the air i'm not sure if it's from that explosive thing that you blew up but i'm gonna need you to make a wisdom save uh -oh. okay someone's tripping balls okay uh you like have this weird sensation that's like kind of causing you to hallucinate a bit um it's almost causing you to to feel an artificial high, but you manage to shake it off. Um, you can't quite tell where it's coming from, uh, but you do notice that there is this uh, misty pollen in the air, and it seems to be centered on this flower over here. Oh, yeah, I'm on the wrong layer. This flower over here, towards the south. Okay. Well... I'm I'm gonna probably try and like blow it up or cut it off or douse it with water or something just to stop the pollen from coming out. Uh, I think douse it with water do not blow it up. Yeah, you you said a few <laughs> things. Which one are you doing? I don't know. Boom crash. This... Uh, 
What? There's a weird, there's a weird thing that's over here. It's messing with my head. Can we somehow destroy the pollen? Or, I don't know, something? Um, uh, well, get away from it. I'll, I'll, I'll try and firebolt it. Okay. So, I'm gonna throw a mode of fire on the thing. Okay, you shoot a firebolt at the thing. Make an attack roll. Okay. All right, uh, that is going to definitely hit the uh, sort of not moving thing. Uh, you launch the fire at it, it ignites some of the pollen in the area in a bit of flash. Um, the plant starts moving. Uh, it seems very angered by uh, this sudden blast of fire, and it starts kind of wiggling towards you. It only moves five feet, um, but it does take uh, 22 fire damage and it is not looking very good. These weird tentacles start, uh, like, wiggling out of it as it starts shambling towards you. I scream. <laughs> I hate, hate this planet. I haven't gotten my hamster leg yet. Zumasu, make a wisdom save. We've got bigger problems. Wait, but if it's poison, aren't I immune? It might not be poison. Uh, is it magical? I'm gonna say uh, it's not magical and it's not technically a poison. Okay. Okay, I'm still. still yeah, you're still pretty good. good. Uh, you feel the same sensation that Mao did. It must have been some sort of. Actually, are you immune to disease? Uh, I don't think I am. Maybe not I yet. I, uh, I I don't I, remember when I, paladins I get it, but um. They eventually get it, but I I don't know if that's a feat of my thing. Let me double check this. It's fine. You're immune uh, anyway, uh, and. You feel this sensation as well, but uh, it quickly passes. You see that okay. there is another flower near you. It's not moving, but it's like quivering a little bit, almost in uh, anticipation. Yeah. I'm gonna just walk away from it. Screw that thing. <laughs> okay, yeah, you kind of walk away from it, uh, and it seems to ignore you. Um, we have to deal with that one too if we want that hamster meat. Uh, oopsie doodle, this thing. thing's dead. I wonder if you want the hamster meat. Well, we said we wanted food, so... <laughs> we can summon food, but anywhere. we want this food. Come on, it's your turn. There's a, a plant shambling towards Boom Crash. I got to attempt to do a uh, total bit on, on, on it. Okay. It's going to be in here. Uh... Uh, yeah, it fails. Uh, and it takes 20 necrotic damage. Uh, this thing... Mm -hmm. Is looking fairly weakened. It starts to wither and shrivel up uh, in the necrosis. Whether or not it can hear, it seems to be affected by this, and it kind of like starts retreating back to its place. It cl kind of closes up and uh, roots itself back into the water. <laughs> seems to be ignoring you now. Hey, Boomcrash, shoot that one over there, and then I can collect the hamster meat. Yes, can I? Take an action? Yeah, sure. Nope, nothing okay. seems to be happening right now. Okay, um, I'm... Bye. Oh, and Mount Shoot. did it as well. Use your cinder smite. Hey, that's true. Oh, uh, fuck. You both line uh... up some shots, uh, and... I mean, the thing isn't moving. I'm gonna say that that's kind of advantage. Uh, you have, so... You have Ank, Gazebo. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah, roll that damn. Oh, that's the lowest I think I've seen Cinder Smite do. Minus Don't 14. Judge. That's minus 18. Uh, yeah, the uh, man trap is like on fire and blazing. It's sort of like wiggling about uh, as it like tries to put itself out in the water, uh, but it starts like wiggling away. Yeah, you better run. That's my claim. I go back to trying to. Uh, you guys can make probably. other attacks against it as well while it's retreating. Uh, I'm gonna focus on eating my <laughs> natural my... twenty. Hey. I'm gonna get... go go for it because I want to see this damage. Oh jeez! Holy crud! That's a uh, thirty-six <laughs> damage. Uh, the thing explodes wow. into fire. It goes up in a blaze, leaving nothing but cindering leaves uh, that crumble into the water and start Did dispersing. Did I accidentally cast fireball? <laughs> you accidentally cast fireball. I mean, that's above average fireball damage. So yeah. <laughs> um, Zumasu, you head over to the Tyrannhamsaurus and start, like, carving off meat, forgetting that you were here to collect wood. Um, they can collect the wood, I'm 
I, I helped kill this thing. Okay, uh, you guys are largely unbothered. Uh, most things seem to avoid these uh, man traps in the region, as well as avoid a Taranhem Saurus's territory. They know better. Man trap, and I keep hearing in my head, man flesh. Man flesh. Yeah, they're called man traps, but they're essentially carnivorous plants that can wiggle around it like mm. five feet. Um, they're the things from Hollow Knight. Uh, you guys start going over to some of these trees and, like, uh, chop them down. As the trees, like, fall down, they land, and then, like, the little orange pustules, like, explode everywhere, uh, covering everything in a sticky, sweet substance. Uh, similar to glowing honey, I guess. Uh, you guys chop up some of the wood, and you're able to use ropes to, like, pulley them back up to where Amon is, uh, and Amon kind of helps, like, drag them up. Zumasu also, uh, comes back with a bunch of meat, as much as he can carry. orange stuff. I mean, okay, let me just double check and see something. I, I don't think I'm immune to disease yet. I don't know, the hamsters were licking it. They it were. Fine. Okay, I'm gonna collect a little bit in some flasks. Make an intelligence check. Uh, I'm gonna say Boom Crash. Because uh, Boom Crash uh, was the last person who was able, who was holding the encyclopedia. You'll have to roll it. You can get that away real quick. Oh, okay. Oh. I will roll using Boom Crash's character sheet. Uh, gonna make an intelligence check. I guess it's technically nature, but it doesn't really apply here. Okay, um, Boom Crash uh, actually pulls out the encyclopedia. They took it to the uh, the surface just in case it might have anything like useful and information. She pulls up giant space hamsters. Giant ha space hamsters are completely immune to diseases. It seems. Mm. So she recommends that you don't trust anything the hamsters have been eating. Oh, actually, apparently I am immune to disease. Third level divine magic flows through you, making you immune to disease. So you can, like, no one else can. It doesn't affect uh, the outcome of whatever right. this thing was. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lick the thing and I'm gonna put some in the flask first. So I'm just gonna be like, we can keep some of this if it is useful. I put it in the flask and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, like, a little sip of whatever it is. Okay. Uh, it tastes sickeningly sweet, but, I mean, you're not exactly a connoisseur of diseases. You don't know if it's diseased or not. Okay, it's very sweet, guys. Uh, that's all I got. I, I have a flask. I think we're good to cool. go. Sounds good. So, right, I, what go should I call this? A flask of weird green tree goo? Just call it a taste of honey. Um, uh, space, space honey. Space honey. Space honey. Put space honey. And then, uh, put... I suppose 50 pounds of Taranhemsaurus meat. <laughs> We're just playing Ark now. We're just killing T Rexes and eating them. I feel kind of bad I couldn't keep it as a familiar or pet. <laughs> yeah, a Tyrannosaurus familiar. Um, you guys gather some wood. Uh, eventually, you guys signal to Click that uh, it's okay, and Click zooms back up to the ship. Clack uh, brings the ship down close to you guys. You guys are able to use the rope to um, get the wood back onto the ship. Clack's, a uh, Clack's able to get the ship kind of level with you guys for the most part. The sail's like scraping the bottom of the jungle, but you guys are able to get everything on board all fine and dandy. Um, I'll remove the initiative tracker and get you I'm guys back. I'm putting the meat in my bag while holding. Sure, it's fine. I don't, I don't want to carry 50 pounds willy-nilly, that seems kind of dumb. Alright, uh, so, uh, Clack is like, okay, good, we got some supplies, and you guys got meat, I thought you said you didn't need any. Um, this was, this, we, we, we got it anyway. It's trophy meat, don't worry about it. Alright, that's also, fine. Are are kobolds immune to disease? No. Uh, okay, never mind. Sorry, we can't all be blessed by the divine like you. I, I mean, think that the divine like... explicitly hate me. I, I mean, I'm kind of a contradiction there, pal. <laughs> eh, that's fine. I am afraid of dragons, so there's that. Um, I thought kobolds were friendly with dragons. Yeah, not me. I'm a bit of a... I'm an anomaly myself. And now, um, we're going to need to make a navigation check. Um... I'm gonna say Clack's gonna make one navigation roll uh, as you guys speed off. Uh, now refueled, sorry, the envelope is now refilled with oxygen, um, so you guys are able to breathe for several uh, days, perhaps a week, um, as you guys zoom off into space. Uh, Do we also get to take a rest here? 
Uh, pretty much, but we'll see. Because uh, we're going to see if you guys are successfully able to navigate first. So who wants to make a navigation check? It's going to be intelligence based, uh, but somebody needs to offer their help to Clack. Or, you know, should. I'll help Clack out somebody well, else. Isn't, isn't Clack the, the, the most intelligent one here anyway? Yeah, but he would like help. Have the, bird, but... have the bird do it. <laughs> no, Mao is smarter than me. <laughs> Am I? Yeah. Damn. Right, I'm not wise. I'm yeah, the role-playing doesn't really show that, but... <laughs> She's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but, so, which, is, which is not a wise thing to be... Anyway, yeah, that's so true. Anyway. Assholes are smart asses. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, is it just a straight intelligence check? Um, yeah. Make an intelligence check, and then Clack will also attempt a intelligence okay. check. Wait, can she use that thingy, the the info thing Boom Crash has? Will that help? That's kind of what you're doing to help Clack okay. while he's navigating the ship. You guys are like looking at the star charts and describing what you see. Gotcha. Uh, so make an intelligence check. Uh, you, you did already. That's very Happy. good. Damn, Clack, come on. I thought you were an astronomer. Describe it to me better! Uh, yeah, I've been just listening. And uh, Mao, you start like uh, describing the uh, various positions of all these stars and whatnot. Eventually, you get the uh, the thing across, uh, and you're able to uh, convey the right way to go. And uh, Clack is able to zoom off, and you guys um, successfully navigate around uh, some potentially dangerous hazards. You guys complete your long rest. Uh, so you guys can refill your points and uh, spell slots and all that jazz. Hell yeah. Uh, what are you guys um, doing? Uh, it's taking a, a day or so as you're going along. On this really tiny ship? Mm-hmm. Huh. I'm gonna first switch out Doggy for Lizard, because I want to take Lizard if we go to another planet God. instead. You just want a bigger thing. Well, Doggy can't really fight hamster. God oh, shit, damn I'm it. I believe in myself. <laughs> Oh, I just deleted him on trying to delete your little flex that you put everywhere. I was trying to. <laughs> Why are you always on the drawing tool? You don't even use it. I didn't mean to be on the drawing tool. Yeah, but no, you're I always figured... on the drawing tool. <laughs> I figure if I have the lizard, I can take it with me planet side. The dog kind of isn't as useful planet side half the time. Um, for the day, I want to take the day to like look through the skiff, see if there's anything that could, could sort of present itself like is this a smuggling ship maybe there's little things hidden there or i don't know specific compartments or markings along the ship just looking through the ship aboard sure make an investigation check sorry i'm finding nope the lizard okay so there's your giant lizard oh my god <laughs> it, uh, back. it is physically incapable of changing decks, and it's uh, gonna be difficult terrain to squeeze past it. Also, why did you just pump a thing that consumes more oxygen? Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you summon your giant, uh, essentially, uh, waifu pillow that consumes <laughs> oxygen uh, on our day's long journey. Um, the worst Dakimakura. <laughs> Mao, you search about the ship, but there doesn't seem to be any unusual like aspects to the ship. It was pretty barren. It looks like they took a lot of their supplies off of the ship, uh, worried what the Zodar might do. Um, although they've left the uh, cannonballs, and you guys have brought the you know ballista bolts that you have uh, onto the ship. Otherwise, it's pretty empty. You're looking around, there seem to be like uh, mechanisms that can manually control the fins of the ship on the sides. Um, just as well, there appear to be propulsion devices uh, back where Clack's unconscious body is sitting on the throne. Um, there are uh, a lot of like manual uh, consoles on the back as well. Hmm. I guess also investigating Clack being on that that helm, like wondering if he can sense if I'm there kind of thing, or...? Well, uh, as you start, like, investigating Clack, a, uh, his, like, 
head manifests behind you uh, in a hologram form. He goes, hey, what are you looking at? I'm just looking at you. You look weird. I can see you, you know. But can you stop me? And I give him a wet willy. <laughs> at least I can't <laughs> feel that. He then, like, lists the ship, like, back and forth, kind of wiggling it to try and, like, move you about the cabin. Ah, all right. Interesting. So you're, like, connected to the ship. I told you, I can sense everything. Yeah, but your body's there. You're like a wizard right now. You do nothing. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of true. Artificers are much superior to wizards. We can do things without spells. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. But I'm... this thing is definitely a unique thing. It's very hard to describe. Guys, we found a weakness. Just throwing that out there. Helm's person. It's like when Boom crashed and looks through Goose's eyes and can't do anything. So just somebody's saying. just got to protect him if we ever get found out. Um, yeah. guys, Hopefully. I'm going to I'm gonna see if I can get a get a beat on Tropos. I'm going to pull out the crystal ball. Okay. Uh, you start to get a bead on Tropos. Um, as you uh, look into the crystal ball and concentrate, um, Tropos uh, seems to not be like resisting in any way um, but you hone in on Tropos and you can see him he is uh, sitting on the ground in what appears to be a small cell uh, it's completely surrounded in steel panels um, besides the front door which is barred uh, crosswise and um you see, like, this red light emanating everywhere, um, and you see a strange creature, like, uh, crawl past his cell, uh, and just, like, unlock the door, uh, and, uh, it raises, uh, one of its limbs up, and Tropos looks up and rises with the limb, and starts walking forward in a zombie-like fashion. Oh, shit. Tropos ain't... Ain't looking good, guys, and I kind of explain and show them what I can. Uh, as you guys all huddle around the um, the crystal ball device, um, you see this uh, a sort of closer view of this creature as it gets in range of like Tropos, and it's got like several legs and limbs, almost like a spider, but in place of where its like head and thorax would be, is a serpentine, almost moray eel-like body. Uh, or neck, I guess, as it were. Its two forelimbs uh, have little tiny claws on it um, that seem to be able to do fine manipulation. Um, as it comes into view, it starts like looking around in the uh, in the middle of the air, and then it uh, begins to psionically attack uh, your sensor, and it goes to static uh, as Tropos's appearance uh, disappears. Um. <laughs> Guys, Tropos is in trouble by some Eldritch Horror looking thing. Well, we can't do much about it, so... No but if he's, he's our lead, we gotta get to him before he's killed. We, oh, can we go faster? I gotta look toward the... the Artificer. I'm giving her all she's got! See? So... I found relax. things on the side. There's like, weird... I don't know, little pistons on the side of the ship. Maybe that'll help us pull us, propel us forward? I don't know what space shit does. Well, Chris, can you check the catalog thingy to see if there's any way to make the skip go faster? Sure, I guess. Um, Handy dandy notebook. You start checking the, the encyclopedia thing, but there doesn't seem to be a way to really increase the speed without being a stronger wizard or spellcaster. Um, I communicate that. It's like, unless we want to do some, you know, like, training montages, like, there's really nothing I can do. Mm -hmm. I guess we just gotta keep Clack as pampered as possible. Yep. Uh, guys, incoming! And then suddenly the ship starts slowing down out of warp speed. And, uh, as you guys, um, start, uh, getting closer, uh, it's, it's like very much, uh, slowed down time dilation type thing as you slow down and then these green vines start whizzing past your heads as well as these large crystalline structures 
uh, one of them like smashes into the uh, side of one of the sails, and like the solar sail like kind of flickers a bit. Uh, and he goes, "Guys, I think it's gonna be a bumpy ride." And you guys are drawn into a field of vines and crystals. Uh, thus begins a skill challenge. Oh. Uh, Fun. I'm going to need you guys to figure out what you want to do as uh, vines start whizzing past you. Um, it looks like uh, it could be very dangerous if any of these things collide with the ship. Uh, but right now, you need to figure out a way that okay. you can use one of your skills or spells or attacks to get past uh, all of these vines that are immediately attacking you. Okay, Not attacking, so but colliding. Okay, so the vines are def definitely are vines. They're organic. They do appear to be organic. All right, got an idea. I'm going to go into the front of the ship, uh, the bow of the ship, um, and look to my port and starboard. And uh, I'm going to do... Uh, Anti-life shell. Oh, nice. <laughs> you cast anti-life shell, and I'm going to say that this immediately, uh, like, uh, succeeds at this challenge as, um, how big is the shell? 15 feet or something? Uh, let me just check. Uh... just want to know how much of the ship it encounters, or encompasses. Okay. 10 feet the radius. is a radius. Yep. Uh, so that's going to encompass pretty much the entire front of the ship. Um, not so much the sails, but it's definitely creating a uh, a way in front. Uh, let's see if anybody else has anything else that they can do to help. That's an automatic success from Amon. Um, all I was going to do was go and take a cannon and shoot at stuff. Um, burning hands. Uh, okay, uh, Booncrash starts shooting burning hands off of the side near the sails to try and uh, burn at some of the vines uh, going across. Zumasu, um, there appears to be like a, a crystal uh, structure caught in one of the vines ahead. Um, I'm going to need you to uh, aim one of the cannons at it. I believe I do. Yeah, I didn't you put... have a ballista thing, but they're not on here right now. Yeah, I, I didn't think that we would need them uh, for this minor thing, but also have a cannon one. Oh, it's hmm. a little big. Eh. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna have you uh, use that cannon. Why not? Try Is it work. action cannonball or trade seed weapon? Uh, it's action cannonball. Okay. There we go. Achoo! I hop down into the below deck and start aiming and firing at stuff. Okay, uh, you launch and deal 57 bludgeoning damage. Uh, Clack is able to actually help you fire the thing. It takes three actions to do so, um, but Click is also around there to uh, provide Click's action to uh, help load, aim, and then fire the siege weapon. It takes three total actions to use the cannon, uh, but... It's powerful, as you see. It explodes this crystal into shards uh, that whiz past you guys. Um, Mao, what are you doing? I don't know. Guys, what do I do? You cinder smite. Shoot things. Pew pew. Sit there and be pretty. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say make a attack roll. I need to be able to, I think, click on something. Uh, just click on boom crash. Who cares? Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> it's okay, she's the dumb one. Um, so <laughs> Ow. Mechanically speaking. Uh, okay, so Cinder Smite uh, starts firing out, and it's kind of made with disadvantage because the vines are very small, but you are able to get at some of the key vines uh, and set them on fire. It seems to be taking very well to the fire, uh, these vines in space, and... You guys successfully make it past the first round of, like, vines and everything. Um, as you guys uh, are flying through, though, eventually one of the vines does catch onto one of the sails. Uh, the ship starts spinning around wildly. Uh, what do you guys do? Oh, this one I'm good at. I'm going to try and tie myself off, and I'm going to try and get out onto the sails to cut it free. Uh, okay, so I'm going to have that be a... I'm going to have that be an acrobatics check. Okay, that's a success. You uh, crawl out there and, like, you start hacking away at the vines, but some more are getting, like, caught onto the ship as it spins out of control. What are you guys doing? Um, 
I, I'm just, I'm still in the dock. I'm just gonna tell the Mortimer to just hold tight and hang on. Right, Mortimer's there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he can help us try biting off the vines and knocking them off too. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess I'll have you do an animal handling check. Because I'm kind of in the wrong place to help directly with that. Um, so yeah, I'll be able to Mortimer to bite the vines and stuff. I honestly can't do much because I'm okay. too busy concentrating on the uh, shield. life shell. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna say that yeah. you're kind of assisting, and um, yeah, I'll I'll let you use an assist action on whatever Boom Crash does. I'm on playing a magical Titanic. Kind of exactly That's what I'm doing, so I can't. I'm wait. the king of the world. Boom Crash, what would you like to do? Um, yeah, I'm kind of limited too in what I can do. Um, Y'all at least uh, got ranged attacks. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, um, I guess, can I use Eldritch Blast as a percussive thing to push vines off, like, the sail? Yeah, sure. Okay. Come on. I say make an attack instead of, like, a normal action skill check. I'm gonna yell from the wings, too, and be like, we can also move the sails possibly from below. And I saw devices that... You did see manual devices. Yeah. Clack is trying his best to, like, keep the thing aligned. Um, oh, I didn't know that. That's why I'm yelling it now. I remembered it. Uh, okay, that's a total success. Uh, grand total success. You guys uh, are eventually able to free the vines from the sail. Clack is able to uh, rewrite the... Um, the ship and like start navigating it more slowly through this network of vines um, as Amon's anti-life shell pushes some of them aside. Um, some of them are like snapping off as uh, there's not enough space for it to move normally. And uh, meanwhile, you notice that some of the vines that you've let loose uh, have caused one of the crystals to start spinning uh, towards you guys. Uh, it's a basically giant rock headed straight towards you. What do you guys do? Anti-life shell will not stop a crystal object. It's um, roughly the size of it? it's roughly the size of a barge. How big is it? Can I have fun with the sails now barge. that I know? Yeah, but how big is the barge? Uh, no, how big is the crystal? Uh, roughly the size, size of a barge. barge. Okay. Um, is it approximately <laughs> a thousand pounds? Oh, Ooh. you can telekinesis. Um. I have my last spell. I'm gonna say. Uh, it might be able to assist, but it's probably a lot heavier. Uh, it's the size of your ship, and yeah. that's already <laughs> heavy, and this thing's made out of pure crystal. Yeah. Could we so. move the ship? Would that be better? I vote that, because I could try and at least help I'm going to say uh, you could use our uh, telekinesis to make an arcana check, as opposed to any other type of skill check. Hold on just a sec. Uh, I might have, have something. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Um, hmm. Uh, shit, that's not it. Anybody else got something they can work. do? Um, I was gonna suggest moving the ship to try and just putz with the sail. Or is it too close? Uh, you might be able to try and evade it. Uh, it is pretty big, but you gotta move quickly. So I'm gonna have you make a, uh. That's probably gonna have to be a wisdom check um, to try okay. to try and uh, basically. Do you have proficiency in water vehicles? No. Okay, then I'm gonna say it's a wisdom water vehicles check, but you just don't have proficiency. Okay. Can I assist them downstairs? You can. All right. Oh, I did awful. <laughs> Oof. Uh, yeah, that's unfortunately not going to make it. That's a fail. Um. um can mine? Can my um, lizard just try and push the sails? <laughs> uh, your lizard does not know how to do that. Oh, okay. The Zodar is sitting passively. Um, Damn asshole. Boom crash, are you doing man, anything? We, we use a little help. You'll get crushed. Oh. Okay, uh, guys. Uh, oh, this might be a bad idea, but I gotta, I gotta do it. Uh, if I die, well, you know what I did. Please don't use I your body as something. Again. Don't die in space. Okay, death ward. God damn it, uh, he's doing it. Okay. Okay, let's see if I can... <laughs> if I can, I'm gonna run up to the bow, uh, uh, bow and I gotta just try to, uh, you know, just 
karate kick it to the side as much as possible. You're going to use. You you're going to kick the a, ship? Yeah, you're going to use yourself as a pillow? I, I can. I can telekinesis. Stay on okay. the fucking boat! <laughs> Alright. You go. You cast Death Ward on yourself and uh, go into a running position, and Boom Crash immediately stops you, uh, judging by ideas that you've had in the past, and just kind of assumes this is a bad idea. Um, <laughs> Mama Bird! Away! We, we all remember when you jumped off that cliff and put yourself back together at the bottom of it. Oh, oh no, Peggy Ooh. jumped off the cliff. I have an idea. I'll, I'll get her. You just jump off the cliff. <laughs> I mean, it worked. Yeah, I got her. I found her. Her leg's broken. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, Boom Crash, uh, you can make an Arcana check if you're using Telekinesis to try and shift both the... either the ship or the crystal. Because right now, Zimalsu's not doing a good job trying to push you guys. Um, Boom Crash, you start to uh, kind of assist with the crystal's movement, but... Uh, you guys collectively, uh, since Mao assisted Zumasu and failed, and Amon sort of uh, spent their turn casting Death Ward, the crystal collides with the ship, although it's a more grazing blow thanks to your telekinesis. Uh, That's the worst. Titanic. The uh, iceberg, as it were, crashes with your Titanic, uh, causing severe damage to the hull. Um, and I'm going to need... Zumasu to make a dexterity saving throw. I don't like this. Mm -mm. Oh no! Uh, you see as the crystal uh, cracks open the side of the ship, uh, the sail is severely bent, um, but moreover than that, the wood that you gathered from the jungle planet starts to fall out of the ship. <laughs> And you, like, jump towards it to try and grab some of the wood, but you're only able to manage to get one plank before the rest, like, drift off into space. Crap. Uh, meanwhile, uh, as you look out into the, uh, the space where they are falling out, uh, ooh, what was that donation? Uh, thank you, Sheena, for the donation. <laughs> um, so, you guys, uh, eventually... Sorry, Zoom also, you're looking out into space, and you actually see some movement other than the crystals and vines. There is something large moving towards your ship. Um, it... Sorry to interrupt, but the uh, water donation, was it help? Because if you could usually use that help... That's actually true. <laughs> uh, does anybody know what that was? If somebody can put it in chat, that would be great, because I didn't catch the uh, dollar value. Um, It'll show up in the, uh, thing, for Sheena? In the chat. Yeah. Um, it says a hundred dollars on the, um, like extra life, uh, fundraising thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is definitely more than enough. Um, so, uh, thank you. Donator. Thank you. You saved our bacon. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, uh, we'll see where the help is needed. Uh, but we will continue with the skill challenge. Um, I'm just glad I get chucked into space. You see something uh, moving out into space, and uh, it's moving towards you, and it's kind of potato-like. Uh, as it kind of shifts, you notice that it's more of a elongated worm, and then it kind of opens its mouth wide as crystals start smashing on its form, uh, and vines start, like, ripping through it, uh, just catching on its uh, various, like, lips, and it starts heading towards your ship directly. Um, yeah, I don't like that. I'm gonna start loading the cannon up. So yeah. That takes time. <laughs> Let's. Oh god, the spice must flow. The spice <laughs> must flow. Let's evade this space worm. Um, what do you guys want to do? I'm setting up the cannon with a click. I'm gonna shoot the thing. Okay. And I'm gonna tell Mortimer to possibly jump and be a distraction. Uh, Zim also, you're able to lift the uh, cannonball into the thing. Clack starts uh, spinning it towards uh, the correct position, and then Click fires the cannon. Uh, so you're going to make a attack. And what do the rest of you guys want to do? Pee myself. Mouse sits there and pees themselves. <laughs> uh, well, I got well, an inspiration from the, the urine drops. Uh, so what I'm going to do is oh uh, a flask of oil, toss it in. Light it on fire. Do it oh. now. Okay. Yep. 
uh, you create a uh, space Molotov because it's in space and then uh, toss it towards the worm. Uh, a fire kind of bursts um, onto the vines that it's like moving through. Uh, Boom Crash, you uh, punctuate it with a firebolt as you blast towards the giant space worm. And uh, Mao, are you doing anything? Uh, you're the last person. Pew. Uh, you launch a bolt from Cinder Smite. Uh, all this fire and uh, balls, kind of separately. A cannonball also with fire, um, form together uh, into this fireball situation and collide with this worm. Uh, the cannonball collides with it and it like backpedals a bit, um, and then it continues to um, move forward. And the fire's like kind of drifting off of it. It seems almost as if it's like immune to the stuff. Uh, however, with uh, the donator's help, you guys uh, do find a way out. Um, you guys uh, find a large crystal that seems to be bigger than the worm. It also looks like it has potentially a cave that you can maneuver into. This crystal is absolutely massive and bound up in vines. Um, Clack says, it's kind of a risk, but I think we gotta get the hell out of here because nothing's gonna stop that thing. Fine, let's go into the cave, there'll be another worm. I mean, it, it will be a worm. No big deal. Uh, you guys zoom off into the, uh, cavern, and, uh, let's do a... Let's do another one of those navigation checks, kind of, except this time I'm gonna need somebody, uh, probably Zumasu, on the wings. I'm gonna need you to make a wisdom check. I'm so good at that. Not really. Uh, it's check, not save. Uh, it's a check. Okay. Yeah, nothing's trying to bend you to your will. <laughs> uh, Zumasu, uh, you are trying to, like, maneuver this thing, but you've never really even sailed a ship before, let alone a spaceship. Um, it starts wavering from side to side, um, and you guys, like, kind of crash into the sides of the crystal a bit uh, as you try and maneuver, uh, but then you, uh, sort of zoom off into this, like, crystal cavern, uh, icy not icy, but like crystalline pillars are like snapping um, just on your uh, the front of your ship. There's like a ramming device on the front, but it's kind of clipping into the sides of it. And uh, the space worm like uh, collides with the side, and you can see it like mouthing the mouth of the cave, but it seems unable to get through. Um, but it seems to be like uh, still out there in this uh, area. Clack brings the ship to a sort of um, standstill um, and then like starts kind of spinning around carefully. Um, I don't think we can go about the same way we came in, but this looks like a dead end. Uh, it's just crystal though. Can you guys make a new exit? I think so. Also, Rocky I think we or... might Rocky need to or... Yeah, I can actually use this. Um, but I think can we take a brick pretty soon? For yeah, we can definitely do that. Reasons? Uh, let's just do this. So, uh, you take out my rock hewer. You take out rock hewer, your uh, sword that you got from the Underdark, and uh, you kind of like get up and climb onto the uh, ramming bow of the ship, and then uh, Clack goes, "Okay, here we go," and starts zooming off towards the nearest wall that kind of looks maybe like it would break. And zoom also, you ready your sword uh, and make an attack roll. I'm gonna use just displayed on the wall. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I don't want this to fail. <laughs> okay, 29. You shout for justice! And then you slash at the wall, uh, standing on the very tip of the ship um, as the crystal shatters uh, and this sort of like. Um, this structural damage that you've done has created an even larger crack. Uh, the ramming device finishes the job as it. Uh, crashes open a new exit to this crystal, and you guys burst forth. Um, you guys seem to have cleared uh, the edge of this uh, vine field. Meanwhile, you look back and you see that there are several more of the worms that don't seem to be chasing you anymore. It seems like they're just kind of nomming on the vines uh, that are nearby. They seem to have ignored you. Nice. And you guys succeeded. Yay. Yeah, I. Jeez, that was we a close one. We got nine holes in our ship now, though, guys. All I got was a few planks. I'm sorry. Ugh. Yeah, we're gonna need to find some way to repair real quick. Uh, but in the meantime, 
Uh, it's about the halfway point. I think we're going to take a break uh, for a sec. So everyone, um, we will be back in, I'd say, uh, at about 10, maybe 5 of. 15 minutes-ish? 10, 15 minute break. break. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm gonna go use the bathroom and get some snacks. I'm gonna keep the sound uh, of my desktop on, so just careful what you say in the mic. Um, <laughs> just so that there's... You can mute, mute Discord. Oh, that's true, I can mute Discord. So I'll do that, so that there's at least some music. We can't um, spit no truths. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm gonna mute Discord. Type in the chat when you guys are all back. Just say here. Um, in Roll20? In Roll20 or Discord? In Discord. Okay. Okay, see you guys in 10 15. I'll put up the hold screen and we will be back after the break.
Okay, and we are back. Hi. Uh, cool. Um, so, uh, everybody's back from break, uh, and we have just gotten out of that mess. Um, well, still a bit of mess to go through. Uh, just want to remind you all, you can donate at extralife.org slash participant slash noble crumpet. There's, uh, incentives. Um, I'm gonna probably ask, can somebody watch the chat? Um, of course. Yeah, uh, Ali, you can take care of that so that uh, we don't miss any donations and, like, numbers and stuff, because I have a lot on my plate right now. <laughs> don't worry, I got it. I got you. Nice, thank you. So you can just call it out and say what the amount is. Um, I believe $10 is a, is a little damage help, and uh, $30 is a, a bigger form of help. I'll, I'll put on my GDQ announcer voice, and I'll make sure that it sounds really pretty. Can I fit in a quick donation here? <laughs> gonna fit in a quick donation here to, uh, ah, that's smack, yeah. Marshall. <laughs> uh, so, um, the other... Dang, I had another thing that I was thinking of. Oh, uh, another thing to, uh, keep in mind is, um, technically, we, uh, I didn't really announce this at the beginning, but I have also... Uh, gotten a last-minute sort of donation from uh, my corporation uh, that I work for. Uh, the check still needs to go through because I just figured it out on Friday how to do it, but I was trying to see if they had donation matching, but they do have a one-time donation things, and they've actually pledged uh, their standard $250 towards this. So you can technically take our uh, our little meter and increase that by 250 even if it's gonna happen after the fact. So, uh, very exciting. Uh, we're actually getting close to the goal, closer than I thought we ever would before. Um, I definitely have a lot of maps to do, it looks like. Uh, but that's exciting for me, too. It looks like, at that point, we'd be up to the Great Bombard Battle Map. Oh. Well, that's a fun one. And a Battle Dolphin Battle Map after this one. That one's weird, but I liked it. Um, Space Dolphin, so Echo, right? Pretty much. Okay. The Great Bombard is literally just a ship that is mostly cannon. Most, wait, wait, mo mostly mostly cannon, mostly a cannon? Mostly a cannon, a cannon like a cannon okay. encompasses 75% of the ship. Jesus. <laughs> it uh, seemed funny. No, that seems like uh, my type of ship. <laughs> At least it's a, uh, it's it knows what it wants. It's a very uh, one piece go boom ship. Uh, okay. It's a, a Terran battle cruiser. <laughs> so, uh... Clack starts to uh, fumble around uh, with his senses, like reaching out his greater senses into the surrounding space. He says, um, it looks like we're going to need repairs, but we lost a lot of our materials in that event. Um, it looks like that there might be somebody nearby that we might be able to hail. There's not really many planets in this system, but there is a few ships. There's a large ship that uh, isn't really moving around that much. Um, then there's a small ship that's uh, sort of muddling about in the outsides of this um, sort of cloud in space. Uh, and then there's uh, another ship, but I can't tell where it is. I might be able to spend some time and hone in on it if I can figure out this tracking system, but... Uh, yeah, those those are the options for help we might be able to find. What do you guys think? Yeah. I don't think going for a cloaked ship is a good idea, so I think it's between an active ship or a large ship. Hmm, the cloaked ship might be a little far away anyway. Um, do you want to go after this uh, smaller ship that's moving around? Or do you want to go after the large ship that's inert? Um, large ship inert might have more supplies. That's the only thing that, or an excess of supplies. Yeah, let's go to the large ship. Although, I'm getting a very bad uh, Space Hulk vibe from this. <laughs> we could be walking into a situation where, yeah, they want our stuff instead of us asking for help. Or it could be an empty ship and we can just loot. Possible. I could I try, I could try and scan or something. But, uh, if you can give me a scan, maybe I could also help you with this crystal ball thingy. Is there something that we can do to help let, like, let you do this action? Wait, can Goose not fly ahead? Er, well, we're going too fast for him to fly anyway, Yeah, right? we're going oh, at about uh, 10 million miles an hour right now. 
<laughs> what? what even is this distance? How far are we from home? You're scaring me with the size or scale of this man. How does that translate to light years, Christopher? You're traveling light years in space. You're kind of traveling, um, I believe 10 million miles is a ninth of a uh, astronomical unit. So in 10 hours, you will have gone from the sun to earth. Damn. Fudge, monkey son of a wow. biscuit. My character is still overwhelmed with the sheer vastness of all this. Just stare at the pretty lights as they go by. That's all you need to do. But some go by really quickly and some go by... I don't think that one's moved. <laughs> I don't understand the scale. That one's a black hole. That one never moves. No, but I mean, doesn't that mean it's that far away? But if we're that... I, I don't want to think about the scale anymore. I, okay, we're going to the large ship. I'm assuming it's closer to our size anyway. Mm. Well, I'm, it's much bigger than us. Probably about three times. I can sense mm -hmm. that from this distance. The other one's... Um, the other one's only a little bigger than us. Do you have a bead on it? Could I try and scry on it? Uh, at this speed and this distance, I'm not sure you can get an exact bead. Okay. It depends. Uh, if you're scrying, are you familiar with that point out in space? I would assume not. Okay. Well, let's go for the large ships and sash what you want to do. Alright. You guys zoom off uh, towards the large beacon uh, that Clack has latched onto. Uh, as you guys slow down uh, into the system, you um, see a large ship off in the distance. It's kind of floating about, and there's a few, like, kind of meteors or asteroids just kind of floating non violently in the area. Uh, they're mostly standing still, but the ship, like, passes. Uh, out from behind one of the asteroids and you get a good view of it the ship uh, is very long and it has a tiny sail on top but two wide fins on its side uh, it also has the front of the ship appears to look like that of a hammerhead shark it's like got two oblong things out front and it's capped with metal uh, and two glowing eyes where the hammerhead's eyes might be on a shark um, that don't look friendly it zooms out from uh, behind this asteroid. Um, it's not moving very quickly, but as soon as you guys like appear in the system, it starts turning towards you. Oh boy. Is there any way to communicate with it, uh, Clack? I don't know. Yelling? It's pretty far away, though. Uh, um... Do we have anything? Okay, does the ship have anything even remotely similar to, like, a flare gun or something? Okay, I'll just do this. I'll cast light. I'll, I'll blink. How about that? Uh, you oh, cast, that be good? You cast light uh, and start, like, uh, casting and recasting it uh, to create this sort of blinking motion. Cover it up if it's, like, on a coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically. You could do, like, an SOS type thing. Yeah. I'm not doing actual code or anything. I'm just doing it to show that there's intelligence and we're not a drifting mm -hmm. you know space hulk uh okay you do this um the ship turns towards you uh and it takes a while for it to turn but uh once it finally is in line with you you hear two uh explosions uh -oh. and then you see two cannonballs whiz past you <laughs> And ah, let's get in there to roll oh. for initiative. You want, you want to do this, Bilbo? All right. <laughs> and here we go. You found the tactical uh, encounter this session. I recommend zooming out uh, if you're trying to get a view of the entire place. Oh, God. Uh, no way. But we're going to use the tactical vessel, or the tactical... Um, map in the middle. That is metaphysical uh, space. Those asteroids exist in that map, uh, but otherwise you're not totally uh, bound to the bounds of this map. Um, I don't like how we just look like this tiny little fish, and there's this giant shark coming to eat us. Literally. Alright. Uh, you don't really hear any uh, stuff coming from the other vessel, but 
let's roll for initiative. I'm gonna need to figure out... Hold on. I'm gonna try and get everybody. So I can do a mass initiative roll. Goddamn gifts. Or um, GIF. <laughs> Yikes, this is gonna be a little hard to keep track of. I think I got everybody. Start combat. Okay. Uh, as per usual, Mao, you are going first. The ship will move on Clack's turn, uh, and he will kind of be uh, using your guidance a bit to help um, if you guys want them to move in a specific region. But otherwise, um, if you use the the arrow keys, or the ruler, you'll find the exact range on the tactical map. What is the range of the ballistas? Okay, the range on a ballista is uh, 120 feet. Uh, that's when the disadvantage starts, and then it, anything up beyond that is up till 480 feet maximum range. So... Uh, two spaces is uh, your sort of short range, and then out to literally here is the maximum range, but you'll have disadvantage on anything beyond two squares. Well, you know what? Um, they're already shooting at us. Might as well shoot back. Might as well. So, how would you like me to roll for the ballista? Uh, so, you can click on the ballista and uh, you should be able to just use the action called Bolt. Alright, uh, it flies towards the enemy ship, and unfortunately it does have disadvantage, uh, so it does whiz past it. You haven't adjusted properly for this distance. And also, um, I should mention... Um, How to reload. Yeah, uh, so the ballistas... Normally a ballista takes three actions like a cannon, but these are sort of special ones that only take two actions. Clack actually helped you uh, fire the thing once you were able to load and aim it. Um, but otherwise it takes two people's actions to complete a ballista attack. It takes three people's actions to complete a cannon attack. Clack can assist with one action, and Click can assist with another action. So, for example, if it was shot right now, could I use another action to start reloading it and use one? You only have one action, okay. uh, and Clack used one of his to assist you, gotcha. using his mental control of the ship. Gotcha. Okay, it is Clack's turn. Oh, I forgot that the moving of the map is going to be a little annoying. Uh, okay, so, Clack can move the ship. The ship can move six squares each turn, or 360 feet. Um, you can... The way that the tactical combat works is um, the ship can turn, but it costs one space of movement for each time it turns 45 degrees. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, where are you guys going to head? Are you guys going to try and like move past it and like try and get at it broadside, or uh, are you going to try and hide? What's what's the general idea? I vote hide and then pop out and go on, on top of it. Yeah, okay. that's what I was thinking too. So go okay. around this asteroid. No, I'm thinking. Okay, uh, that's one suggestion. I, I suggest going over here and doing a figure eight around both those rocks. Okay. I mean, yeah, that sounds that fancy. Is probably best. Okay. Yeah. It gives us more cover. Clack more is going to spend cover. one turn of his movement uh, and start moving off in this direction. So one, two, three. Four, five, six. That's it. Uh, yep, that's it. Because no, they only have. What about? Hold on. Um, Do you want to move the other way? You can continue uh, the trajectory. Far, far twenty cents a biscuit. Could, um, but it's going to move past that asteroid. So I'm going to say it would require Clack to make a check. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, never mind. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Figure eight over and over again. Just because diagonals in this square space is going to be weird. I could have used a hex map, but I wanted you guys to have your grids as well. Um, I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Goose. I think this is fine for now, so we also get to do some suppressive fire as we're going through. Uh, Goose can provide an action to help aim uh, a 
ballista or perhaps carry a bolt to a ballista. So Goose can use their action to help uh, fire ballistas if they need to. Can Mortimer carry ballista bolts? I forgot Mortimer's here. I'll go find him. Uh, he just stick his head down and grab them from underneath. Yeah, he could just hand people bolts. Uh, remember, Mortimer cannot go underneath. What about just an arm? Right. <laughs> might actually be a bit of an issue here because um, he impacts maneuverability around the ship. Yes. Yeah, so that's basically the question. Can he can he help load or like aim or something? I'm gonna say his uh, claws are a little too clumsy. He doesn't actually have thumbs or anything. He does have his mouth, um, but like filtering into the uh, smaller crate of bolts uh, probably isn't gonna help that much. Uh, the lizard doesn't help much here. He can climb to the side of the ship for now. Get out of the way. Cause the way that, how, the way this oxygen works is it's just kind of floating around the ship, right? Yep. So could he just hang off of the ship for now? Yes, uh, yeah. the entire ship is surrounded in like a bubble of oxygen. Yeah, so he's gonna climb like literally on the side of the ship. Um, Actually, if that's the case, could he climb underneath one of the ballistas and help it with aiming? Uh, I'm gonna say he doesn't have the capability of doing it. Okay, yeah, so he's just, he's just getting out of the way for now. I know it's like a semi-intelligent steed, but it's not quite like a wizard's familiar type of yeah. manipulation. It's more like a very friendly mount that can understand orders perfectly. Yes. Alright, just clarifying. So he's just gonna move out of the way and off the side. Yeah, uh, I mean, Mortimer can also technically... I'm gonna move this a little to the middle. It's really the good space. Uh, Mortimer kind of climbs down underneath the ship onto the lower deck. Just to be out of the way. Uh, okay, and Goose. Uh, Goose can ready their action at that. Ballista Amon, it is your turn. Alright, uh, there's nothing out... Okay, you know what? I think I'm just going to... Wait, I can't, why can't I click this? Okay. Hey, you're on the ruler. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna be, um, onto this ballista, and not at the right angle yet, so I can't probably, I can't shoot. Yeah, they have so. about 180 degrees maneuverability, so they can kind of hit stuff out here. Um, Alright, uh, that's waiting for broadside, so I guess I can hold an action. If I need to shoot. Okay. Uh, you can ready your action uh, to shoot, and uh, you spend an action to use the ballista. Zumasu, it's your turn. I'm gonna get everybody. Okay, let me just check. We'll check something. So, if I use bless, okay, just clarification. If I use bless when people use the ballistas or the firing cannons, do they still get the bonus to attack? Yep, they're making the attack roll. All right, I'm gonna cast a second level bless so everybody, um, well, me, Boom, Crash, Mao, and Amon all get plus um, get blessed. So we get a D4 when we attack. Uh, nice. Who's who's blessed? Uh, me, Amon, a Boom. I can cast up to four people if I cast out at a higher level. Oh, okay. So everyone so, but Flack. Uh, yeah. PCs. Yeah, yeah, all the PCs get the. Blessed That's easy to remember. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Because I cast out at level two. Oh, yeah. Okay, you uh, bless Hi uh, use Hyronius to bless everyone on this fine vessel. Uh, Hyronius, may our bolts bind true and defeat our enemies. It's always Thanks good to have a cleric time. on board, a priest on board the boat. Kind yeah, of absolves kind of us. Mm -hmm. All right. It sure is. It uh, sure is. It is the gift captain's turn. Uh, this one with the blue dot uh, is controlling, or ordering at least, whoever their spell jammer is uh, around the ship. They're probably below decks, but I have them on top of the deck because I actually don't have a lower deck for the hammer ship right now. So I didn't need one. Uh, so <laughs> uh, move the hammer ship up to five spaces. Um, and they're going to move a third space, and then they just take a 45 degree turn uh, with two of their rotation cost, because their rotation cost costs a lot. So they're kind of like slowly arcing towards you guys. Um, and they're gonna end their turn. Uh, okay, this guy's gonna use an action to load that cannon. This guy's gonna use an action to load that cannon. Um, gonna keep going. It is Click's turn. 
Click is going to uh, go up on deck and over towards Mal uh, to help Mal uh, load the ballista. Hell yeah. And this gift's turn. This guy is going to use his action to load the cannon. Or aim the cannon. Got another aim the cannon. This guy aims the cannon. Uh, and the spell jammer of the ship is going to use their action on the hammer ship to fire their frontal cannon at your ship. Uh, and a 19 hits your ship's AC of 15, uh, dealing 36 bludgeoning damage to the ship. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, actually, you guys can't see their... Guys, um... There we go. When the, when the ship approaches, mm -hmm. do you want to board it? Teleport on board? I'd be done with that. Stupidest fucking smile goes across Mao's face. You want me to come along and keep on the ship? Okay, no, I have an idea. I'll summon my nightmare steed. We'll go ethereal. Go in a direction and then pop out. Yeah. Do you want to do that? <laughs> this is a fun plan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, okay. I'm going to say that only two people would probably be able to ride the steed. Uh, through no, but space. Up to, up to three people can the um, can be targeted uh, by the etherealness. Yes. Yeah. But I'm gonna say only two would be on the steed. Okay, that's fine because uh, like boom crash can misty step and you know whatever. So. I can teleport if needed, but sure, thirty we feet. Leave our um. I think like... we need to keep some people on our ship though. Okay, so the so there's most of and I should teleport in there. I think Mao probably is better. I think, well, I think Mao okay. really wants to. Okay. <laughs> it, like, Mao really Grinch, wants to go. You know the Grinch when he does that little devilish grin? That's all you see. Just like, please, please. Uh, all right, all right. I think the other thing to consider is which one of you guys are better in uh, melee versus range. Yeah, this is yeah. the thing. So if Mao can get hiding places, she'll be good. But if it's a long drawn out thing, I'd be better. So True. that's the only trick. Okay, no, you stay aboard because we need a healer in case something goes bad. Okay. Oh, because, yeah, healer for both sides. That, that yeah. kind of makes yeah, sense. Yeah, and Amon can pilot uh, one of the ballistas. Uh, or, actually, whatever happens. I don't know. We'll get to it when you guys get to your plans, because I've yeah. misunderstood entirely. Um, All right. I say you take Mao and Amon, and I'll stay on the back and shoot ballistas and heal if need be, if you need to return. Uh, yeah. Okay, this guy loads their ballista, or their cannon, and boom crash, it is your turn. It looks like most of their cannons... Well, I mean, you can't really see it, but they're a lot of them are primed to fire. There is literally nothing I can do other than um, try and fire something. Cause... Can you Ooh. make an ice thing in the middle of the void or something? I can make a snowball in the middle of the void. I can do... Um... Would that make it harder for them to aim? Uh, hold on. Oh, Not that's really a square such. on ground. It's, um, it's a on. burst of snowballs that, like, kind of explode out and deal cold damage. Um, okay, it doesn't create a giant snowball that stays there in space. Okay. It's, like, the closest thing I can do is Hunger of Hadar, and that's a feat. I, I can attempt to do a... Um... Worry about it. Yeah, so I'm just gonna fuck it. I'm gonna go to Goose, and I'm gonna be ready to fire, I guess. Okay, the angle isn't quite there, but once the angle is, you can ready your a action to fire. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Cool. Uh, tis this guy's turn. Uh, this guy is representing the below deck, um, cannons, and they are starting to, uh, load those. Do do. Mao. It is your turn. You are on the ballista, and you do have range uh, if you wish to fire the ballista. Click is assisting you. Uh, I'm gonna yell back to him and be like, "How are we gonna get to the other ship?" I have a plan. Can I shoot first, or should I wait? Oh, I, I will wait. Okay, I wait. I'm not gonna shoot. Well, I mean, you got the ballista. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I no, was gonna shoot the ballista. ballista. The, the ballista, you just keep on shooting. Okay. Okay, uh, are you firing at the enemy ship? I am. Okay, use the ballista. Apparently not, I though. Did. Oh, yeah, apparently not. Um, I mean... Roll a d4! <laughs> a d4 will not be enough, sadly, to hit. <laughs> Yikes. 
Uh, Stop judging me, it's not my bow. Yeah, Mao is cut, uh, caught up in the how cool this is and not really realizing, oh, I actually need to be good at aiming this thing. It's not as l limber as a bow. Um, I'm excited to go stab. Alright, uh, Mao, you s do have movement, I guess. Uh, do you want to use any of that? Uh, I didn't know if you needed to move. Go, go, go by Amon. Amon. Oh, yeah, I'm going to move wherever Amon needs me to go. So just point and click and I'll move Mao there. Okay, just meet me in the just meet me in the middle. Uh, this is click actually. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> it is Clack's turn, uh, not Click's turn, and Clack is going to uh, navigate the ship. He, he goes, uh, he kind of like his uh, sort of broadcasting hologram goes. You guys want me to move in? Is that what's happening now? Been no, listening no, they'll, in. They'll approach us on their own. No need to worry about that. Okay, well I'm gonna keep trying to do evasive actions. Is that yeah, yeah, okay? Uh, so he's going to attempt evasive actions, which is a skill that he can try. Um, he's going to make a spell jamming check, um, which is its own sort of check. It's like a spell casting check uh, with vehicles. Uh, so for him, it's basically just an intelligence check. Okay. Hey, but by the way, I still can bless you guys even if you go over there. It lasts for the minute, but it doesn't say... It doesn't have a range, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. okay, so Clack is having a little trouble trying to figure out how to do evasive maneuvers, and he's kind of just listing the vehicle from side to side, but that doesn't really help when you're getting uh, hit head-on. Um, he unsuccessfully... Uh, it's basically an attempt at performing the dodge action with the ship. Um, but he does manage to move you guys, uh, and he does one, two, three, four, five, uh, and I guess we move in a little bit closer. Uh, Clack is trying to move you guys closer anyway, um, and uh, Booncrash, you can use your readied action to fire upon the hammer ship. Okay. You're, I'm gonna do that. you're not attacking with disadvantage because you're within its normal range. Okay, so, um, uh, what exactly? Fudge, monkey! Crap, sorry. Computer did something very weird. Um, where, which, what do I aim at? Uh, you don't need to aim at anything, you just use the ballista and hit the bolts button. Oh, uh, okay. You can see the people on board now that you've gotten close enough, so you could shoot at particular people, um, but otherwise you can just attack the ship. Um, and you can add a d4 to that as well. Okay, so... Okay, uh, 14 is unfortunately not enough. Uh, mm -hmm it kind of collides with the side of its metal hull, and the bolt snaps upon impact. Uh, it doesn't do much. Um, that's unfortunately your action. Anything else for you? Um, uh, I'm just gonna s stick here. Okay, Goose okay. Uh, loads another bolt for you, if that's what you want to keep doing. Mm-hmm, yeah. I'm on. It is your turn. Alright, I'm gonna jump down to the lower decks. Um, and summon my nightmare steed. Okay, you summon your nightmare steed. I should have probably navigated uh, to that. Oh wait, do you I, have I, action? I gotta, or, I gotta I... Uh, make a rear uh, on his back, and it's like, uh, it's like, come with me for glory. Grab Mao by the head. We go ethereal, <laughs> and we gotta fly. Yeah, you uh, you s turn your obsidian uh, figurine into a nightmare. It grows up and then lights ablaze. Uh, it whinnies with its horn blazing in the sky uh, and it kind of just stands still towards the side of the ship, like resting on the gravity plane. And then uh, you leap onto the nightmare and Mao kind of like grabs onto the side as well and eventually shimmies their way back onto its rump. And you guys go ethereal. He, he grabbed my horn. He helped me up. Yeah. Uh, and then the, um, and we fly uh, and I at a point and uh, the Nightmare uh, knows what's good for it, and it's gonna move 90 feet. Uh, considering that's uh, 60 feet of, uh, to the ship, there's about 30 feet of uh, leeway. Uh, I say we land. Uh, the Nightmare is gonna move on its turn. I just rolled for okay. its initiative. Oh, you, you got an initiative? Yeah. Okay, cool. 
Um, we'll move together then. But yeah, you guys are mounted on the nightmare. Uh, and I should add, this is probably the coolest thing that's going to happen tonight. Um, so, uh, also, you guys are close enough to the ship. Zamos is on deck, by the way. Um, you guys are close enough to the ship that you can see that the people on board do seem to all have cannons uh, and weirdly, like, small cannons, like, that are handheld, uh, two-handed uh, weapons. They seem to definitely be some sort of cannons. You guys would know them as muskets. Um, and they are also hippo people, uh, for lack of a better Earth term. Uh, and they are all wearing, like, regal sort of outfits, um, sort of uh, mucked up a bit and, like, tattered. Uh, but otherwise, they look very imperial in appearance. Uh, the one on the with the blue dot over there, uh, seems to be wearing some sort of admiral's hat and has a, uh, curved pipe in his mouth. Uh, he is barking orders at the other, uh, creatures in a strange language. Uh, Zumasu, it is your turn. So I didn't want to okay, totally guys. do that, but yes. <laughs> they disappear, but I guess I'm just going to go to this ballista. Wait, what's the angle? Okay, I need to go to the ballista on the other side then. Uh, I'm going to say both of these ballistas do have a clear shot. If you're okay. broadside, you're able to turn it to face the other ship. Okay, so I'm on the good ballista. I'm going to use this to shoot at them then. Yeah, the only uh, one you can't really turn is the cannon in the middle of the ship. Okay. Uh, so, click can has used their action to uh, load that ballista, so you can definitely use uh, it at will. Yep, shooty shooty. Oh, you just did. Uh, add your um, bless. Which, ooh, it's still not enough. Uh, this thing's AC is yeah. 16. It's fairly <laughs> heavily armored for a large ship. Um, it, once again, clatters on its tail armor this time. Anything else I'm for your gonna, turn? I'm gonna yell at my lizard to climb on the side facing them. I don't know, maybe he'll pick up, maybe he'll be able to do something just while he's scaring them off. Uh, it climbs onto, like, the side of the ship, uh, on the right side of the ship, uh, just in range of their cannons. Yeah, um, I'm just going to sound awful, but I'm like, okay, you know you'll be fine. If they get a really good shot, try and, try and stop it. The gift vessel starts to move on the captain's turn. Uh, it moves, and... Unfortunately, it kind of needs to keep its bearing. Ooh, ooh that kind of moved awkwardly. Uh, one, two, three, <laughs> four, yeah, five. It kind of takes a uh, wide berth between these uh, asteroids, and the GIF is actually going to need to make a check to navigate through those two things. Uh, their highest is wisdom, so they're going to do that. Uh, even with their bonuses to, because this person is, uh, what's it called, proficient with the ship, um, they fail, and they're going to take some bludgeoning damage uh, from the asteroids. And we're going to call that 5d10s of damage. Their ship takes 31 damage. Uh, their tail fin collides with the asteroid as they start their wide turn. Uh, it's this dude's turn. Um, they use their final third action to fire from the rear towards you guys. Uh, cannons have 600 foot range. Um, okay, so they're within the uh, firing range of the cannon without having disadvantage. So it's going to fire at you guys. And that just barely hits your guys' ship's AC of 15 for 54 bludgeoning damage. Yikes. Could I have the lizard do anything to help with the next shot? Not really, because uh, it's firing from behind the okay. vessel. Uh, okay, let's turn next. This guy, he can't fire at anything, but he uh, is readying their action to do so. It is the Nightmare's turn. Unfortunately, the ship has zoomed past you guys. Don't worry, it's got flight speed. 90 mm. feet. 90 feet. Okay, uh, it can definitely move 90 feet. Let's, uh, why don't you use make your ruler? Make a dash, 180. We'll, we'll go at maximum speed. Oh, yeah. So you can get up to here near that asteroid. 
Uh, I will kind of copy the nightmare, shrink them down a bit. Okay, so that is where you have gotten to uh, as the nightmare streams off into the starlit sky in the distant realms of the ethereal plane. Um, all right, uh, nightmare's dashing is done. Uh, click kind of like goes over and loads another bolt into the crossbow. This gif uh, is going to start reloading the cannon. And this gif is going to start reloading that cannon. Well, it's going to ready their action. Ready action, ready action. Boom crash, uh, it is your turn. The rear of the ship is facing the ship, but it's very far away from you guys. Um... Fuck it, worth a shot. Sure. Uh, Goose has loaded another crossbow bolt, and you can fire away. That is at disadvantage, but you get bless. So, d4? Yep, that beats yeah. their AC of six, uh, 16. So you deal 26 piercing damage to the enemy vessel. Taking a small chunk off of uh, its rear armor, but it's still looking fairly resilient, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Okay, it is this guy's turn. Uh, they seem almost ready to fire their broadside cannons. Mao, uh, you are still on the back of this nightmare. Are you readying anything? I all I can do is just ready an attack for when we get off. Yeah, uh, she's a ethereal. She can't even do anything. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. She can't do anything. So uh, you ready that action? Clack is going to move the ship. Uh, he's going to try and come about, and that's going to involve a lot. So he's going to move one, two, three. Uh, he's going to use three turn costs, but that's going to require a check because he's moving more than 180 degrees in one turn, which by my rules does require a check. Clack, come on. <laughs> You're oh. supposed to be a master artificer. I guess he's not a master spell jammer. Um, so Clack goes, All right, everybody, hang on! And the ship starts uh, keening uh, off, turning towards uh, the back, but then the ship kind of, like, starts spinning out of control. And we're going to end our turn in a random direction. Uh, oh no, it's supposed to be a D8. Uh, so we're going to go a D8, starting one at there and going clockwise. Okay, one, two, three. So uh, the ship spins further than intended and starts going north. Um, do, do, do. But we still have three more spaces of movement, so we can at least go doot and then doot and doot, I guess? Guys, start going towards the north end of this tactical map. Um, but you can definitely go out of those bounds if need be. Uh, Goose's turn. Gonna load. Oh safe. yeah, load. I'm on. Uh, you are readying your action, I assume? Yep. Ordering the nightmare? Yep. Onward. Right. Uh, Zumasu, it is your turn. Uh, there is an asteroid, unfortunately, between you and the enemy ship. Um, but you could ready an action to attack uh, as soon as you have a line of sight. Uh, the other option is going down and loading the cannon. Um, we're rounding this asteroid. Actually, you know what? I'll hop down and load the cannon. I should right. be able to have it ready by the time we're, we're going around the corner. You leap down uh, into the grate past the Zodar, which is staring off into space, uh, which is everywhere, and you uh, start uh, unloading one of the uh, cannonballs and put it into the cannon. Uh, Clack is going to use their action to pump another action into the cannon. Uh, it just needs one more to fire. So next turn I should be able to fire it. Okay, it is the enemy spelljammer's turn. Uh, they're going to move the ship, and they're going to try and come about so that they can get a better view of you guys. Uh, so they're going to move two spaces, and then two spaces, and then one... And that's about all they can move. They had to do a uh, very wide turn to try and, like, get back on track. They're trying to literally circle around this highly maneuverable ship uh, that's evading them. Uh, so, there's not much that they can do. Um, 
to suffer. Tiny ships are cool. The cannons, uh, they all, uh, on the broadside, start firing, and they seem to be uh, aiming at the asteroid nearby. <laughs> There's a complete barrage of cannon fire uh, as the asteroid shatters into pieces. Uh, they've destroyed this small uh, asteroid that was right near the nightmare. And that's going to end that dude's turn. This guy's still readying. And it is now officially the Nightmare's turn. I think you guys can make it there now. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, they can make it right to the ship with their dashing. Uh, so they can get onto the ship, essentially. But right. that took their action to do so. Uh, what is turning ethereal? Um, I think uh, it is... Uh... It doesn't... Oh, uh, it's an action to do so, so okay, next turn. Okay, so next turn. Uh, but you guys are essentially on the ship, and I'll put you guys where you are. Oh. Okay. Cool, you guys are on the ship. Uh, the other gif creatures, I, I've just told you what they are, but and I'll use that. Uh, but they can't see you, because you are on the ethereal plane. Um, Click's turn. Click is going to zoom down here and use their action if they need to to fire the cannon uh it's the rear gifts turn uh they don't have anything to shoot at so they're gonna end north gifts turn they don't have anything to shoot at damn these guys uh don't have much to shoot at right now <laughs> uh boom crash you don't really have a clear shot either uh you I mean, you're already at disadvantage, but you could just fire a shot off into the ether, or you can wait to get a better opportunity. Uh, I'll wait until I have a better opportunity. Okay, you hold your action. Uh, this guy starts loading the broadsides again. The left broadsides are gone. Mao, it's your turn. You can still ready your action, because the nightmare is about to turn uh, unethereal. Yep, I will ready uh, an attack with my scimitar at the nearest creature that I'm going to see. Okay, Clack's going to move one... Two, three, four, five, six. Uh, uh, Boomcrash doesn't have a great opportunity at this angle either. Uh, oh well, that's fine. Um, Clack's gonna try and take the dodge action since the cannon is ready. So Clack's gonna try and take evasion. Okay, well, that's about par for the course. Uh, Goose's turn, probably keeping their action loading. Amon's turn, probably holding your action to uh, act when the nightmare goes off. Zumasu, uh, you can maneuver the cannon a little bit, uh, and you can try and fire at the uh, enemy ship. Yeah, why not? Oh, I don't have the cannon object. Uh, just go grab one of the gifts cannons and uh, activate that. It's the same thing. All right, uh, and since it's a cannon, it's well within the range. That is going to hit and deal 46 bludgeoning damage to the rear of the ship. Uh, it collides, and the gif like uh, start like uh, getting startled, and they like run towards the rear of the ship. The rear of the ship also returns fire because they had been readying their actions for a while to fire. Ooh, but that's a miss. Uh, it whizzes past uh, your evasive ship, which somehow avoided it. And... Um, I'm also just going to run up and go back to the top side ballista. That's faster to set up for the next shot. Okay, uh, you run up towards the ballista, and the hammer ship is going to move. It's going to turn one, two, and I think it's going to go straight away. Three, four... Yeah, that's... well, five. There we go. Uh, the hammer ship is going to kind of move south uh, past this asteroid. The gift keep going. And it is the Nightmare's turn, finally. Uh, the Nightmare turns you guys uh, non-ethereal. 
and appears. The GIF on board uh, are shocked and astonished uh, by this sudden materialization. Um, this GIF is not there, he's representing the lower decks uh, bombards, but there are okay. two GIFs on all of the cannons, and there is this Admiral GIF in the center here. Alright, so everyone's ready to action, uh, so... Yep. Uh, uh, who's gonna go first? I'll say Mao goes first, because they had the higher initiative, I think. Right. You leap off the ship, and you were unseen, so that's gonna be uh, advantage, that's gonna definitely hit. Uh, a, a earthling or something and uh, it speaks in a vague weird common tongue with a strange accent but it does seem to speak you uh, deal damage it's going to be 24 plus 1 technically anything else for you Mao? I'm going to try and intimidate uh, okay tell me what you do and also make that roll I mean the, the blade is up against them already after attacking you're going to see fire you're all dead <laughs> Roll an intimidate check. Ooh, alright. Um, the gif uh, is like, uh, collapses to the ground. Uh, their large form, like, kind of bending under the uh, weight of the, the boat, bending the weight of the boat, uh, and you point your uh, rapier towards them, and they, or scimitar actually, sorry, and he drops his pipe and his hat falls onto the ground. I. I uh, what? We, we're not going to give in to pirates. Fuck you, we're not pirates. We're not pirates. This is gift space, and your invader's here. Come on, help me out here. You fired at us. Say that. Well, well okay. we were hailing and asking for help. You flashed us a warning signal. Oh, fuck off. Okay, I gotta... Well, You're piloting a Gith Yankee vessel. We assumed that you were here on the assault. But you don't no seem to be Gith. No shit. Hmm. Well, this was a damper. I, I wanted to kill everyone, but this was a damper and thing. <laughs> this How do you think job. I feel? Uh, you what? shouldn't have talked. It's like, uh... It's like, ceasefire immediately. Uh, uh, you will... Ceasefire as well. Yeah, I'll see. <laughs> we need to contact us somehow. Oh wait, okay. the storm. Oh, no, no, I, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I was gonna do this anyway. Thaumaturgy. I gotta make the entire ship rumble because it's a minor quake. He's like, uh, <laughs> we'll see. Actually, remember, Ma uh, I'm on. You have the stone because we gave that to you way ago, but we forgot to keep on. Oh, your stone. Yeah. Oh, the sending stone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you yeah. caused the entire hammer ship to rumble. Uh, the floor starts to like creak and crack a little bit. Not enough to cause real damage because it's cantrip, but uh, the gif is absolutely terrified. Um, he uh, picks himself up and adjusts his uh, admiral's cap and says gif, cease fire! We are to cease fire! We do not have the superior firepower. They have magic and apparently one of cannons. Uh, yes, Admiral. I'm going to nonchalantly uh, tap on the stones like uh, Hello, hello. Uh, yes, not? this is Zumatsu, Jover. He's like, uh, I had it. hey, uh, we reached an understanding. Uh, uh, so stop attacking? The gif, like, yeah. nods his head up and down as you say understanding. Uh, okay, I yell up to the first. Hey, they, they did it. We can, I guess, uh, I clack. I guess we can move this boat over. Aw, I thought we were doing good. And then uh, Clack turns the ship and like uh, zooms off towards the hammer ship, uh, and you uh, guys slow down to uh, more understanding speed. Yeah, I, I go back over to be like, um, we're approaching now. We're, we're friendly, I guess. You guys get over. within 60 feet of each other, and you're pretty much canonically where your ships are now. Um, the lizard's gonna jump on board them. <laughs> uh, the well, space. sure. They leap off into space. Uh, they float a bit as they leave the gravity plane and enter theirs, and then like start clinging onto the other ship. Ugh, they have aliens too. Trained beasts of all manner. Well, it seems that we've met an accord. So, you all just, uh, leave us alone, alright? This is gift space, and wherever you took this Githyanki vessel from, uh, uh, don't bring them here. 
Black, can you bring it down so I can hop on? I can't jump like the lizard. Uh, sure, I'll bring it in close. Uh, and he kind of brings it in as close as he can, uh, and you're able to hop off onto the other ship. Okay, I still don't can't get over the gravity switch thing. Hey there, we need a bit of help. That's why we were actually trying to, like, signal help. Like, that, that wasn't aggression. <laughs> you certainly seem like pirates, a ragtag crew with a stolen ship. Hey, I've upgraded my armor. I don't look as dirty. I meant ragtag is in. I make up for it. I, I make up for it. I look like the devil. So you know, just don't blame them. It's your fault. And it, Got it. So, um, listen. So, we are frankly strangers to these parts. And what we need is. Uh, what we need is navigation method. This is. You say this is your territory. We have no desire to invade any further uh, or invade at all. The problem is, we are currently tracking in this direction. Uh, we're given the heading. We're tracking in this direction. Uh, I do not know if they're you know, part of your territory. And we need navigation methods. The also some don't, ship repair would be helpful. We don't. We don't want. We don't want or need trouble. We can cause it, but that is frankly, this is none of our business. <laughs> and I'm sure you agree that this is beneficial for all of us involved. Do any per- one of you guys need some healing? I'm make- gonna kind of make my hands glow. Come on, make a persuasion check. Oh god damn it, I'm bad at I'm it. gonna say with advantage because Mao has kind of caused this person to submit. Hell yeah. Thank you, Mao, for shoving a blade. Thank you. What well, with a 15 uh, and kind of being intimidated, he. Th- the gif is normally very proud and would normally just uh, reject this sort of uh, behavior from a ragtag boop. A uh, group of ruffians, but uh, judging by the circumstances, I've reconsidered. Uh, perhaps we can let you through our space and get you some repairs. Uh, I don't think that we caused all of that damage. Looking at your ship, um, yeah. Do you know anything about that creepy crystal stuff? Uh, that's like common in this area. I, uh, that's the Infinity Vine region of our space. We tend to avoid it. Yeah, we probably should have too. If you're looking for navigation, it mm-hmm. uh, you guys eventually convene uh, and show them the navigational tools that you've been using. Uh, this is not the best for navigational tools. Here, take one of our spare compasses. It should be able to lead you a bit more safely through space. And I should warn you, uh, this seems to lead beyond this crystal sphere. So you will no longer be in our space, which is good to get us get you out of our hair. Yeah, we don't want to be in your crystals either. Mm. If you have anybody pipe. injured, I could help out. It's fine. Okay. We are a resilient race. We have managed to evade any of your uh, strikes. And the repairs are minor. You are throwing sticks at a pile of stones. I guess that's fair. Does anybody have the sniffles? Some sort of cold? I can help with that too. Zumasu, leave it alone. Like, let's just get our <laughs> shit and Go get the away. hell out of here. They don't Stuck. want us here. So let's just stop imposing and get the repairs and the materials that we need to repair our boat and get out. That's fair. The gifts start loading uh, some of their spare materials. They have a lot of spare materials having a gigantic ship. Uh, and they are able to quickly uh, get you guys the materials you need. Clack says... Uh, all right, um, so you guys, uh, I'm gonna need to do some of these repairs unless you guys, uh, are proficient with a ton of tools like I am. I'm gonna need someone to fly the ship. Is this my, is this my turn? Uh, I think it's your turn. Pew or Amon. Um, I think Amon is a little bit more useful than I am, so. Wait, um, my intelligence is technically 12, so what, what is our, mouse is 13. Or 14. She's 15, but she's not a spellcaster. Yeah, it's a spellcasting yeah. check. Magic stupid. Blade, stabby, poke another person better. I'm level 3 spellcaster as well. Uh, well Boomcrash is technically so, a level 5 spellcaster. So is Amon? Or oh, level 6 is Amon. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Amon. No, Amon is, no. So yeah. We're both, we're both 5. We're, we're both, both 5. five? Oh, okay. yeah, because you took levels of yeah. Monk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I'd say they're Amon Boomcrash. Okay, and okay. Uh, 
So Boom Crash can do it. Uh, Boom Crash, you sit upon the helm and attune to it. Uh, since it's been attuned to Clack for a while, it does take an hour uh, for you to reattune, but Clack uh, starts away at the repairs. Uh, he takes Click out and he starts like using Click as a sort of welder uh, to weld some of these like uh, metal parts, uh, as well as like hammering in some of the wood um, into place. The sail also needs repairing, so Clack's like out there dangling on the sails. Um, the GIF uh, kind of salutes you all as you guys uh, zoom off uh, into space once more. Let's go back to the travel map. Okay, uh, and you guys make your heading as Clack uh, finishes repairs on the ship. Boom crash. It feels uh, unusual. Uh, it's a sensation that makes you kind of looking out through the faux eyes of the Spelljammer. Um, and you can kind of sense uh, everything on the ship if you like focus your attention to the ship but otherwise uh, while you're in warp speed your attention is largely focused outward uh, kind of extending your like uh, talons out into space to reach out and sense things um, you can I have sense a yes does she feel like she's flying yes it feels she exhilarating. She's losing her shit, but in a very, like, she's she's living the Kenku dream right now, and she's living for it. Uh, no bird. No, no Kenku has flown like a bird for such a long as time. As you lose That's your like shit, you create, like, this holographic image of you. It's kind of shadowy, just because, uh, but it just appears in the in a random place on the ship, and you're just, like, squeeing in, uh, in <laughs> amazement. Goose is dancing. It's great. But yeah, no, that's her, the whole like Kenku racial curse is that Kenkus can't they, fly. Kenkus can't fly, and they are bitter about it. So she's living. living they also the dream. can't create anything of their own. They can only copy the things of others. Yep. Uh, it's salt in the wound of the whole like warlock thing. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want magic? Uh, you can't create magic of your own. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you guys uh, zoom off. Boom crash. Uh, you kind of are able to use your senses to avoid larger obstacles, uh, like planets and stuff. Um, although if anything is in the way, uh, the Spelljammer seems to instinctively cause the ship to slow down, and this happens a few times, until you kind of get a, a idea from the navigation. The ship will like slow down as it nears a planet, uh, and you kind of reorient the ship and then zoom off in that direction. And it does take time, like about a minute for you get to get back up to warp speed. That's kind of how it runs. And you guys complete a long rest uh, as you finish this off. Um, and eventually uh, you make it to what looks like the... Uh, you're not sure what it is really, but there's like a light coming up ahead, and the ship just instinctively slows down as if there's an obstacle. Um, but it appears to be a sort of field filled with these strange... Uh, fiery rings. It's like this fire is just arranged in a ring and spitting out from nowhere. Um, and yeah, you're not sure what else is here. There's a strange blackness uh, just beyond this field of round rings. Um, meanwhile, a large fireball starts heading towards you. Uh, what Wait. do you guys do? Can we sense if it's magical or not? Uh, you can try and cast Detect Magic. You don't have much time before it reaches you, but you do have an action. Ah, oh, crap, I didn't prepare to spell magic anyway. Uh... I'm gonna try and shoot it so it explodes somewhere else. Uh, I'm gonna try and chuck a hammer at it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do! Okay. Yeah, basic. Yeah, I guess we're gonna try and make it explode before it hits us. Okay. Uh, you guys, uh, fire upon the fireball. I'm sure it does absolutely nothing. Wait, uh, can we use the bolts for this? Uh, didn't you didn't choose to. Um, oh. use the can. The can, can is bigger. It's coming at you from the side. Oh. You zoom also tosses a hammer at it. Uh. <laughs> It unfortunately whizzes into its form and just sinks into it and blazes up into an inferno. Um, that don't work. <laughs> the rest of you can attack it if you want as well. Boom Crash is unfortunately piloting the ship. 
and was out of spells anyway, so she would have been useless. That was one of the other reasons why I wanted to pilot it. Yeah, the uh, ship in also takes away your spell casting capabilities uh, mm -hmm. for essentially until you finish a long rest after piloting it. Okay. Eat in your magic. Uh, can I try to stand in front of the fireball and take some damage? Being fire resistant? Actually, hold on. Okay, I'm gonna try to do, uh, let's see if, it does, if this works. I'm gonna see, um... Damn it, it's only a creature, it doesn't work. Never mind, I'll see, I was trying to see if I could cast resistance on it. Cast Me resistance shield. on, oh, on the ship? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but uh, it doesn't work, so... The fireball uh, hurtles towards you. Mao is standing in front of it heroically. Uh, Zumasu yeeted a, a hammer at it. Uh, Boomcrash <laughs> is trying to pilot it uh, sort of out of the way, and Amon is, gonna, like, okay, considering okay, his I options. I, okay, I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to punch it. Okay. Because that's all I can do. Uh, he tries to, uh, I guess, Kakarot it uh, back from whence it came. Um, as the fireball hurtles towards you guys, it slows to a stop. It is spinning in a wild inferno uh, right next to your ship. It then speaks. Hail, vessel. Uh, hail? Hail? Are you heading beyond the sphere? Uh, yes. Yes, we, are. we just want to make our way, way out. You will take me. Uh. I am part of I, and I demand that you take me or be consumed as food. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. What does that entail? It, it, we're friends now. Don't let him eat us. Yeah. Okay. Here's kind of what it looks like. Uh, Booncrash, or Clack actually, because uh, Booncrash is occupied, flips through the encyclopedia and says, I think this thing's called a Blazazoid. What? I don't know, but it's the most 80s sounding name I've ever heard of. <laughs> it does. Kind of floats around uh, the ship to get a better view of you guys. I require a heat proof vessel. Um, Do you have you just... such a vessel? I, I, I uh, kind of shrug and motion towards the others. <laughs> we, we have a, a Zardoz, whatever the thing is called, Zodor. We got some metal from the GIF, I could make a box, but you're very big, sir. Yeah. You are extremely big. I apologize for my size. Does this suit your <laughs> size? It shrinks down and collapses into like a small fireball form and starts floating about the ship. Look, we weren't trying to shame you, it was just you are very intimidating. I can compress my form as needed. Um, actually, I pull out a- I pull out a jar, like a glass jar. Um, would you be able to fit in here? Heat proof. It uh, is glass? a glass little heat. small. Okay. This is as small as I can go. What are you saying, Mon? Okay, uh, how about this? Uh, why don't we just put them in the, um, in the bag of holding? Can you not get out? Or, you might burn through everything, right? I don't know. Hmm. Uh... Okay, okay. Make an Arcana oh, well, check, I guess. Uh, anybody with Arcana can do this, even Boomcrash, who is uh, sensibly a aware. Sentient ship. ship. Oh yeah, I guess you're on the throne, huh? Yeah. Take a seat, BC. Oh, I have an idea. Oh. Write it on the uh, Nightmare. Uh, because I think Nightmare has fire resistance, I think. Damage immunity, fire, beyond the nightmare. Huh, if you want. It doesn't matter if it is immune to fire. I must avoid the phlogiston. So, you can't be on the ship. I cannot come in contact with the atmosphere beyond the crystal sphere. So is he floating above us or something? He's kind of like just hovering above the ship. Okay. Uh, I can try and make a box if we want to avoid this thing's wrath. I guess that's the best we got. It, it, yeah. It's the smaller size, so that should be doable, right? Yeah, sit tight, Blazazoid. Well, I go by I. Okay, whatever. Uh, it 
Clack crawls down and starts like hammering away. It's pretty easy now that Clack has his spells back. Uh, it took a day for that to happen, well, a long rest, and uh, Clack starts uh, constructing and fabricating this iron box uh, out of some of the materials that were given by the GIF. Uh, it took some of the materials, but otherwise, uh, Clack comes up and creates like a five foot cube that just sits uh, on the ship. There you go, come on in! And the Blazozoid uh, kind of creeps its way inside of the box. Thank you. Close the box. Yeah, yeah okay. And Clack kind of closes the box and like seals it shut. Yep, no fire coming out of there. I wonder if I can breathe in there. I don't think it needs to breathe, Clack. Yeah, I suppose so. It was sitting out in random space. A fireball. Can you hear us out here? I kind of yell at the box. You hear a voice in your head. Of course. Okay, that's kind of creepy, but kind of cool. Everything on your talks with brains. I, I, well, granted, yeah, okay. I, I'm not even going to question it anymore. Do you know how to exit the phlogiston? Nope. Into the phlogiston. Well, who is your spell jammer? Uh, I'm going to take the box and carry it over to uh, the throne. Technically, this is them, but they're kind of the ship. Uh, you take it kind of over to Boom Crash, and Boom Crash, your head starts uh, filling with this strange knowledge uh, that you weren't aware of before, and it fills you with the access to this strange spell that you can cast while spell jamming, and uh, it gives you the ability to open a hole in the crystal sphere, and the Blazozoid says, Cast it, and move forth. Okay, I Wait, do it. Crystal sphere amongst like the entire like weave of this place or of our ship. Are we gonna have a hole in the ship, like our ozone? Clack uh, kind of says, I, "I've been doing some research on the encyclopedia during my long rest. Um, the crystal spheres seem to encompass solar systems." It, by by my calculations, I think we're at the edge. Okay, so this is like the edge of this solar system, whatever you call it. So we need to get to the next one to get the tropos. Possibly. Uh, All right. Boom crash! You cast this spell, and the black void before you, a hole just opens up, a geometric shape uh, that's a number of sides, but your uh, sides of this uh, shape, but you're not really sure how many. Um, it kind of opens up in a fractal sort of way, uh, revealing a rainbow-looking uh, sky beyond. Uh, once again, more like a night sky. Um, the fiery rings are like blazing and in your way. Uh, you'll probably have to navigate around them. They seem to be moving about passively. So I'm going to have you make a spell jamming check, which is going to be for you a charisma check. If you have proficiency in waterborne vehicles or spell jamming vehicles, you can also apply your proficiency. Yeah. <laughs> natural 20, a wow. natural born flyer for someone who's never flown. Um, the it, it comes naturally, you know, because bird. Exactly. A bird curse never to fly. Uh, you... <laughs> it's anatomy, so now it's like, oh hey, it's still in my brain. Uh, you guys start flying uh, using Boom Crash's uh, flying capabilities, zooming past and around these strange fire rings. Um, eventually, like, uh, as you guys are passing by them, you see, like, some of them are, like, blinking open as if there's something, like, strange beyond the fire ring. They seem to be intermittently blinking into gateways and portals into other dimensions. Yeah, we're look into it. Hey, Clack, what the heck is all this stuff? Don't look into it. I, I don't know. It seems weird. Let's just keep don't, going. Don't stare into the abyss. It'll stare right back. Boom crash, with your natural 20, you're able to easily navigate this field uh, and don't accidentally slip into one of the portals. And you make it onto the other side. Okay. Uh, you pass through the edge of the, uh, the crystalline sphere made out of pure void black crystal. And you emerge into the phlogiston, which... Um, after Clack had heard that uh, term, he kind of like puts, he licks his finger and like puts it up into the sky. Yeah, that's, that's phlogiston, all right. What the fuck does that even mean? Uh, it's different. 
And I never thought I'd say this, but uh, me and everybody else here, we need to not cast any fire magic. Oh, don't look at me. Okay. Phlogiston is the stuff that makes fire burn. The very existence of fire is phlogiston. And it's everywhere out here. Oh, okay. Uh, boom crash. Meanwhile, you, uh, and you guys are able to breathe in this flodged and stuff. It seems to be relatively relegated to outside of the air envelope. Um, but presumably anything cast, uh, or that reaches outside the fire envelope is going to immediately erupt into flame. Um. So can we, it's, we can collapse an entire, like, dimension and ourselves if we really wanted to? Uh, you're not sure what would happen. Huh, okay. Uh command on her don't do it <laughs> don't <laughs> I wasn't going to I was just I the bow is over there it's like on the ground we're gonna tie up that bow and put it in a fucking basement <laughs> in a box <laughs> now I understand why he needed the box so damn mm. blow up the entire world as you travel through it uh okay boom crash you are sort of like flabbergasted on this new scale uh, as you exit the crystal sphere your sense of surroundings just spills outward you weren't able to sense anything beyond this crystal void but uh, looking back you see an infinite void surrounding you as the crystal uh, the hole in the crystal sphere closes up and you guys are now in a place uh, called the phlogiston otherwise known as the rainbow sea or the flow um, boom crash you innately sense that there are these like uh sort of currents that pass through uh the flow um and you're able to kind of hone in on it uh where you were traveling at millions of miles an hour before this is like in the scale of tens of millions of miles per hour uh sorry not it was faster when uh nothing. you guys were traveling tens tens of millions before this is in the scale of hundreds of millions of miles um but to facilitate this you find that by getting onto these flow rivers, these currents, you're able to follow the currents almost perfectly and without error and zoom along uh, these pathways. Uh, who knows what's out here in the flow, but at least you're able to facilitate faster travel. Um, that is not fun music for this, I guess. Eh, it's fine. It's fine. Um, you enter the rainbow seas and the funk starts playing. Um, and you start zooming off into this uh, flow river. You guys are moving faster than you ever thought possible. You're in a sort of tunnel of rainbow colors uh, zooming past you. It's uh, half boom tube, half like, uh, I'm trying to think, half half rainbow uh, like bridge to Valhalla type deal. Mm -hmm. You are just road, uh, cruising road. along this place. Um, yeah. Eventually, uh, as you are zooming along, uh, you start to run low uh, on magic power. It kind of drains your spell slots bit by bit, and your spell slots are very powerful because you're a warlock, so each one kind of gives you five hours of like uh, zooming around, um, and then it starts draining your wizard slots, and each one of those spell levels gives you an hour per spell level, uh, so you're able to slowly dwindle out of power until you like... Uh, are released from the spell jamming session, um, the jam sesh, as it were, and you crawl out, uh, and you are ready for somebody else to take over. Um, if Amon we'll doesn't out. want to, then uh, Clack can uh, reassume control. Let me do I it. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no, okay. If you want to do it, actually, you seem too enthusiastic about this. Why are you so enthusiastic about this? I mean... I don't know. You guys all have these massive power things, and the world gets blessed by Heronius. I don't get to like do those sort of things. All right, you all right. Can all right everything. Get have fun. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But if if you, if you screw up, I'm gonna decapitate you with a roundhouse kick. I mean, I don't think I can do this for as long as they can, but I'm gonna get in position. I get a new throne. Zumas to just throwing out there. I can't do magic, so thanks. Hey, no. Oh. Well, this uh -huh. is why these experiences are so important. Okay. Um, so, Zumasu, uh, I'm going to have you make a spell jamming check uh, as you guys sort of 
uh, stop moving in the flow um, temporarily for Zumasu to take over. You guys are like in the outer reaches of space. Um, Zumasu, uh, make a spell jamming check, which for you is charisma, because you use charisma. So it's an ability charisma check. Yep. If you're proficient in vehicles, then it'll give you uh, proficiency. I got a very average roll. You got a very, fairly average roll. Uh, you're... You take to it a little slower. You're not as in tune with the arcane as uh, Clack and Booncrash are. Um, they literally see me wiggling cannons and stuff. And wiggling <laughs> you're like and just stuff. wiggling, and your like uh, head appears in a hologram, and it just kind of goes, <laughs> <laughs> and they constantly need to be reminded to keep your eyes on the road, um, the Rainbow Road. I mean, there's nothing here anyway. What am I gonna run into? <laughs> uh, and as you say this, uh, the uh, spell jammer starts to flicker. Uh, uh, that's not me, guys. Well, I mean it is, but the sails start to uh, snap and crackle and flicker out. Uh, you try and struggle to keep them on, but something is like unfortunately preventing them from activating. Uh, Clack quickly goes to the rescue and like goes towards the um, the sailing apparatuses. And uh, says, Ugh, I didn't even realize these things had power. Um, I think we're out of power on the solar sails. Let me do. But you said we didn't need fuel. Yeah, I didn't think we needed one. I didn't know how this worked. These sails seem to be something different than the spelljammer itself. They seem to, they seem to aim the ship and help it maneuver, but they definitely catch solar winds. Uh, but. Whatever this power is, it's running out. We don't have Probably. much time. Well, and if, if it catches solar winds, um, would daylight help? I think it needs to be a real star. It needs to be cosmic rays. But I think. Solar cells. Uh, hey, uh, spell jammer. Um, can you yeah. can, can you open your senses a bit? Um, slow down the ship. Um, How I think. I'm, I'm gonna need you to make a, a perception check. Okay. How I shoot web. Alright, the ship wiggles a bit as it slows down, and then I kind of, like, open my senses. Okay. Uh... So, uh, you open your senses to the surrounding regions. Uh, you're still sort of new to this, so it's slow to come to you. Um, but, uh, as you're doing this, um, you, uh, kind of, like, exit the current of the, uh, Flow River. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything ahead of you in the Flow River that can, uh, amount to a star. However, there is a star nearby. Um, it's a little out of the way, and it would probably take time. Uh, you realize you've been gone for a while, uh, on this journey of several days, and uh, Tropos could be in any amount of danger. Mm -hmm. Getting out of the way and drifting towards this star could take a lot of time. Um, however, there are other options. Um, after conferring with Clack, uh, there is a debris field uh, that you guys might be able to navigate through to get to uh, a different flow river that will help you lead towards Tropos, and you can zoom along on the way uh, using the rest of your uh, power to get there, but nobody or nowhere else. Um, your other option is to try and get around the debris field, uh, but you're probably not going to have enough power for that. But what you can do is use gravity for your assistance, and take a slingshot around a large planetoid in the region. I kind of like that idea, even though it sounds risky. There's, it's man. Yeah, there's three kind of risky actions that you can take. Uh, I said Superman, it's a thing you actually do when moving back to Earth, they sometimes go around the moon. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, a slingshot yeah. maneuver. The problem is, yeah. can we trust uh, Zumosu with the maneuver such as this? <laughs> We don't I have. Mean, you could take over. If we're running out of time, we don't really have options for another person to take over. No, it's going to be have to be you. Person to... 
Uh, we either take some time to recharge at the star, we go through the asteroid belt, or we try and do a difficult slingshot maneuver. Okay, I, I say we have a slingshot maneuver, um, because if we fail, we are all dead anyway, so I say we just go for the risky one. Can we try and go down below and maneuver the wings a little bit, so that way we can adjust as well, needed? Well, let me, let me evaluate, by the way. Uh, the slingshot is dangerous, but it's more dangerous as in we will get stranded in space. In the asteroid belt, it's a straight shot through, but we will risk damage to our vessel on the way through. Well, you could repair it, can't you? Yes, oh, I could, oh, but it's, it's a, more do we want to get stranded in space, or damage our vessel, or risk tropo Tropos' I life? I have a question. Why does uh, damaging the ship not strand it? What's the difference? Because I can repair it. If that's the case, then maybe we should just go through the All right, belt. Alright, let's go to the rock. It's also just a little dangerous, though. That's why I'm weighing these options. Right, one has like more chances of getting hit. Um which could add up to more damage than we could repair. The slingshot is win-lose real quick, 50-50, or whatever the chances are. Um, but there's only one I'd make the maneuver towards the asteroid field. That. I'd rather... <laughs> I mean, worst case, somebody else takes the wheel. The other version, I don't think anyone can move the ship. You start angling the ship towards the asteroid field. It uh, wiggles its rudders. <laughs> The solar, sails flick, the solar sails flicker as they start heading towards the asteroid belt. You're going to try and make a quick move through the asteroid belt uh, instead of the risky slingshot maneuver and try and can hope that you can reach Tropos. Sails to help me move? Unfortunately, the sails are a little useless. It's mostly you maneuvering the ship. Great. <laughs> you guys zoom along towards the asteroid belt. Uh, the ship slows down instinctively out of flow speed, because this asteroid belt does stretch across the flow current. Um, so you go down to tactical speed and start like uh, zooming in and around the asteroids, and it's kind of working. Um, you do see that there's also pieces of like, uh, like wood flying nearby, and bits of like twisted iron. It looks like there's more than just asteroids in this field. It also looks to be like debris of destroyed ships which does not bode well. Uh, I don't like this, guys. As you guys are maneuvering oh, yeah. around, it's very, like, risky and dangerous, uh, but um, with what remaining power you have, you're able to kind of maneuver around. But then suddenly, um, the ship lurches and comes to, like, a complete stop in the dead of space. Um... You guys, like, think that you've hit something, but you, like, look around, and you don't see that you've hit anything. Um, there's a little bit of uh, unease as Zimasu. You try and move the ship, but it's not moving. You're, like, concentrating as hard as you can, but you can't move the ship. And then... Not listening to me, guys. Uh, Zumasu, I'm going to have you make an intelligence check. Uh, Clack is going to try it as well. All right. But, I mean, Clack has a track record, so... I also only have two, one intelligence. Yep, par for the course for Clack. Um, okay, not bad. You know, he has the highest intelligence between all of you. <laughs> I know, I'm just... I'm more bemoaning my roles tonight for Clack. Uh, Clack is, like, wondering what's happening. He's, like, looking at the solar sails, and he's, like, uh, kind of, like, putting his finger in the air, like, what's going on? Uh, Zumasu, you... Through your sensation and connection with the Spelljammer, you realize that it's not really anything, like, power-related. It seems like the gravity in the area is centered on your ship. And huh. as you uh, begin to get this sensation, you note that some of the asteroids that are kind of floating nearby are no longer floating randomly. They start floating towards you. Oh, stupid. Oh, Guys, guys, our gravity is the only gravity here. And here's how this is gonna work. Oh no. The asteroids start flying towards you. You can see the range at which these asteroids are flying towards you uh, in the rings surrounding you. Uh, you're not sure what 
sort of strange magical effect is causing this, but it definitely seems magical uh, in nature. Um, all right, let's roll for initiative, shall we? Sure. And do I still roll if I'm a ship? Uh, yeah, you kind of roll for the ship, and you can give your action uh, to somebody if they need to like wield uh, one of the siege weapons, or you can kind of take the assist action. Um, oh, I need to add some more people to this initiative, technically. Um, on. Why can't I add them to the initiative? Oh, my spell list is completely useless here. Uh, where's click and clack? I need to add them. I kind of assumed they would still be piloting. Uh, oh no. <laughs> okay, there they are. Let's add them. And then let's reorder the list. And then let's put an asteroid in here for initiative. And put it at... Uh, put it at initiative count 20. Cool. Uh, oh, it didn't move. Are we still in the flammable rainbow sea stuff? Yes, you are. Okay. So it's technically Clack's turn first, and then the this asteroid will represent all the asteroids. Um, Clack is like, oh crap, crap, everybody to their battle stations, click to me. Uh, and click and clack, uh, grab onto one of the ballistas, and uh, they use their actions to shoot at one of the nearby uh, rocks. He's going to try and shoot at this one that's closest to you guys. Uh, and you're going to literally play asteroids. Oh. Eh. I hate you. No, no, no. For as far as I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> uh, okay, that definitely hits uh, and deals 17 piercing damage to this asteroid, which is enough to destroy it. Siege weapons do full damage to these. <laughs> uh, although... This one is actually a mite closer. Um, the asteroids take their turn, and they all move at once. The ones closest to you guys uh, collide. Uh, this small one up here collides with you guys, uh, destroying itself and dealing two bludgeoning damage to the ship. Oh, I didn't write down the damage for the ship. You guys have 300 HP like before. Okay, uh, this other larger one collides with you guys for four bludgeoning damage. It's a glancing blow, uh, as these sh uh, asteroids haven't had much time to, uh, like, hit you guys, or to fly towards you guys. It scrapes onto the side of the vessel and blows up. Uh, 294. Okay, uh, then all the other asteroids move inward. This is going to take a hot minute, sorry. Thank you. Just consider what you guys are going to do on your turns. Sure I know my only option. Sure I good option. Did I move this one? Yeah, you did. Okay, That's cool. Is Elder's Blast isn't fire. No, it's force. It's force. It's, it's force. Oh. So basically I'm going to be doing uh, fillers. Yeah. yeah, the most useless spellcaster is actually me. <laughs> I mean, what was I gonna do? That's fair. I'm a pretty useless Play baseball. <laughs> Goose, it is Goose's turn. Goose can use their action to help with a ballista. Yeah, that's what Goose is gonna do. So, um, uh, which ballista is... Clack is on running? this one. There's also ones on the lower decks, technically. Um, Nobody touch the cannon. Nobody's touching the cannon. Um, Goose is going to go to this one and start helping load it, and is going to call out to Mao. Okay, uh, Boomcrash, oh, it's technically your turn. Okay, um, I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast and try and get these things to ricochet off of each other. Uh, you shoot an Eldritch Blast towards this asteroid. You notice that this asteroid is actually not moving. This one is also 
about 450 feet away. Uh, your Eldritch Blast goes off into the distance, but it loses power before it, like, reaches this thing. Um... Is there any that are, like, imminently close? Uh, you can ready your action for one gets- for when one gets very close. Okay, that's what I'll do then. That's fine. Uh, but you have already tried shooting at this one. Uh, the thing again. is, I guess? uh, the- uh, well, you- you try yeah, shooting shoot another again. one, but it, it also still, like, doesn't reach any mm -hmm. of them. But you did notice that this asteroid seems to have taken notice of you. Uh, what? this asteroid was strangely not moving, like the other ones were being, like, uh, pulled towards you guys. It, like, turns towards you guys and reveals that it has a strange, disgusting mouth, uh, covered in lips. And the Gravislayer, uh, engages you guys. Boom crash screams. <laughs> <laughs> Just get a nice little zoom in on this, this bad boy. Uh, nice juicy lips. Uh, oh god! Yes. <laughs> oh god! No! <laughs> Click. Do do do. Click is going to load the ballista as per usual. Uh, it is the Gravislayer's turn, which is now when these. Uh, well, I had the asteroids act uh, already this turn, so I'm not going to have them act this turn. But it just stands there, uh, smacking its lips. It is now licking its lips and waiting for you guys to be destroyed, so it can feast on what's left. Amon, it is your turn. All right. So I think I'm going to uh, cast the spear weapon. Uh, I'm going to upcast it so to be level four. Um, and Ready then... in action to attack a asteroid that comes nearby, or? Oh, well, that's a bonus action, so, I mean, it's just out there for now. Let's, uh, drag it in. Okay. And I gotta start uh, preparing to shoot up. I gotta start shooting from here. That's fair. Um, and yeah, just a reminder, this Gravis layer is 450 feet away from you guys and not moving. Um, just for... As close to me, I can shoot. Yeah, just for your purposes of keeping track of it. And it's roughly in that direction to the ship. Uh, mm -hmm. Mao, it is your turn. No crits, am I shooting anything? Oh, uh, you, you need another action to shoot. All Although right, okay. Zumasu can use their action to fire and uh, cause no, you no, to shoot. I didn't, use a, I didn't use an action, though. Oh. I used a bonus action to cast the spear weapon. Okay. And then so, what are you doing now? You Shoot the bolt, but you said you need another action. Yeah, you need two actions to do so. Okay, okay. Each each ballista takes two actions. Goose and Click uh, and the Spell Jammer have been using their actions to kind of feed that uh, need. So, like, okay, if, okay. if, Zumo, if Zumo wanted to fire that ballista, then like, you can set it up so that he can fire it. Yeah. It takes okay, an action okay. to load, an action to fire. Or if you wanted to fire immediately, you could go to Goose's. Yep, Goose's yeah. is technically readied. All right, never mind. Uh, just, just do uh, move along then. Okay, well you can pump your action into it so Zumasu can uh, fire yeah, on already, his turn. I already did that. Okay, yeah. Zumasu, it is your turn. You can fire uh, the uh, ballista that Amon is loaded. Yeah, I guess I'll do that. Okay. Or the one that Goose is loaded. Which, uh, yeah, either one technically. Uh, which asteroid are you shooting for? Uh, the closest one. Uh, that would be the one over here, or the Gravis Slayer. Okay. Uh, actually, I'll shoot the Gravis Slayer, because that thing's creepy. Okay, uh, you angle, uh, probably this, uh, ballista towards it, and fire. Uh, slam that ballista button. I already did. It's at bolt, right? Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Oh, yes. It is within the ballista's range, but it's at disadvantage, so it does not hit. Um, the bolt kind of like goes out towards it and then just like curves around back towards the ship uh, and then just chunks into the side of your ship but at less momentum it does negligible damage it is Clack's turn uh, Clack is going to refire this ballista that click loaded for them and they're going to shoot at this one uh, oh I'm wrong god dang it having a crisis of buttons right now there we go. It's the move by accident. Okay, well, that's not great. Uh, Clack does not hit. And Goose uh, loads another bolt, I guess. 
Yeah, pretty much. Um, wait, hold on. Is, um, is, does Amon need assistance with his thing? Uh, his ballista is ready to fire. Goose okay. could technically uh, fire it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay, good. so Goose is gonna come in and fire, but is gonna help Amon in the future, like, loading and firing. Okay, uh, the Gravislayer is in range, uh, as are, well, mostly just, uh, some of the, uh, asteroids on the second ring, I think. Anything beyond that is unreachable. Okay, um, Amon, do you want to hit the Gravislayer? It's not approaching any closer, so... Yeah, and it's within range. <laughs> But it's creepy. <laughs> all right, all right. God, you guys are so easily scared. <laughs> uh, ooh, is, whose attack is this? Um, oh. Goose's? Goose's. Okay. Okay, well, it is made at disadvantage because it's out in its secondary range, but a 20 does hit the Gravis Slayer. Uh, deals 17 piercing damage. So that's going to do chunk. Uh... The Gravislayer uh, kind of winces and then needs to make a concentration check. Oh, whoops. Uh, constitution. Okay, it manages to maintain concentration on its gravity well that it's causing. Click! It's your turn. Uh, actually, wait. Uh, was that. It's Boom Crash's turn, technically, next. Because oh. that was Goose, oh. right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Okay, so Boom Crash, go. Okay, um... Boom Crash is going to rush up to this one, I guess. Okay, that one and it's is Ready loaded. to fire. Yeah. So, I guess... Shit. Um, can this one hit the Gravis Slayer? No. Yeah, I'm gonna say it can. Oh, okay. The only one that can't is, like, this one. Okay. Oh, natural one. Ooh, yeah, with disadvantage, it whizzes past, and the gravity forces the bolt back towards you. Um, all right, it is Click's turn. Click, uh, uh, as you guys like are start aiming at this weird monstrosity, uh, Clack kind of gets the idea. The heck is that thing? Uh, and once you guys kind of realize it's causing it, Clack goes below deck and then uh, goes to load the one underneath of Amon, like on the outside of the ship, Click follows suit, so Click is going to load that ballista, and Clack will fire on Clack's turn. The Gravislayer takes their turn, and they don't do anything, they're just sitting out there, but the asteroids start to move. This one collides with the ship. Uh, it seems to be increasing in speed with each turn. Uh, it deals six damage. Do... How large is the Gravis Slayer? Is it just a medium-sized creature? It's about the size of a small asteroid. Alright. Um, and then all the other asteroids start moving a bit closer. So a small asteroid is a medium, large, huge... That is a big one. Ugh. Okay. Like any of that. The asteroids uh, continue to converge. Uh, this one looks to be the next one that's going to hit next turn. I'm on. It is your turn. Uh, the ballista has been fired. You can pump another action into it. Uh, you also have right, your spirit let's... weapon con currently uh, active. Well, nothing's close enough to from your whack it, unfortunately. But you can, I would say, ready uh, your. You're not supposed to do this, but I can say you can ready your bonus action uh, to attack an asteroid that comes nearby. All right, sure. I gotta, I gotta load. Okay, you uh, load your uh, bolt into the crossbow or ballista, and then you kind of like focus on your spirit weapon uh, and get it ready to try and chop this asteroid in half, uh, like destructo disc style. Uh, Mao, it is your turn. So how far away is the Gravis Layer? It is 450 feet away. Fire, fire the ballista. Fire the cannons. Can... Alright. I definitely want to fire a ballista at the Gravis Layer to try and pull it in closer. I just don't know which one is ready. Uh, Boom Crash, you already fired that one, right? Yep. There are ones below deck as well, uh, though none are ready. If you want to try and uh, fashion a... Uh, 
anchored sort of thing, yeah. that would probably require a sleight of hand check. Okay, so I'll move to the other side of the ship. You uh, go underneath into the middle area, grab some of the rope, uh, and leap up onto the other side where Clack is readying one of the ballistas. You head to the frontal ballista on the bottom deck uh, and make your sleight of hand check. Alright, uh, you've tied a very good uh, thing. There seem to be notches in some of these bolts uh, just for this purpose. Uh, and you've fashioned a essentially... I'm, I'm struggling for words, but you know Harpoon. what I mean. Harpoon. That's, Harpoon that's the word. Harpoon, white whale. Uh, and then you can use your action to load the ballista. I will, yeah. Zumasu, it is your turn. There is, uh, there are two loaded ballistas on board right now. Amon's and Mao's. Shoot Mao's. Uh, Mao, Shoot I'm mine. gonna use your ballista. Do it. It's ready to go. If you somehow get advantage with this, you can also negate the disadvantage innately caused by the distance. Um, I can't move the ship though, right? You can't really move the ship. You seem uh, to be able to reorient it. Can I move the reorient the ship to be closer to that asteroid? Like in the right direction? Like, can you say rotate it? Yeah, you can rotate it in place. That's about all you can manage. Okay. Uh, will, I'm not going to do it physically because that's going to put everything yeah. out of whack. Um, but you can I'm rotate it more towards this way. Okay, I'll do that. And then I'll shoot it. Uh, okay. Uh, so you shoot it. Um, I'll, I'll say that, I guess, negates the disadvantage. It might move it like 20, what is that, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 feet as rotating, kind of. If it's facing the wrong direction and pointing it at it. it eh, Zumosu. Make a, uh, oh, you did do a bolt check. Yeah, it wasn't a great one. It wasn't a great one. Uh, the arrow flies off towards the Gravis layer, but then kind of just draws back towards you and like starts orbiting the vessel uh, and kind of gets tangled in the stales as it starts uh, orbiting your innate gravity. Um, Mao kind of cuts the rope uh, and gets ready to start over if possible. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry I missed. Clack fires uh, a ballista towards, well, they're no longer facing the Gravis layer because the rotation, but uh, they are going to fire out towards, I guess, this thing, uh, but it's not going to be at advantage at all. Oh, but still hits. Uh, Clack gets a crack shot over at this thing and destroys this asteroid. Even though it was uh, quite far away. Goose's turn. Uh, Goose can assist anybody. Um, particularly Amon is nearby. Uh, although... Mao also seems to be on to something. Uh, Go Goose could provide uh, a help action if they need to. Uh, Goose will zip over and help Mao. Okay. Uh, Goose goes outside the ship and onto the uh, opposite end and goes to assist Mao with the hey, shot. Uh, boom crash, it's your turn. Um, fudge monkey. Um, okay, so Goose is going to go and assist Mao. Um, who needs help? Who needs to reload stuff? Yeah, fudge. Um, I guess, I guess I'll just reload this ballista, I guess. Uh, I can also say that, um, the rear cannons are no longer facing the Gravis layer, but the cannon is. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll go up, Wait, go down and get the, the cannon. Is the cannon, ex do we already know, metagame-wise, that the cannon's explosive from the times we fire it? Like, will that set a chain reaction off? I mean, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. It, it would cause a chain reaction. Maybe it's not so obvious. Well, uh, here's the thing. Uh, that explosion is uh, inside of the air envelope, but the uh, fire doesn't leave the air envelope. A cannonball does. Okay. The phlogiston oh. doesn't enter your air envelope. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so if you cast, like, Firebolt, the Firebolt would eventually go outside of it and then just erupt right next to your vehicle, um, which is not good. But, uh, yeah, Boom Crash can go down and start loading the cannon, which takes three actions, unfortunately, but it has a much longer range. I'll take it. Click's turn. Uh, Click, uh, as Clack is no longer facing the uh, right way, Click is going to go down and provide an action for Boom Crash. It is the Gravislayer's turn. 
the cannon needs one more action, which is to fire. The Gravis Slayer's turn, and the asteroids move in. Yipes. This one needs to move, okay. Uh, and this one, I believe, no. Which one, which one hits? I think it was this one, yes? Okay, this one collides with the ship, finally. And this is turn three, so it's moving at three collision. The ship takes 17 bludgeoning damage. Cool. The damage is starting to go up with each, uh, hitting asteroid. Uh, the Gravis Layer ends their turn. Amon, it is your turn. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, ready to action. Um, you might be able to negate this damage, uh, Amon. So make a uh, spirit weapon attack. Yeah. I totally forgot, sorry. Well, I forgot to. Natural 20. Oh. That's double damage. Oh, okay. That could very well negate this attack. Okay. Uh... Hold on, this is not loading right. Actually, it's supposed to be the double that, so... Because I'm... Didn't you do it, it at a higher level as well? Exactly, that's why I need to roll it again. Okay. Um, so, just uh, add, add it together. Okay, uh, but you didn't cast it at a higher level, right? Or no, I, I no, understand I now. I I'm. Did. I, 3d8 to me uh, says Spirit Guardian, so I got confused. Um, so that's going to deal 28 damage. Uh, these things have about 30 hit points, so I'm going to say you negated most of the damage as the uh, thing is sliced in twain, and it only deals a grazing blow to the ship. Uh, whoops, I deleted an asteroid that's not supposed to be deleted. There we go. <laughs> okay, uh, it's still Amon's turn. Uh, sorry, it's getting a little late, so I'm frazzled. I'm on, it is your so, turn. So, I already have this loaded, so I'm gonna shoot at the thing that's close, which is... Mm -hmm. right? That's a disadvantage, okay. but you can still uh, aim and fire. Yeah. Okay, uh, the small asteroid is not quite hit by a 14, unfortunately. Uh, Fine. it misses. Sorry. Mao. It is your turn. You are on the frontal ballista. Yep. Um. And Goose already came around to help me, right? Uh, yes. Goose is assisting you. You would need to sleight of hand a new bolt. Yes. yes. Yep. Uh, you're able to easily do it a second time. Um, and then I can use my action. To load it, and then uh, you can load it. But then, since Zumos or since Goose is helping, yep. if Zumasu uses their action to fire, you're gonna have um, a advantage on the attack instead of uh, disadvantage. Got it. So I'll load it and I'll get that ready to go. Okay, uh, Zumasu, it's your turn. You can fire the ballista with advantage. This is the harpoon ballista. Okay, it's already angled pretty well. I can't move the ship anymore. Uh, yeah, you're pretty much pointing at the Gravis Slayer. You're just holding it in place as the gravity well is kind of tilting you about. Okay, thank you for the advantage. 21 hits uh, and deals 21 piercing damage to the Gravis Slayer, who is now grappled. The Gravis Slayer is going to make a constitution save. Ooh, and that... That's technically a success. Uh, they only needed a 1, or a 10 to success, su succeed. Um, but... The Gravis Slayer is now harpooned, and due to it not having any limbs, uh, and you didn't hit near its mouth, it has no way of resting itself free. Uh, you kind of see its mouth go agape like, Ooh! and then uh, you just start, uh, you've connected it to your ballista. Um, Clack's turn. Uh, Clack kind of looks back and goes, oh, do we get one? We got it. All right. We attach to it. We could pull it in to start hitting it. Let me see if I have a way that can help. No electricity or fire, please. Oh dear, that kind of limits my options, huh? Uh-huh. 
Alright, well, I'll ready some spells so when it comes into range. I do have Shatter. Um, okay, Clack's gonna ready their action. Uh, it is Goose's turn. What does Goose want to do? They could probably assist or provide their action, etc. Um, Mal, what do you want Goose to do? Give him orders. We just need to kill that thing. I don't think there's anything else that we can Goose do. Goose could uh, fire the cannon, technically. <laughs> okay. 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 Sure. <laughs> I think you guys have pumped, what, two actions into it, right? Yeah, we have. Yeah. Click and boom crash. Um, so, uh, Goose heads down to the lower levels uh, and goes to press fire. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, I keep forgetting to give you guys the cannon button. Here's the cannon button. Fire the cannon. <laughs> <laughs> this does not have disadvantage because it's within range. I'm clicking it, but it's... Oh, shit. Oh, it may take a second. Sorry. <laughs> okay, a 20 is going to hit. It deals 45 bludgeoning damage to the Gravis Sorry, Slayer. Sorry, I clicked it a couple times. <laughs> that is fine. Well, that first one was the good one. Uh, the cannonball collides with the Gravis Slayer, who like, starts kind of spinning around uh, wildly, drawing the ship in various directions. Um, you hear like a, a loud moaning off in the distance. Oh, oh, oh. I can't use it as an anchor point to try and pull myself out, can I? Uh, not quite, uh, but it does need to make a constitution saving throw, and the DC for this one, because 45 divided by 2, we round up, that's DC 23. Boy. It fails its constitution save, and the gravity well stops. The asteroids keep moving using their momentum, but you now have control of the ship Zumasu. Uh, you can move it. You can move it during your turn, before the Gravis Slayer uh, can like get back its attention. Definitely move it away from the big ones. The, the, the so big move asteroids. It, turn it around and move it backwards, then. Like that's my thing. So I turn it and move it this way. Back it up so that way it's just away from the major, the large ones coming in. Yeah. It'll still be. It'll still like that one will still come, but it's just further away. Unless we kill this thing. All right, uh, Boom Crash, it is your turn. You can gonna... pump actions into the cannonball again. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep on pumping because <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> okay, uh, you load the cannonball. Uh, you're pretty much the only one of the two Click and Goose that can uh, actually load it. So you heft a cannonball in there. Click uh, turns the thing to try and like aim it, pulling on the various ropes that are holding the cannon in place. Um, Meanwhile, it is the Gravis Slayer's turn. Uh, the Gravis Slayer starts to um, try and free itself uh, using its action. It's going to make a strength check. Uh, Mao, you are on the other end of this. Uh, it's yeah. starting to bend the ballista uh, towards it. I'm going to need you to make an opposed athletics check. Can I use the crowbar to try and jam it? Uh, uh. Okay. Okay. Bye bye ballista. Uh, okay, you put your like uh, feet against the uh, the balcony, it, like trying to pull on this rope, but the gravis layer is weirdly powerful. Uh, it tries to use its force of gravity to pull itself away from you, and the uh, rope snaps off, and it pushes itself a bit backwards, but it spent its action this turn, so it doesn't retain its, uh, it doesn't re-up the gravity well. Yeah. Amon, it is your, oh, sorry, forgot something. The rocks are still moving in spite of this. Um, right. And so also, had yeah, so this one is going to land, uh, this is turn four. Deals 17 bludgeoning damage to the ship. Now the small ones are dealing a lot of damage. They were doing two damage before. Uh, two. Clack, you might want to hold that shatter spell for one of these big asteroids. Righto. Uh, meanwhile, let's start. Did the music stop for everybody? I think so. Yep. Okay. I'll try and. Cool. Cool. Good. Sometimes it doesn't come back, and I get worried. Uh, it looks like this round, there's a lot of asteroids coming in. There's a lot of asteroids coming in, holy crap. Huh. 
<laughs> Shut up, Chris. Am I? Can I? Can I even squeeze through this if I just move backwards, back and up? Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is like the. This ring is 500 feet, but all of these asteroids are going like straight towards uh, you guys. Were any others in the ring already? I think maybe this one was. Uh... I already had one of them hit you. Well, I was more curious about. So, the monster said he backed up the ship once the gravity. It's not on his turn yet. Oh, yeah. okay. But it's That's my what turn. I was curious about. Yeah. I'm gonna have this other small one hit you because I forgot exactly where it was. Uh, 20 bludgeoning damage to the ship. The ship is now. Uh, nearing two thirds health, but that could very easily change. Uh, okay, Amon, what would you like to do with your turn? It looks like Zumasu's uh, gearing to move the ship. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna reload, uh, and then I'm going to use the spear weapon to attack the nearest thing. What's the nearest thing? Uh, a lot of them are near. Uh, I'm gonna say nearest that thing. you can hold your action to attack them on the Gravislayer's turn when they do start colliding with you guys. I will say that this is the biggest one and looks to be the most dangerous. Yeah, but I'm not going to stop it. But, uh... but with Clack Shatter spell, you might also be able to collectively deal enough damage to hurt it. Alright. It's up to you. Alright, fine. That seems fine. Okay, uh, you kind of head over to that side of the ship, and uh, Clack is like holding out his rod, uh, ready to shoot a shatter spell into this thing. You have your scythe ready to slice away the remains, uh, and Mao, it is your turn. Uh, the rope has snapped and the Gravis layer is free. It's trying to reorient itself uh, and possibly use the gravity well next turn. Try and set up another shot again. Okay, you set up another shop pretty easily enough. You can pump your action into that. Um, Zumasu, it is your turn. You are in control to, of the ship. Am I allowed to move the ship and shoot a ballista that now prepared? Yes, at the it's kind of your move action. You just haven't been able to move. Okay, so I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna shoot. But I'm gonna shoot the ballista at the Gravis Slayer. Okay. First. You can make nice. an attack. You don't have advantage, but you don't need it. It seems. Uh, it slams into the Gravis Slayer. Deals another seven damage, and they are once again grappled. Um, and now you can move. I'm going to move back. You, I'm just going to back up as fast as I can, as far as I can. You quickly rotate the ship around. Uh, it doesn't move very easily backward. That's not really a maneuver it can do. Um, you turn around, uh, listing about, and I'm going to have you make a spell jamming check, so it's a charisma check. Alright. I'm not the worst at that. Yeah, I mean, it's your spell check, so... Ah, I spoke too soon. Eh. Uh, the ship kind of, like, uh, wavers randomly uh, a bit, so I'm gonna do a little d8. Uh, so you do end up going in the reverse way, uh, so it's actually okay. Uh, you randomly spun around and got into the direction you wanted to, and then you Go start me, zooming guys. off... Uh, I'm gonna say that you just pull the Gravis Layer with you. Um, the Gravis okay. Layer is not that strong that it can outmatch a spell jamming vessel, uh, and you start pulling it. And as you do, you pull it off, um, and I'm gonna have you make an opposed charisma check against the Gravis Layer's strength. Ooh. Okay, uh, it's it's kind of a uh, a metaphysical slap fight, uh, but you speed off and the Gravis Layer starts trying to gr use gravity to pull your ship back, but uh, in the midst of this, you're able to power through, and as you get out of range of these asteroids, the Gravis Layer uh, suddenly stops and is in the middle of its gravity well from before, where it was centered and the asteroids start pummeling it. Uh, the asteroids collide, and, um... <laughs> and, uh, rocks start scattering outward and, like, forming a small orbit around the Gravis Layer. Um, but, yeah, encounter done. Uh, the Gravis Layer is no longer bothering you guys. 
I kind of want to so, know how much damage they do before I move you back. Because uh, I the way that I have these is I have them doing six different attacks, increasing the damage dice each time. Let's see how much damage this dude takes. Based off of the distance that they're at. Based off of the distance right? they've been traveling. It increases every round. This is how much yeah, the large one it. did. Momentum. This is basically the Josuke, uh, Josuke versus uh, the Hando fight. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of... Go look that one up. I suck at names. Which, so, what was the fight? So it looks like we got 34, 35, 57, 51. It's taken at least uh, 160, 170 damage. 100, uh, 200 damage. 210 damage. Uh, 230 damage abouts, just adding the tens places together. Uh, so that's fun. Fun little fact eat, there. Eat Whoop. shit, you stupid thing. <laughs> Have fun, uh, eat shit lips. Ew. Just it was like, creepy, it deserved it. That's fair. Uh, uh. I'm trying to stop some of these musics, but it kept moving around me. Okay. Uh, finally. Um, you guys have made it through the asteroid belt. You've taken some damage, but honestly, uh, two-thirds of your ship's health is not bloodied. If your ship got bloodied, there could have been a problem. Uh, but you guys make it through. Your solar sails are still flickering, uh, but you're using the last bit of power, um, rocketing through the rest of this flow river uh, towards the signal where Tropos is. Tropos, Tropos's signal has not moved. It's been mostly in place uh, this entire time. And uh, you rush off and eventually slow down um, in the middle of nowhere. You exit the flow river like midway along its current and uh, zoom to a stop uh, near a not really asteroid field but like a cluster uh, of like larger rocks and planetoids. Um, and you arrive Let's go here. Um, as you uh, arrive in this space, um, you start like looking around and trying to uh, hone in on Tropos's signal in this region. Um, it's you kind of need to adjust it from like macro scale to a like a minor scale, uh, yeah. micro scale, um, and Clax doing some adjustments uh, as Zumasu. Um, you're like uh, recovering some of your spells still. Um, Should I get out of my seat? Yeah. Uh, Clack goes here. Let me take over. I kind of like wobble out. That's that's more draining than I thought it'd be. Indeed. Isn't uh, it fun though? It was neat. I try to wiggle. I I try to I, like wiggle my arm. I was like, aw, nothing happens to the ship. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little disorienting coming out of that. Um, as I don't have any spell slots right now is how this works. Yeah, you cannot use spells until you complete a long rest. Uh, and Clack okay. is going to... Um, he starts, like, fiddling about with things. Uh, you guys are still uh, a ways away in this, like, large cluster of planetoids. Um, it's... Like I say, it's a cluster, but things are still, like, many, many, like, thousands of miles apart. Maybe not millions, but thousands. Um, and Clack is uh, reorienting this uh, sort of um, device, and it takes a while. Um, not gonna lie, uh, it wasn't really designed for this uh, kind of fine manipulation. So you guys can take your long rest now. Yeah. Nap time. Uh, after you guys complete your long rest. Um, or definitely, like, towards the end of it, uh, Clack's like, Okay, I think I've got the handle of this, guys. Are we all ready? Are we all prepared for what we need? Have we prepared our spells and whatnot? Uh, uh let me just make sure I got the right spell prepared. I dust off by my clothing, and I'm just like, Yep, that's it. Good to go. Okay. Uh, let's yeah. start honing in. We gotta triangulate the signal, and uh, your ship like starts flying around this cluster. Um, and Clack is now in charge of the spell jammer once more, um, and starts zooming about, getting three different traces surrounding the cluster. Um, as he goes in towards the third 
uh, triangulation point. He goes, uh, guys, we got company. And, uh, just, uh, as said, a large galleon-type ship suddenly zooms out Star Destroyer style, uh, right into the system near you guys. And the sails on it look positively Githyanki in origin. Um, the ship has a set of galleon sails, like two masts, uh, filled with like four sails each, um, on the top as well as the bottom, and then there's also side sails. Uh, there's also like large colossal skulls mounted on the, uh, forecastle of the ship, and, uh, there's hundreds of Githyanki on board. Um, Damn, Captain Harlock. Damn you. A symbol of, uh, a holographic, uh, image of Vyra appears on your ship. She says, took a while to catch up with you. How'd so, you get through the asteroids? <laughs> void cruisers are a lot more adept than your small skiff. And we have much better spell jammers on board. We were able to catch up with you. It took some time, but you left a trail, let's say. Now, we knew you were heading after Tropos. We knew you were in league with him. He caused the death of my brother in that accident. And you will all pay. Where are you hiding, the fugitive? And... Captain! What? What, Cap... What are you talking about? There's some other ship in the system. But we didn't see anything. There's nothing on the sensors. I can't sense anything with the spell jamming. And, uh, after a few seconds, the, uh... Githyanki commander, uh, turns towards you guys in the hologram and says, What... What sort of deal have you made? We haven't... We're, we haven't made any sort of deal. Are you kidding me? There's a sigil that we have... known very well. It's a... Just everyone, every gift to your battle stations, ignore this skiff! We need to go after this death spider. You will all pay for this insolence. Spider. And then the hologram cuts out. Um, you guys quickly get your answer. As a ship the uh, with the appearance of a giant spider with a glowing abdomen uh, just appears almost out of nowhere, Star Destroyer style again, uh, right near the Githyanki Void Cruiser. And uh, the sort of top half of the abdomen... Uh, shifts upward as if it's like opening up uh, telescopically and a turret mounted with laser cannons starts shooting at the Githyanki void cruiser with psionic lasers into the side of the ship uh, the Githyankis are scrambling uh, to their sides uh, launching all the cannons or loading all the cannons and then they start firing uh, a broadside towards this uh, death spider as it were um, Clack says, Okay, uh, we got a distraction, it seems. They don't seem to care about us. I, I've triangulated the signal. Let's get out of here. Keep moving. Uh, and you guys zoom off towards a barren planetoid covered in, uh, ice and red and blue like Earth. Um, you guys stream down in close over the planet. You guys see that the, uh, like, behind you as you guys are leaving at, like, fairly tactical speed, um... You guys see the Death Spider using its, like, various limbs to grasp onto the Void Cruiser as it pummels it with lasers from underneath of its body. Um, there is a lot of explosions and destruction and laser beams coming out of that fight. It's positively cool, and I didn't draw it because you're not a part of it. <laughs> so... <laughs> It'd be super cool, but you're not there, so hey. I've got to go to the guys. I kind of feel bad for that lady. Also, uh, just a note, um, the max cutoff time for this session is one. Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. I can deal with it. Okay. Um. It seems like if you're calling that now, and if it's alright with us, that we are nearing that point. Okay. Uh, anybody who's still awake, be sure to donate, because people need help. Uh, may need help. Do we? <laughs> oh, no. I hate you. <laughs> you guys, uh, zoom down towards the planet's surface. And uh, as you guys hone in on a uh, the symbol of Tropos, like on this little remote device, Clack says, Oh, I think we found it. 
and you guys see this like myriad rainbow of color uh, shifting, uh, almost like an aurora borealis, uh, localized centrally on this barren planetoid. Um, At and... this time of day. <laughs> At this time of the region. <laughs> <laughs> May I see it? And uh, these, this aurora seems to be shifting not just with like green lights, but also like red and blues and purples and violets and reds, and uh, it's all these different colors. And uh, there's a whole group of humanoids down here, as well as a small version uh, of the death spider that you guys saw from above. Um, <laughs> Clack goes, uh, I don't know if he's in danger, but I'm just gonna freaking drop you guys off, okay? Be ready. I guess that's how it's gonna be. Uh, All right. I get on top of Mortimer. I'm gonna I'm gonna use my mount as a mount for once. Okay. Uh, you get on top of the giant lizard, and ooh, I need Crash, to... get up here too. Uh, I can I guess I cast Death Word on myself. I mean, you could have done that as well earlier. We can have assumed. Let's mm -hmm. go to the planetoid. And I remembered to bring Mortimer. Haha. You guys zoom in. Uh, there is a giant humanoid figure standing uh, in this way. Um, there is a small one of those spider eels on its shoulder. Um, after a bit of research, uh, you found that these things are called neokis, but that's all, mostly all the information that you have from your encyclopedia. Um, there appear to be several humanoids and a strange uh, grell, which you're actually familiar with, um, in their toe. Uh, Tropos is here, but he is uh, in the midst of this rainbow aurora, and he seems to be glowing with light and floating a few feet above the ground. Um, he seems incapacitated. Uh, Clack shouts, "Go, go, go!" and then uh, fires two of the ballistas into the uh, the fire giant that is below. You guys kind of had them readied, uh, and one of those is a natural twenty. I'm gonna roll that again. Can we? off of the ship? Can we attack them on the ground? Uh, you guys are about to jump off of okay. the ship. Um, Just making sure it's, like, air down there. Uh, yeah, you guys seem to have air. They seem to be able to breathe as well. Okay. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to do math at midnight. Uh, the I second one you... as well. Okay. Uh, the giant takes two crossbow bolts into its back. Uh, meanwhile, everybody, like, turns towards you guys. Uh, the Neogis start hissing. Shh! Minions! Attack them! And then you guys, uh, all, like, leap down towards the bottom uh, of the ground. You've been brought in pretty close. Make acrobatics checks, each, each of you, and Zumasu is on Mortimer. So, does Mortimer make a check instead? Uh, I'm gonna say you can assist them. Okay. It's, it's literally the same thing, so... Eh? Okay, uh, Zumasu is gonna take some bludgeoning damage. Um, actually, you're all gonna take bludgeoning damage, but Zumasu's is gonna be, uh, full damage. The rest of you are gonna get halved. Okay. Each of you take 12 damage. Uh, sorry, each of you take 6 damage. Zumasu takes 12. I'm gonna say Mortimer's kind of fine. They land, like, in the snow, but Zumasu, you kind of, like, fall off and into the snow and skid onto the ground, unluckily. Uh, Clack zooms off with the, uh, ship, and meanwhile, you see that the, uh, Neogi, some others were here, they leap into the, uh, minor death spider here. It's called a mine spider. Uh, they leap inside, and the ship starts to take off to go after Clack in their ship. Uh, so we actually can get rid of them. Literally, no, no clue that? attack. Uh, oh no, the ballista! <laughs> <laughs> it fell off the ship. Oh, it fell off! Let's put them all in the other layer, too. Uh, okay, so let's roll for initiative. Um, I'm gonna get that initiative tracker up. And combat tracker. I got the best roll possible! It's okay, I ended up re-rolling for you. You got slightly better. Okay. Alright, uh, a charmed drow, uh, enslaved by one of the Neogi, uh, launches 
a crossbow bolt over at Mao. Oh wait, I can zoom in on this map. Yeah, you can. Probably easier that way. Uh, ooh, 17. Uh, that's gonna hit you, Mao. Do you have any reactions you want to take? You snare the missile, uh, and reduce the damage by three, which negates the damage entirely. Uh, it does seem to be coated in a poison. You toss it uselessly to the ground. Okay, don't get hit by these. Well, unless you're supposed to, then please take the hits. It is the giant you lizard's gotta... turn. Where does it move? Um, can it hold its action until it's my turn? Sure. Because I am mounted to it. I'm going to be like, okay, I'll help. wait for me a second as I readjust myself into its saddle. Okay. Tis the fire giant's turn. Uh, it hefts a sword that it had been, like, standing uh, up in the snow, and uh, it moves towards the biggest thing it can find, uh, but it engages Zumasu. It kind of seems to know that you s seem to be a threat. It takes its great sword in the air. And gets a 16 only. Uh, Yay. not a ton. Um, but it slashes into the ground and creates, like, a fissure where it was. Uh, if that had hit you, it would have dealt yeah, a lot of damage. Uh, the other Neogi, by the way, uh, this one is on its shoulder. Just for, uh, perception. Okay. Are they a small creature? Uh, the one on the giant shoulder is a medium creature. The others are small. They're a lot smaller than you thought they'd be. Um... Uh, okay. This one is going to uh, scuttle on over to Mao. It uh, crawls over the walls of this uh, sort of barren surface uh, with sparen, uh, spider ease. And it's going to try and claw at Mao. Uh, that's going to hit. Yeah. For eight slashing. It then reaches in with its moray eel head to snap at you with a bite attack. And I'm going to need a constitution save. Alright. Alright. Uh, yeah, even with the bonus uh, from Zumasu, you are going to... Wait, what's Zumasu's bonus? Plus four. Okay, yeah, that's still not enough. Uh, okay, you take eight piercing, and then... 18 poison. You are also poisoned for one minute, but you can get a new save at the end of each of your turns. And it is this Grell's turn. This Grell uh, flies over to Zumasu and tries to grapple you. Well, it's going to make a tentacles attack against you, uh, which misses. I don't know why it's like doing this twice. Uh, but either way, uh, it misses you with that attack, so it goes for a beak. That's going to hit for nine piercing. Okay. Hmm? I said okay. Reset my music, you said, Allie? Well, I, I can't reset my music if I don't hear it. Um... Is that better? Okay. Yeah, I don't know what was wrong with it, because it seemed fine to me. Um, boom Crash, it is your turn. Okie dokie. Um... <laughs> I'm... Elder's Blast. And... I'm going to... Just Aim at the big boy. dude? Okay. Yep. Uh, 21, that is going to hit. Well, for damn. Okay, 11 force damage, and they are pushed away 10 feet. Uh, they skid along the snow, and the Neogi uh, manages to hold its ground on top of the creature. Uh, roll for another attack. That's a crit. Roll for damage. Hell yeah, 23 damage. Uh, the fire giant is getting pummeled. They are now bloodied. Thankfully, a lot of that was due to the uh, bolts, but still... Very good attacks, Boom Crash. Uh, any hey. movement from you? You are near the edge of this cliff face. Um, is this like a hill, that sort of section? Yeah. Uh, generally, these like outcroppings, those are like five feet high about. Uh, this one's maybe like 
10, 15 feet high. Okay, I'm gonna go for cover. <laughs> okay, you leap down below this five foot high, like outcropping, uh, maybe towards the edge as you like are able to hop over it and you have cover. It is this Neogi's turn. Uh, it is going to scuttle on over to Amon. And, uh, yeah, it's gonna attack with its claws. And miss. It's then going to go in for a bite with its snapping eel-like uh, appendage. And, this is again, uh, it's going to end its turn. This Neogi, um is going to kind of like, uh, it's going to scuttle up onto here. Um, it is then going to look at uh, Mao. Actually, oh, at uh, Mortimer. Mortimer is going to need to make a saving throw. Uh, it's going to be a wisdom save, Zumasu. Um, does it just share mine, or how does how should we do this? Uh, I can do it for you, because I can okay. control the giant lizard. Okay, uh, it, it just gets plus four. It benefits it's from its bonus. From your bonus, sorry. 16? 16. Uh, that does overcome it. Uh, the Neogi begins, uh, it raises its, like, weird, uh, spidery claws in the air, uh, and it kind of bows its eel head, uh, and Mortimer starts acting very strange. It, like, starts trying to buck you off of him, uh, but you manage to regain control of Mortimer, who is shaking their head as if they've just resisted some form of mind control. And it's time for the Neogi Master's turn. I don't know who you are, and why you're piloting a gift ship, but you will pay for this interference. This creature is ours to command. And... Uh, is going to... Yeah, we're gonna loose... Uh... Don't, don't do it. Don't you, don't you send Tropos out on us. Oh no. No, no. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's going to fire two Eldritch Blasts at Zumasu. Oh. Okay. Uh, that first one hits. The first one hits. Uh... Oh. I don't know why it was done that way. Uh, so that is nine force damage. Do I get pushed or did it not take that talent? Uh, nope, it didn't take that talent. Still on my pony. My scaly pony. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna get rid of this second beam damage stuff. I don't know why I put it in like that. Okay. Um. It is done with that. Uh, it is then going to, uh, command its, uh, fire giant to enter the fray once more. Um, it's going to use a, uh, pseudo-action to command it to move forward. <sighs> it marches forward. Um, it is this Neogi's turn. Uh, this one is going to scuttle around here. And, uh, it is going to find Booncrash, and I'm gonna have you, Booncrash, make a wisdom save. You hear a psionic voice in your head that says, The entire universe will be enslaved by the Neogi. Uh-oh. Ooh. Uh, that might uh -oh. be very close. That just barely makes it. You start to fall under this Neogi's mentor con mental control, uh, sort of like uh, submitting yourself mentally to it, but then you realize that this is exactly what your Dark Lady would have wanted, and you pull yourself back out, uh, no longer to be fettered to another higher being, as short as this creature is. <laughs> it is this orc's turn. It kind of, like, looks both ways and goes, uh, huh? Uh. Her tastes are trashy. Her standards are low, but not that low. It, uh, runs towards Amon, and as it's running, it's going to hurl a javelin uh, at Amon. Yep, that's gonna hit. Uh, for nine piercing. It then, uh, is gonna continue its move forward towards you. Uh, and end its turn. Amon, it's your turn. Alright, I think I'm gonna cast Vampiric Touch. Nice. Okay. Your uh, hands are charged with this, uh, necrotic energy. You fall I'm prone. Gonna, gonna attack uh, this thing. Uh, hopefully it hits. Uh, hold on, I haven't actually checked their AC yet. That just barely does not hit. 
They have an AC of 15. Oh yeah, by the way, I am upcasting it, uh, by the way, to the uh, fifth level. Okay, so it's going to deal more damage on a hit? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, you go to grab at this Neogi, uh, but it scuttles away from you. <laughs> Kill them, you filthy orc! Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, also, I'm going to spend my uh, key point to go into dodge action. Okay, you use your key point to dodge, uh, and as the orc starts like uh, engaging you, swiping at you with its uh, axe, you start ducking and tumbling in the snow. Mao, it is your turn. You are currently poisoned. That means I have disadvantage on my attacks, right? Yes, and ability checks, but not saving throws. Okay. Mm. Well, I guess I'll just attack the nearest one. Hard sure. He is, like, on the wall in front of you. Okay, yeah, that's the eel one. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's gonna hit. For 29 plus 1 damage, uh, it's a lot of damage. Uh! Thank you, Goose. Um, yeah, this... Goose, you're amazing, I love you. Do it, peck it, peck his eyes out. Yeah, uh, sure thing, bud. Can't hear him. Can't. Yeah, but Boom Crash hears. Fair. It's appreciated. Mao, anything else? I am going to, I guess, disengage and. I'm trying to figure out where I can move. Move behind Mortimer. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say just an acrobatics check. There's like a bit of loose rock there uh, where that fissure is. What was that? You said Goose can what? Goose can kind of. He can mimic sounds in order to communicate. Yeah, that's fine too. So, I forgot he's a he's a crow technically. Crow. Yeah. Hey. So, um, who's your daddy? <laughs> no acrobatics. Oh, yeah, I see that. I don't know what's up with it. It just breaks if it goes for too long. Yeah, you. Uh, the ground breaks beneath you, but you're able to leap onto the other side and tumble behind Mortimer. Um, and you took the disengage, so you're fine. Make a new. Uh, make a new con save against the poison. Okay, uh, you are able to lift the poison off of yourself. Oh. Thankfully, it didn't hinder you that much, because you rolled really well. Zumasu, it's your turn. The fire giant okay. seems to be engaging you, as well as the grell. Alright, I told Murdermer to listen to me, so I'm telling it to, to give me the help action, and I'm gonna jump off and attack the fire giant. Okay, you uh, leap off, and Mortimer starts like going around. Uh, Mortimer did hold their action, I believe, so that's going to provide help for you now. Yeah, so now I'm going to swing at the fire giant. Um, okay. Bonus action, I'm going to get the blinding smite ready. Okay. Okay, let's see if this hits. Uh, 18 hit! <laughs> With the help action. Uh, oops, the giant moved a bit. 18 just barely hits. Yes! Okay, so that is the fire giant's uh, AC. Seven, radiant damage D8, blinding smite damage, and I'm, of course I'm going to smite because this seems like a pretty end game encounter. Mm. Um, where is my smite? I'm gonna have him make the con save now. It's not a fiend or undead, right? No, it is a giant. He made the con save though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's 19 radiant. Alright. Blinding spike go off twice. Eh. Okay. So that's 7 plus 5 is 13 plus 14. I, I, I've been doing the damage. Oh, okay. You can cool. total it up and for your own purposes, but the uh, giant's health pool is accurate. Um, you rush down, uh, and Mortimer kind of like ducks underneath the fire giant's legs uh, to cause it to trip down towards the ground and you leap off off of its knee up towards its face and start slashing away at it. Uh, you get off a uh, slash uh, towards its face and then a stab into its chest. Uh, it takes a gratuitous amount of damage. Looks like we have some people cutting out of the roll 20. Um, yeah, I have to, I had to restart. It was lagging for some reason. That's fine. Uh, is that it for your turn? You have bonus action uh and actioned. Uh, action was just gonna be to finish up a second attack, so... Oh, I forgot you have two attacks, because this is yeah. just one attack. Um, if I try to move around the giant, other things get attack of opportunity against me, though, right? Most likely, yes. Uh, I'm just gonna attack and then hold my ground. Okay. Once it loads up, uh... Are, are you able to make me attack? This I can make you attack. 
Yeah, just make me attack. Uh, is it long? Attack me. Long sword. Long sword. Yeah. Twenty-seven. Uh, Sweet. Twenty-seven's gonna hit. I'll have you do damage. And, and I get a D8 for radiant. Get a D8 for radiant. <laughs> uh, one for the radiant, but that's seven damage. Are you smiting on this attack? Yeah, I'm going to smite. It's going to be a first level or uh, second level smite. Are you able to do that yet? Do what? I didn't know if you were in yet, but I can do it. Second level, you said? Uh, not yet. Yeah, second level smite. It's not Still a loading up. Oh, only seven damage. <laughs> Second blow, not as heroic, but it's still uh, another uh, additional flash of light. Um, okay, Goose. Let's get this Goose. Uh, okay. Goose is near a Neogi that is uh, fairly low on health. It is hissing after Mao, and it's ordering the drow to fire. Um, part of me wants to... Kill the Neogi for the cool factor. Kill the Neogi for the cool factor, but also, like, um, shocking grasp it. Oh, yeah. But, um, Boom Crash's turn is a while away. Hmm. Goose could so. probably do better doing a help action, uh, if anybody needs it. Um. Yeah, so. Goose is gonna go and do a help action, just keep on helping Mao. Okay. Uh, Goose helps Mao with whatever attack they need. This fish person, uh, a Quotoa, uh, just kind of picks up its uh, its spear and goes... <laughs> it starts uh, hobbling towards you guys. Uh, it's wielding a shield as well. It goes over to attack Zumasu. Uh, yeah, that's gonna hit, I believe, because of the flanking bonus as well. Um, so that's gonna do... The plus one makes it to 21. Yep. <laughs> Uh, so that's going to be four damage. Uh, okay. It's not much. Um, and it's the top of the round. Uh, also, you guys uh, have sort of come to a... Uh, damn it, this music. Stop it. Stop stopping. Um, let's do... Okay, this one works. We'll just put that on repeat. Um... So you guys notice that all of these creatures that aren't Neogi, and perhaps the fire giant, they all appear to be denizens of the Underdark. That's really weird. That's really weird. Yeah, yeah like the Kotoa were down there. Oh god, do we have more portals? Is this more portal shenanigans? Uh, A drow uh, lines up its shot to fire at a mon this time. It doesn't think it can get a shot off on now. Well, it's at disadvantage. Yeah. Does it, uh, and it doesn't hit anyway, so... Okay, it fires off, and it lands into the snow. Uh, it is Mortimer's turn. Is Mortimer holding their action? Mortimer's gonna use the help action. It's gonna hold its action to help me whenever I attack something. Sure. Uh, Tis the fire giant's turn. It hefts its sword once more, and goes to, like, slam it down, um like, uh, almost like a quarterstaff, like, being driven into the ground before it, except it's a sword facing down. Uh, right on Zumasu. Great. Yeah, that, that hits, oh god, that hurts. You hit, it hits you for 30 slashing damage. <laughs> uh, Holy cricket. yeah, they have one attack. It's a doozy. <laughs> that was lucky the other one didn't hit, essentially. Uh, the Niyogi scuttles down, uh, off onto the side of this wall, and it's going to attempt to enslave Mao. Mao, I'm going to need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Does, does the giant have plus 15 strength? Uh, it doesn't have plus 15 strength. Uh, Mao, you are able to resist the yes! Neogi's wiles as well. Get the fuck out of here. The ne the fire giant has plus 11 to attack. Oi, oi. <laughs> and athletics checks. Um, okay, the Neogi's done. It is the Grell's turn. The Grell is going to zoom over um, towards uh, Mao and use its tentacles. Uh, does a 16 hit you, Mao? I think that might be just a... Okay. Yeah. You're going to take 10 piercing damage, and then I need a con save. Uncanny dodge! You can have the damage, yes, to 5. <laughs> 
And then a con save? Yep. DC 11. Okay. You <laughs> well, uh, you also had Zumas' bonus, so you did more than make it. However, you are now grappled by the Grell, uh, who proceeds to fly up into the air, yep. provoking an attack from Amon, though. I gotta do my uh, spell attack. Oh, fuck. Uh, sorry, I, I forgot you also have... Ooh, <laughs> Vampiric Embrace. Uh, or nom, nom, nom. Vampiric Touch. Uh... Yeah, the Grell starts, like, crawling up into the air, but you've seen this before in the Underdark. You know this move well. You reach up and grab one of its tentacles and start sucking the soul energy from this creature. It starts screeching in pain. Roll for that damage. That sweet, sweet damn. Mm, minor sweet, sweet damn. Uh, but yeah. you do heal for ten as well. I mean, you haven't taken any damage either, have you? No, I have never healed any damage because of your uh, alternative uh, long rest. Oh, we haven't been doing that for a while. Because no. that was for the other travel. That was for the the other travel, yeah. Did, did somebody heal long rest for this and get everything back? That's what I thought. Um, That's what I've been doing. <laughs> eh. Well, this is last one, at least. I thought that was everything. I didn't really specify. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway. Okay. So, oh, yeah, I've, uh, I've been at like 60 health for a long time, so... It actually it's, it's gets not. a second attack on Mal. I forgot. Uh, 20. For 6 piercing. Okay. The music has not stopped. It is just taking a long time to loop. Got it. Cool. <laughs> have to check on that every once in a while. Boom Crash, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, also, um. uh, I should mention the Grell has moved, uh... It did get that attack of opportunity, but the Grell is now moving out uh, over this kind of pit here with Mao in tow in its jellyfish tentacles. Boom crash. Um. Fuck. Um. Boom crash has sort of put together that these Neogis are what are controlling these things, right? Uh, yeah, it's it's fairly obvious from the er their attempts to enslave you mentally, and also mm -hmm. the fact that these things are zombieingly like attacking you guys. They're fairly able to, like, they aren't just zombieishly at uh, lumbering at you guys, but they do seem mindless in their behavior. Okay, um, I'm going to duck behind this little outcropping and go for this guy. Uh, which guy? I didn't see the ping. Um. Okay, that, that guy. One. Cool. That is going to hit. Uh, the Neogi is blasted in the face for 9 force damage, uh, and they go to zero and die. Cool. Um, and then I'm going to peep out and attack this one with my second Eldritch Blast. All right. Shit. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, let me... Oh, no, they have 15 for their AC. Yes. Damn. Uh, that okay. just barely misses, unfortunately. It skids off into the snow. Pfft. And it's this Neogi's turn. Uh, this one, I think, has already tried to do its enslave. Um, actually, I think this is the only one that didn't, because it chose to try and bite Amon. Uh, so it's going to try and enslave Amon this time. Um, Amon, make a wisdom save. You have Zumasu's bonus. Okay, yeah, you managed to resist the Neogi's uh, attempts to resist, or to enslave you. Uh, this one up here is going to scuttle down and start crawling after you guys. What is their move? Because that's a little far away. Okay, well, they aren't impeded by the movement, so it's fine. This one goes over to Mortimer and it starts attacking with its claws and bite. Uh, I think both of those hit Mortimer. The 14 might actually not. I think, oh, never mind, it's 13. Yeah, uh, they actually have 12. Okay. Uh, so Mortimer, that's... I think, pops. Actually, they don't pop if they can make the constitution... No, no, the poison is just normal damage. Um, so the, the giant lizard does, unfortunately, pop. Uh, the Neogi crawls up onto Mortimer while it's trying to engage in the Fire Knight. Uh, with the fire giant, it crawls on top of the thing's back, and it starts stabbing with its claws, uh, and then sinks its teeth into Mortimer's neck, and Mortimer collapses onto the ground, and then fades into uh, little pyreflies uh, as it flies away. 
and to the Divine Light, the Neogi Master's turn. Uh, let's see, I've been busy with these other dudes. Let me check its spell list for a second. Um, yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. Uh oh. <laughs> the Neogi casts Hunger of Hadar. Oh no. Let's center it right here. That seems like a good place. Does it oh, hit boy. the giant or no? Hmm? Does the giant get his foot in it or no? Uh, the giant is just out, uh, but a lot of their allies are in, so <laughs> it doesn't seem to care that much. Um, this so, is fine. So you guys uh, are going to take damage at the start of your turns, I think. Um, oh crap, I forget how Hunger of Hadar works. Why did I choose this? I'll, I'll look it up. Um, okay, click thanks. The, click the spell list. Starts its turn is 2d6 cold damage, ends its turn, dexterity save, or gotcha. take 2d6 um, acid. Okay. Uh, the Neogi is then going to use its uh, sort of legendary action at the end of its turn. It kind of like has an extra action that I've given it. Um, and it's going to cause the fire giant to make an additional attack. Uh, oh, great. <laughs> against Zumasu. Oh, great. I might, I might actually die. I... That is 24 that slashing that. damage. It swipes quickly and you kind of like backpedal into the darkness of the hunger of Hadar um, consumed by it as the Neogi hopes that all of you will soon be uh, this Neogi is going to uh, scuttle off uh, towards its master uh, backing its way into nicer territory the orc is going to take some damage from the hunger of Hadar immediately 9 damage uh, uh, don't like uh and the orc stumbles out at, like, half movement speed, uh, onto the snow. Um, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and then it's gonna take its javelin and, like, hurl it back towards where it thought Amon was last. And it's going to do so at disadvantage, because it cannot see. Whiz is past. Uh, who knows where it went. Amon, it is dark. Uh, you take... Do, do, do... What type of damage is first, Boon Crash? Is it necrotic or cold? Cold. Okay, uh, Amon, you take uh, nine cold. It's burr, you're hearing, chili. You're hearing me yell out really badly because I'm almost dead, by the way. Yeah, you do hear a violent yell in front of you. Eh. It's a bad scenario for me. I'm going to die next turn because of the hunger. You've managed there. to maintain concentration on your effects. Well, I can't see you, so... Eh. Uh, I'm just going to walk in a... I gotta roll a d8. I gotta try to walk in the right direction. Okay. To simulate uh, blindness. I'm gonna do a blood bowl. One, two. Three. Blood bowl rules. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you uh, collide with the Neogi and like stumble over him. <laughs> it's like small, so it's kind of. Uh, I'm gonna let. You can make an attack against this dude if you want. Okay. Uh, let's do vampiric touch on it. Heck yes. Oh, I didn't see you here, but don't mind if I suck for a bit. Uh, and you do suck, uh, but not in the way you wanted to, and you miss, uh, stumbling as the Neogi scuttles beneath your legs. Okay, and then I'm going to um, do this. I'm going to use my remaining key point to uh, disengage. I'm just going to keep on walking. Excuse okay. me. Pardon me. Yeah. Excuse okay. me. It takes all your uh, movement, but you manage to get your way out. Yeah. Mal, it is your turn. You are restrained, but not paralyzed by the Grell's poison. It is uh, hovering about five, ten, twenty. It's about thirty feet above the ground right now. Uh, the ground being right there. Another fun thing: you look off into the sky, and the Mind Spider and the Githyanki Skiff uh, are firing at each other. They're taking a lot of time to fire their weapons uh, because. Clack is sort of only has click on board. Uh, the mind spider just has a few neogi on board. They're kind of pitifully firing ballistas and lasers at each other. Well, I'm gonna take fall damage and die. Can can I somehow wiggle my way into grabbing like a health potion or something and try and drink it while being like restrained? Sure. 
What do you want me to roll? Uh, sleight of hand. Natural 20. Uh, yeah. yeah, your hand is restrained right near a health potion on your belt. Uh, you easily slip it out and, like, unscrew the cork, and it falls off to the ground, but you, uh, slurp the potion down with an action. What type of potion is it? Uh, it's just a healing potion is all it says, so... You heal 10 hit points. Pretty good. Enough to resist fall damage, really. Pretty much. I think that's all I can do, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. Sumasu, it is your turn. Uh, you are going to take 2d6 damage. I can't do anything before Three that happens, right? Three damage. I am just alive. Incredible. Uh, magic. Love to see it. Disengage and walk in a direction. I will die to the attacks of opportunities and... Okay. Disengage. Disengage. Yeah, no, I'm just also thinking about another option I have here, too. The giant... Okay. Do you have healing ward? I don't have healing ward, but I have dispel magic. Ooh. That could be helpful to everybody. I also could everybody. try and attack the monster and get out of the thing, too. How bloody does the giant look? Uh, when last you saw it, it was pretty bloody. Make sure okay. to disengage. Make sure to disengage and get out. Because if you're in the darkness, I can't see you. A.K.A. I can't heal yeah. you. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, I'll disengage. Um, how do I navigate through this? Like, what are you counting this terrain as? Uh, it's can, difficult can terrain I for the... the edge to see where people are? You kind of knew where people were. Um, and I guess you kind of knew where the hunger of Hadar emanated from. Because I would have known it came from behind me and I knew the monster was in front of me. So that's kind of what I mean by like... You know that there were enemies to your right. You knew that there were slightly less enemies to your left. You've disengaged, so you're not going to get attacks of opportunity. But am I allowed to move through this way? I mean, I'm on did, so I'd allow you to, I guess. Okay, I'm going to crawl. I guess it'll be like half movement then, so disengage. I'll get to base. In the future, I'll probably force uh, acrobatics checks to kind of do a tumble check, I guess, from 3rd edition. But um, for now, you, you just kind of crawl uh, around the fire giant's legs and are able to get your way through. Fire giants don't take up a lot of uh, width, technically. Uh, you rush out onto the other side. Uh, you don't have an action. Do you have a bonus action you want to take? Um, yeah, I'm going to cast shield on myself. You cast shield. Uh, a holy light stricken with uh, their Hieronius' image appears. Goose, unfortunately, goes by. Hi, Goose. Goose has one hit point and no longer has that hit point. Uh, it is the Quotoa's turn next. The Quotoa takes 2d6 damage. Oops, uh, 2d6 damage, I'll use the second value. Oh, that's easy for me, isn't it? Uh, the Quotoa stumbles out, uh, and, like, shakes its head. Uh, and turns around towards Amon and Zumasu, gauges which one would be a better target, and it goes for Zumasu. I hope the AC helps. Uh, it seems to have. Uh, he only got a 12 with the flanking bonus. Is this drow's turn. This drow is uh, in a lot of dark uh, ness. It is going to kind of navigate its way. Let's see how far it can move. Okay, I can move at least over there. Um, and it's going to ready its action to shoot at the first creature it can get a, a bead on. It's the fire giant's turn. It turns towards uh, Amon and is going to do a downward swipe on Amon, not really caring that the Quotoa is slightly in the way. I impose disadvantage. <laughs> you impose disadvantage on this attack. I, okay, oh, it's damn. only a 22. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gotta... Okay, I'll take 28 damage. I tried. To be fair, Amon still has a save point, so um, the sword comes down... And Amon, you just barely dodge out of the way of it. It, like, clips your leg as you're uh, getting away from it, um, which kind of puts you into a more bloodied range. And, uh, ooh. Are you yeah, that, that, well, it's a save, that's... right? Yeah. Oh, but the save check is 14, because it's a lot of damage. So, unfortunately, I think that's still... Uh... No, 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 I get advantage. Oh, you have advantage, because uh, Warcaster? Is that yeah, what that Warcaster. is? Okay, cool. Yeah. Then you're yeah. totes fine. It is the Grell's turn. The Grell is gonna kind of fly off with its meal and this start <laughs> making some tenty attacks. 
This is kind of par for the course for Grells, really. I honestly have no idea what's going on, so... <laughs> Hi, Mal. Uh, that's not gonna hit Mal. Even with the advantage of being restrained. You won't be missed, mostly because I don't see you. Uh, that's gonna be a total 20, so that's gonna be 7 piercing damage to Mal. 7? Yep. Boom crash. You are in the middle of the darkness. Which I can see through. You can see through, but it's still very chilly, so you take four damage. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. Okay. If you can see through, you can. You have ways to get out of there quick, right? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I I can. I know where to go. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. You uh, sneak into this little space. Uh, there's a dead Neogi uh, slumped in the snow beneath you. Yeah, um, I'm going to... I see that Mal has is being made off with, and... <laughs> Can I... Okay, what's the range on telekinesis? Uh, 90 feet? No. It's basically that scene from uh, Community. You walk in, walking into the apartment, things are on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oi. Oi. Um, because I want to play... Tug of war with Mao and the Grawl, essentially. Oh, it's 60 feet. Am I close enough? I think. I think so. Yeah. Barely. Okay, good. Well, not barely, actually. So, I'm grabbing Mao. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Grawl is moving onward as it's like gnawing at Mao, and then suddenly it's yanked by its tentacles. Arr! Arr! And uh, yeah, you start pulling Mao back. You can uh, move Mao back 30 feet, I believe. Yeah, um, no, bring her back to me. Yeah, that goes straight up back to you. Grell goes with it. <laughs> I'm gonna have you, uh, what's the check to, like, move a creature? Um, Is it, like, on, an opposed check. strength against Wait, your... Is it telekinesis? Yeah. Yes. Um, creature, huge or smaller, um, strength check. The Grell no. fails. Uh, it's trying to pull the Mao away, but it's not working. Never! Okay, it is this Neogi's turn. It's going to take 2 to 6 damage. And then it's going to stumble out of the Hunger of Hadar and crawl around. It's going to try and bite at Amon and Claw. I should have saved this advantage. Uh, and yeah, those do not succeed. Yay! It's this Neogi's turn. It's going to... Uh, over here and head towards the boom crash. It bites and claws. Uh, I said bites and claws. Uh, so okay. boom crash, as you're pulling this uh, thing towards you telekinetically, uh, you hear a hiss behind you and the claws collide with your back for 10 slashing damage. Uh, meanwhile, a bite connects uh, with your shoulder and deals 8 piercing plus 13 poison. Uh, total 31 damage, I think, total. Yikes. And then I need a con save. Okay, one second. Let me just do the... Um... Oh, no. Um, so, minus uh, 31 total? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, and a con save. So... Do, 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 do. Nope. Nope. Damn it. Work with me. There we go. Here it comes. Oh, there it went. Oh, bitch. <laughs> uh, Boom Crash, you are poisoned by the Neogi. It got a very solid blow onto you while you were concentrating on the effect. Um, it's the Neogi Master's turn. Uh, it is going to maintain its concentration on this uh, hunger of Hadar, but it turns its gaze towards Amon and. Uh, yeah, I think it can fin uh, Zumasu can be finished off by the fire giant. The Neogi is going to try and enslave Amon. Uh, I'm going to need a wisdom save from you, Amon. You have Zumasu's bonus. This is the last Neogi that can try its enslave. Okay, you resist. Uh, the master's uh, attack is a lot stronger than the other ones, but you are able to resist its cosmic call towards you. Um... And it's going to use the legendary action on the end of its turn uh, to, instead of commanding the fire giant, it's going to use an Eldritch Blast, firing one at Zumasu, Yay. and another Yay. at Zumasu. 
because the first one didn't work. Yay! Okay, uh, those still don't hit, so you are good. Yes. I'm last leg blasting it off with my shield. This thing's gonna go for Zumasu with flanking. Ugh. It misses again. You have very good armor. It misses again. I also have shield on you, top yeah, of you this. also have shield. Uh, they're trying their best to take you down, but you are just not having it. Uh, the Neogi's Eldritch Blast, by the way, look like kind of rainbow uh, blasts of like radiation almost, uh, just because it looks cool. My gear. Yep. Uh, so it is this orc's turn. It's going to. Whoa, wrong thing. Great axe. I'm on. Then it's a mon's turn after this. It misses. I'm on. It's your turn. Uh, spell attack. Uh, this Neo get the bottom. Uh, with a direct touch. Drain! You drain. It's uh, 5d8s, I think. Oh, d6s? Cool. Well, that's still a lot. That's actually uh, enough to kill it. You. Uh, grab onto the Neogi's like moray eel head as it lunges towards you, and you just start sucking the life out of it, like uh, like sucking the meat out of a crab's leg. Uh, the moray <laughs> eel head deflates, and the spider falls limp. Oh. Good job, buddy. As I'm just like batting off all the attacks. <laughs> oh, um, so do you have shield of faith already? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, you know what? Healing word. I guess I'll be nice to you and cast um, a healing word. Yep. Your uh, uh, other thing was an action, but it wasn't a spell. It was just yeah. an extension of the spell. So, so you one, can healing two, word. Four. Okay, so 40. Now you're up after this. Okay, plus uh, four. So that's going to be uh, 13 um, hit points to Zumasu. Okay. okay, I'll kill the giant for you. Now it's your turn. Uh, you can attempt to escape as an action, or you can attack. Crash looks like they are getting attacked as well. Uh, I'll attempt to escape. Okay. How far am up am I? Uh, not very far. Okay. Acrobatics? Uh, yep. Yep, you easily yeah. slip out uh, from the Grell's tentacles, uh, especially thanks to Boon Crash's help. You slip out onto the ground, uh, and you were brought right next to Boon Crash, so you are fine. Uh, well, I think that's all I can technically do, right? Yeah, that took your action, but you have a bonus if you need to take it. My bonus action hide in plain sight. Zumasu, it's your turn. Alright, I activate Justice Blade. I'm gonna attack the giant and finish this off. Okay. That's gonna hit with a 33. Okay, I'm gonna Better to make sure. Probably. Nice. Okay, you deal 12 slashing Not damage, nice. <laughs> 1 radiant. That's the wrong button. You start to sense <laughs> fiends and undead around you. I mean, that's kind of part of the course right now. I am kind of zoning in. Uh, but let me get that smite damage. Seriously? Did, did that really just... I got uh, a few You slash at the giant once more. Uh, it stumbles onto the ground. Uh, it looks like its head is within range of you now. Uh, you have a second attack. Yep. Ugh. Ugh, I don't remember. That misses. If you were flanking, that would have hit. Um, but the uh, giant moves its sword right in front of you, uh, almost as a shield, and you just tong, clack with the metal, uh, and it gets back to its feet, l using the sword to lift itself up. Anything else for your turn? I'm gonna just try and intimidate it out of desperation. <laughs> ah, you yell at it. The Quotoa just kind of like gurgles and throws its spear uselessly at Zumasu. I and mean, misses. In general, at the top I am fighting a giant. At the top of the round, uh, you guys are interrupted as the uh, as your Githyanki ship uh, zooms over um, the region, uh, a figure jumps out from the ship. And the Zodar lands with a meteoric slam onto the ground uh, inside of the hunger of Hadar. It seems to completely ignore it. Uh, Zumasu, you guys like are close enough to see this. Amon just kind of sees it barely. Booncrash sees it uh, through the darkness. Mao is oblivious. But the Zodar lands, and uh, the Neogi master goes, The hell was that? Whatever it is, kill it! And the giant turns towards the Zodar, and the Zodar punches it. 
<laughs> and it flies into the stratosphere with the Neogi Master on its back. <laughs> it heads over to this Neogi, lifts it up into the air, and blasts it into the stratosphere with another punch. Arcus, Arcus. The uh, other, like, uh, underdark creatures start, like, holding their heads. What? Where are we? What's going on? And uh, this Neogi over here uh, just kind of goes, uh, and it disengages and starts, like, scuttling along the ground. It's the only Neogi left. Um, it disappears into the uh, shadows in the mountain. The Grell just kind of, like, goes off. Um, oh, I'm on the wrong layer here. Whoops, I drew something, because that's how Roll20 does. Uh, the the Grell just floats off into the sky, uh, not really knowing what to do with its life anymore. The the other <laughs> creatures like kind of gather, like, what's going on? Uh, the hunger of Hadar eventually fades. <sighs> and you guys are left with the Zodar. Um... <laughs> I'm gonna give you a healing potion. I have my own. I zapped myself for 20 hit points. Uh-huh. Hey. Do you need some healing? I Hello? Oh. Yeah. Zodar? High five. It... I give it a hug. You guys don't, like don't hug. High, <laughs> don't high five the thing that don't high five the thing that can uh, hit you into the stratosphere, alright? If I can punch you into the, the, the filter whatever I'm willing to take that risk because that was awesome. <laughs> It just kind of looks at you. Um, Tropos uh, eventually collapses on the ground. <sighs> oh. You guys, like, rush to Tropos's aid. Uh, the Zodar just stops and stares up uh, into the rainbow shapes. Tropos uh, is no longer glowing. He goes, What? Where am I? What's going on? We, we thought we you'd know, buddy. Um, let's get you out of this aura first. I'm gonna help bring him out of this creepy area. The last thing that I remember, and he looks up towards the rainbow sky. That thing, it tried to communicate with me, but it hurt me to do so. That thing is from beyond our dimensions. We live in the third dimension. It lives somewhere between the fourth and sixth. It's what? completely incomprehensible. It's terrifying, but the Neogi were trying to use my psionic powers to communicate with it. I, I couldn't do it. Yeah, and you're a fugitive. You didn't tell us that, and we're going to get in trouble once everyone shows up here. <sighs> Let the man rest a second. It's fine. Nope. I, I'm sorry. I should have been more forward with you. I'll explain everything once we can get out of here. If we have a what? way out... And, and you guys are, like, interrupted as the Zodar steps forward. Uh-oh. It walks no. into the uh, radiant light okay. and looks up. It turns back towards you all and says, It begins. Thank you. And it looks back up towards the sky, and it raises its arms in a Y formation, and it begins to glow. The radiant light starts spinning around it uh, in a spiral of radiance, and then its uh, armor starts to, like, grow and expand out from it. Um, it's, like, passing through you guys now, and the naked underneath of the Zodar, which is, like, pure muscle and nothing else, uh, it just... Uh, it just continues to pose as the crystalline structure of its armor expands outward infinitely, and you feel a rush uh, of air as the phlogiston leaves from this place. <sighs> and uh, you guys see that meteors start falling from the skies. Uh, Clack zooms down near the ground, goes, Everybody, get the heck on! We gotta get out of here! Everything's going to shit! <sighs> Whatever, little man. And then the drow screams out, What about us? Yeah, just get on the ship. Just get on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Job done. Uh, you guys all leap onto the ship and then I zoom one off. I the Neogi before we leave. <laughs> you huck one of the Neogi corpses onto the ship. Um, and you guys start zooming off. 
Uh, and as you zoom off, you look back uh, and see that meteorites are clashing uh, together. The cluster is like combining uh, together in a mass of radiant light. You can see fractaling uh, crystalline structures uh, like manipulating themselves outward hyperbolically and it's completely incomprehensible to you. This is kind of your like it's full of stars moment here. Um, and in a flash of light uh, you are filled with a uh, strange sensation and uh, you're not sure. It's a sense of calm. You look forward and you see in the uh, rubble of this collision of the cluster there is a rough planet in its uh, place. You see bits of green and blue starting to populate the planet as if it's like suddenly and and aggressively growing plants and spawning uh, like water from its atmosphere and gra gaining an atmosphere of its uh, of its own, like a rapid uh, acceleration of time. Terraforming. Kind of, yeah. We made a, uh, an ego. Meanwhile, um, the Blazozoid bursts out from its container, and it goes, Ugh, I can breathe again. Thank you for your passage through the phlogiston. And it zooms off. It seems there's no more phlogiston in this area. You're in a new crystal sphere that has formed. You've just witnessed the birth of a solar system. Uh, I, I, I have several questions. Uh, Back, explain. I don't got time to explain this. <laughs> I'll explain it on the way back. I think I can put together what happened. Meanwhile, you guys uh, look off and you see that the um, Githyanki ship has managed to uh, make mincemeat of the Death Spider, uh, but it seems to be, like, in pieces. You guys see a uh, holographic projection of uh, Vyra appear on your ship. You have Tropos. I knew you were working together all along. And Tropos yeah. kind of, like, holds up his hand. Sister... Please, let us go. You're a deserter, Tropos. You caused the death of our brother on that void cruiser that day when those Alithids were attacking the ship. It is not my fault. Well, it was. But that is my penance. I banished myself to the planet in search of an Alithid that I could possibly slay in hopes that it would repent for my actions. I cannot bring back our brother's life. But I implore you, leave me be. I bring no harm to your people. You are a deserter, Tropos. But I'm also your brother. I'll let you go this time. Need to repair the ship. But next time, Tropos. We're taking you in. I'll see you then, sister. I hope that I have slain many Lithid before I see you again. Enough to make up for the lives that I have caused. The transmission ends, and Clack spins the ship around. We need to find a star to refuel our sails. Hopefully they don't have enough people to repair right away. Then you guys zoom off uh, in the new solar system, seeking out a new star that has just appeared, uh, pulsing with energy in this new space. You guys spend some time refilling the sail's energy, and you guys, uh, eventually, after a good few long rests, are able to, uh, start navigating your way back. Tropos is familiar with the, uh, piloting of a spelljammer, and is able to navigate you guys back home. The journey takes several days, um, about a week, really, but you guys eventually return back to your world. Tropos explains that your world is actually called Kendral to the people of space, uh, wild space, um, but you guys didn't really have any need or knowledge of that. And you guys return. Uh, Tropos 
uh, sends you guys back to Urzark and uh, takes the ship from you guys, saying, I know you guys could probably want this, but I need to I need to evade my sister for a time. No, we're good. Take it. Please, please take it. I don't take care of those Underdark fellows. They probably got nowhere else to go. You need a crew. There was definitely some illithid in the Underdark, but the Neogi captured me from some sort of remote base that they had in the Underdark. They've been capturing slaves down there for a while. When they noticed they'd found a Githyanki, they thought they could use me to communicate with that thing they'd found. Something Wait, called so a Misi. Wait, they had a way to transport you all the way from the Underdark over here? A teleporter. I pray you don't find it. There's still Neogi there. That's a threat that we should probably know of. Thankfully a minor one. They just take slaves and teleport them back to their main base across the stars. But... It's terrifying. I'm going to be spacefaring for a while. Hopefully Vyra doesn't find me. I'm gonna try and find the Illithid base nearest our system and try and do some damage. If I need you again, I'll see if you want to join. Well, you know which planet we live on, and apparently it's not flat, so... So it's easy to find you. Uh-huh. I can't... I can't thank you enough for all that you've done to find me across crystal spheres, across the phlogiston. No one has ever traveled that far for me, except for my sister. But... Hopefully... We will see each other again. Safe yeah. travels, my friend. Take care of your crew. Those poor, poor Underdark folk. Hmm. I'll try. And the uh, drow just kind of like shrugs. I don't have anywhere else to go. The orc just kind of shrugs its head. Goes, wah! The Quotoa just seems excited to be there, honestly. Uh, it's just shaking its fists up and down and looking back and forth at you guys. Um, Tropo says, Well, your crew's just as weird as mine, to be honest, so... See you, Space Cowboys. Uh, and he drops you off in your desert town. Uh, as you zoom off into the sky, everybody in town is getting out of their houses to see this Githyanki skiff zoom off into wild space. UFOs! UFOs! Everyone's out. All the Marn, all the Marn, the half orcs uh, begin to start bowing uh, and praising the sun, uh, as it were. No, praise us, praise us. <laughs> and I think that's where we have to finally end the session. We l went a little bit over, but honestly, very proud of uh, the time management that we've done here today. We've done so much shit. Uh, yeah. Thanks everybody who came out to watch. Thanks everybody who came out to donate. We made it halfway to our goal. $500, and actually, technically, with my uh, company's bonus, that's actually $750, so I'm going to have to make a whole bunch of ships. Uh, yep. Everyone that did put their emails in their uh, donations, if they made enough of a donation, they will be receiving PDFs from me for Noble Crumpet's Book of Gastromancy, uh, as well as Noble Crumpet's Guide to Slimes, Jellies, and Oozes, once that is made. I'm planning on getting that out next month, I'm going to say, is a safe bet for that. pretty good, yeah. Uh, so... Thanks, everyone. Uh, if you're subscribed to this channel, you can see us on Sundays, normally at 9 uh, to midnight. We did an extended session for the charity thing today. Um, and we also stream on Wednesdays with a different group uh, that starts at 7 and goes to 10. Thanks, everyone, again for watching, and I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed Spelljammer as much as I did. This was very fun to make. Um, and we'll see you on the other side. See you, Space Cowboys. Bye. Have a good night. Bye-bye.